Book 8. Now leading phosphor shining day disclosed. The darkness flying, and the eastern gales. Lulled into calm, the vapory clouds arose. The placid south befriending, rapid born. The hero Cephalus, and aiding troops. Ride unexpected in their wished for port. Minos, meanwhile, the Lelegean coast. Lays waste, and on Alcathoes town his power. Essays. Here Nisus ruled, whose reverend locks. Of silvery brightness, in the midst contained. One with rich purple splendid, sacred pledge. A fortune to his kingdom. Six times seen. Were Luna's horns arising fresh renewed. Still hovered conquest doubtful over the war. On wavering pinions, twixt opposing hosts. A regal tower its vocal walls high reared. Where once Latona's son his golden lyre. Rested, the music still the stones retained. Oft here the beauteous daughter of the king. Ascended, and the latent music drew. Forth to the ear, by smallest pebbles struck. Thus she in peaceful times, and here she oft. When war was raging, ventured, hence she saw. The rough encounters of the furious field. So long the tedious warfare, well she knew. The leaders' names, their arms, their prancing steeds. And knew their garments, and their cretin boughs. Far beyond all Europa's son she knew. More than became her state, this Minos well. Could prove, whose head encrested helmet hid. Most beauteous helm appeared, whose arm, adorned. With brazen shield refulgent, well became. The brazen shield, whose hand the tough lance whirled. And back withdrawn, the virgin wondering praised. Such strength and skill combined, to fit the dart. When to the spreading bow his strength he bent. She vowed that Phoebus in such posture stood. His arrows fitting, when, his brazen cask. Relinquished, all his features shone displayed. As purple-robed his snow-white steed he pressed. In painted housings gay, and curbed his jaws. White foaming, then the lost Nisian maid. Scarcely herself, in frantic rapture spoke. Blessed called the javelin, that his hands it touched. Blessed called the reins he curbed. Arduous she burns. Could she, through hostile ranks her virgin steps. To bend, arduous she burns, from loftiest towers. To fling her body in the Cretan camp. The brazen portals of the city's walls. Why to the foe she'd ope, what could she not? That Minos willed? As resting here she viewed. The white pavilion of the Gnosian king. Dubious, she cried, or should I grieve or joy? This mournful war to witness? Grieve I must. That mino so beloved should be my foe. But had the war not been, his lovely face. Had never to me been known. Now war may cease. Should I become the hostage, I retained. As Minos comrade, and the pledge of peace. Fairest of forms. If she who brought thee forth. Resembled thee, well might an amorous god. Burn for her beauty. Oh. Thrice blessed were I. If borne through air on lightly waving wings. The Cretan monarch's camp I might explore. And there, my rank and love disclosed, demand. What dowry he would ask to be my spouse. My country's towers alone, he should not seek. Perish the joys of his expected bed. Ere I through treason gain them. Yet full oft. A moderate victor's clemency affords. Great blessings to the vanquished. Doubtless, he. Just warfare wages for his murdered son. Strong in his cause, and in his armies strong. Which aid that cause, he must the conquest gain. Why, if this fate my country waits, should war. And not my love unbar to him the gates. So may he conquer, slaughter, toil, and blood. His own dear blood, avoided. How I dread. Lest some rash hand might that loved bosom wound. None but the ignorant shore, the savage spear. At him would hurl. The scheme delights my soul. Fixed my resolve, my country as my dower. Will I deliver, finish so the war. But what are resolutions? Watchful guards. The passes keep, of every gate, the keys. My father careful holds. Hapless. I dread. 
My father only, he alone withstands. My wishes, would that so the gods had doomed. I had no parent. But to each himself. A god may surely be, and fortune spurns. Lazy beseechers. With such love inflamed. Another maid had long ere now destroyed. All barriers to her bliss, and why then I? Should any dare more boldly? Fearless, I. Through swords and flames would pass, but swords and flames. Oppose me not in this, my sole desire. Comprised in one small lock of nicest hair. Than gold that prize more dear. That purple lock. Most blessed would make me, and my sole desires. Encompass. Speaking thus, the gloomy night. Imperial nurse of cares, approached, more bold. Her daring project with the darkness grew. Now primal slumbers ruled over weary breasts. Tired with their toil diurnal. Silent, she. Her father's chamber enters, and, oh, dire. The daughter from her parents' head divides. The fateful lock. Her wicked prize possessed. Forth from the gate she issues, and the spoil. So cursed, with her bears, as through the hosts. Such boldness gave the deed, she seeks the king. Whom thus, astonished and aghast, she hails. To wicked deeds love sways, behold me here. Scylla, from royal Nysa sprung, to thee. My household gods and country I betray. Thee, sole reward I seek. Pledge of my faith. This purple lock receive, and with this lock. Receive my parents' head. Then in her hand. The impious gift presented. Mino spurned. The parricidal present, deeply shocked. A deed so base to witness, and exclaimed. May all the gods, from every part of earth. The banish, scandal of our age. May land. And see alike reject thee, such a soul. So monstrous. Never with me shall touch the shores. Of Crete, my land, and cradle of high Jove. He said, and on his captive foes imposed. Most just his equal laws, his men bad loose. Their cables from the beach, and with their oars. His vessels bright with brass, urge on the deep. Launched on the main, when Scylla sees the fleet. Nor from its leader gained the hoped reward. Her wicked deed had sought, tired of her prayers. In desperate rage she storms, wild throws her hair. Stretches her hands, exclaiming, where? Oh, where? Fliest thou, the author of thy fortune left? Oh, prized above my country. Bove my sire. O oh, cruel, whither fliest thou, whose success? At once my merit, and my fault displays? Will not the gifted conquest move thy soul? Will not my love thee move? Will not the thought? That all my hopes centre in thee alone? By thee deserted, whither shall I fly? Back to my natal town? Ruined it lies. Or if still standing, fast the gates are barred. Against my treason. To my father's arms. Whom I betrayed. Each citizen me hates. Deservedly, neighbours my example dread. Banished, an exile from each spot of earth. Crete only open lies. Thence dost thou drive. Me also? Ingrate. Dost thou fly me so? Europa never bore thee, but some set. Inhospitable, or some tigress fell. Bred in Armenia, or Charybdis vexed. With tempests, Jove was never thy sire, nor feigned. A bull's resemblance to delude her, false. That fable of thy origin. A bull. Real and savage thee begot, whose love. No heifer moved. O father Nisus. Now. Exact thy vengeance. Joy, O town. Betrayed. By my transgression, for the woes I feel. Most merited I grant, guilty I die. Yet should the deadly blow be given by one. My impious fault has injured, not by thee. Victor through crimes thou with avenging hate. Now persecutest. This flagitious deed. Against my country, and against my sire. Was all for thee. Thy adulteress who beguiled. In wooden cavity the furious bull. Whose womb an ill-assorted birth produced. 
well for a spouse befits thee. Do my words. Reach to thine ears, or no. Do the brisk winds. Thou ingrate. Waft my bootless planings on. And waft thy vessels? Wondrous now no more. Pasiphae, to thy embrace a bull. Preferred, for more unpitying is thy soul. Joyful, ah! Hapless me, away thou fliest. Thy cleaving oars dash on the sounding waves. Me, and my country far from thee recede. O wretch! Forgetful of my favouring aid. Thou strivest in vain to fly me. Gainst thy wish. Thee will I follow, on thy crooked ship. Hanging, embracing, dragged through drenching seas. Scarce ending, in the wave she furious leaped. Vigorous by love, and gained the flying fleet. And clasped, unwelcome guest, the Nossian poop. Here soon her father spite her, in the air. He winged his way, now clothed with yellow plumes. A falcon, and down darted, with his beak. So curved, to wound her as she clung. In dread. Her grasp she loosed, and as she seemed to fall. The light air bore her from the waves below. Plumed she became, and formed a feathered bird. Cirrus they called her from the ravished lock. To Jove now Minos all his vows performs. An hecatom of bulls, as from the fleet. He lands on Nossa's shores, his royal hall. With all his spoils, on high up hung, adorned. Meantime thy opprobrium of his bed increased. The two-formed monster in a novel birth. At length the mother's beastly crime proclaimed. Minos, the shameful witness from his couch. Far to remove determines, in a dome. Intricate winding, he resolves to lodge. From every eye concealed, the birth. Entrusts. The work to Daedalus, in cunning arts. Most famed, to build. He all the various marks. Confuses, puzzles, bent on either side. The various paths confound the searching eye. So in the fields the soft mayander plays. Here refluent, flowing there with dubious course. Meeting himself, his wandering stream he sees. And urges now to whence he first arose. Now to the open outlet of the main. Thus Daedalus the numerous paths perplexed. With puzzlings intricate, so much entwined. Himself could scarce the outer threshold gain. Here was the double monster, man and bull. Enclosed, till by the third allotted tribe. The ninth year, vanquished, with Athenian blood. Twice gorged before. Then was the secret gate. So often sought in vain, found by the aid. A virgin lent to trace the winding clue. Instant for Dias, Theseus loosed his sails. With Minos ravished daughter, on that shore. Cruel. He left her. The deserted nymph. Wildly lamenting, Bacchus soon embraced. And gave her needful aid, her fame to fix. Immortal in the skies, her sparkling crown. Moved from her forehead, mid the stars he placed. Through the thin air it flies, and as it mounts. To blazing stars, the glittering jewels change. Still as a crown it shines, its station midst. Where stout Alcides Arpheucus grasps. Meantime long exile, and the land of Crete. Detesting, burning with a patriot's wish. His native soil to visit, Daedalus. By sea escape prevented, thus exclaimed. Let earth and ocean both my flight obstruct. Still open lies the air, through air will go. Minos controlling all, controls not air. He speaks, and bends to unknown arts his skill. Improving nature's gift. Quills fixed in rows. He places, small at first in length and size. Gradual enlarged, as if a hill steep side. Growing, produced them, so time passed the pipe. Of rustic origin, by small degrees. Increasing reeds composed. Firm fixed with thread. Their middle part he binds, and close with wax. Cements their bottom. All complete he bends. The composition in a gentle curve. Resembling real wings. Young Icarus. Alone was present, ignorant that the work. Would his destruction cause, with playful tricks. He fingers now the feathers, now his hands. Soften the yellow wax. His sportive wiles. 
his father's wondrous essay off delay. Now was the last completing stroke imposed. Upon his undertaking, first the sire. On artificial wings his body poised. And in the beaten air suspended hung. Then his young offspring, Icarus, he taught. This I my son advise, a middle course. To keep be cautious, lo if thou shouldest skim. Heavy with ocean spray thy wings would droop. If high, the sun would scorch them. Steer thy course. Twixt each extreme. Nor would I wish thine eyes. To view Boötes, or the northern bear. Nor yet Orion's naked sword. My track. Cautious pursue. With anxious care he gives. Rules thus for flight, and to his shoulders fits. The new formed pinions. Tears his ancient cheeks. Bedewed, as thus his admonitions flowed. And his paternal hands as thus employed. Beneath the office trembled. Warm salutes. He gave the boy, nor knew he gave the last. Then on his feathers born, explores the way. Timid for him who follows. So the bird. Tempts from her lofty nest her new-fledged brood. In the thin air. He bids him close pursue. Tries in each shape to teach the fatal skill. Shakes his own pinions, bending back to view. His sons. The angler as with quivering reed. He drew his prey to land, the shepherd swain. As over his staff he leaned, the ploughman clown. Their flight astonished saw, and deemed them gods. That so at will could cleave the liquid sky. Now Samos, Juno's favoured isle they passed. Delos, and Poros, all to left, to right. Labyrinthos lay, and rich in honeyed sweets. Calumny, when the heedless boy overjoyed. In his bold flight, the precepts of his guide. Contemning, soared to heaven a loftier range. The neighbouring sun's fierce heat the fragrant wax. Which bound, his pinions, softened. Soon the wax. Dissolves, and now his naked arms he waves. But destitute of power his course to steer. No air his arms can gather, loud he calls. His father's name, as in the azure deep. He drops, the deep which still his name retains. The hapless parent, not a parent now. Loud calls on Icarus, where art thou, son? Where shall I seek thee, Icarus? He said. And spite his feathers floating on the waves. Then cursed his hapless art, as in the earth. He deep entombed him, all the land around. Bears from the youth entombed its present name. The whirring partridge, from a branchy home. Beheld him, as beneath the turf he placed. His son's lamented body, and with joy. Fluttered his feathers, while his chirping song. Proclaimed his gladness, then the only bird. Known of his kind, in elder days unseen. But lately clothed with feathers, through the crime. Flagitious, Daedalus, of thee. To thee. Thy sister, witless how his fate was doomed. Her son committed for instructing art. When twice six annual sons the youth had seen. His docile mind best fitted then to learn. He well thy indented bones remarked, which form. The fish's spiny back, and in like mode. Sharp steel indenting, first the saw produced. For public service. Two steel arms he joined. Fixed to one orb above, each widely stretched. One steady rests, the other circling turns. Him Daedalus with envy viewing, forced. Headlong, from sacred palace lofty tower. His death feigned accidental, but the maid. Divine, to all ingenious minds a friend. Received him in his fall, changed to a bird. On pinions bore him through the middle air. His vigorous powers in force remain the same. But change their seat, rapid he flies, and quick. He races on the ground, his name remains. Unaltered, still the cautious bird declines. To trust his weight aloft, nor forms his nest. On lofty boughs, or summits of high trees. Nigh to the earth he skims, beneath the hedge. His shelly brood deposits, of his fall. Still mindful, towering heights he always shuns. Now Daedalus, with lengthened flight fatigued. Cecilia's realm received, whose king humane. Great Cocalus, moved with his suppliant prayer. Armed to assist him. 
Now by Theseus freed. Athens no more the mournful tribute paid. With garlands every temple gay they hang. Invoke the warlike maid, the mighty Jove. And every deity, their altars all. With promised blood they honor, with rich gifts. And fragrant incense. Now had wandering fame. Through all the Grecian towns, spread the renown. Of Theseus, and the rich Achaia's tribes. His aid implored, when mighty perils pressed. Even Caledon, though Meliga brave. Possessing, sought his help with suppliant words. The cause, a furious bore by Gien sent. Avenging instrument of slighted power. Oenius, from plenteous harvests full success. Rejoicing, primal fruits to Ceres gave. To Bacchus poured libations of his wine. To yellow-haired Minerva offered oil. The rites invidious, from the rural gods. Commencing, all the bright celestials shared. Latona's daughter only, in her fane. Nor flames nor offerings on her altar saw. Rage fires even heavenly breasts. Not unrevenged. She cried, shall this be suffered, honored not. Not unappeased by vengeance will I rest. Then through thy Oenean fields the maid, despised. Sends the fierce boar to ravage. Such his size. The bulls that in Epirus pastures graze. More huge appear not, in Sicilia's meads. Far less are seen. Red are his sparkling eyes. Fire mixed with blood, high rears his fearful neck. Thick clustering spears the threatening bristles seem. Horse as he grunts, down his wide shoulder spreads. The boiling foam, his tusks the tusks outvie. Of India's hugest beast, the lightning's blast. Driven from his mouth, burns all the verdant leaves. Now over the corn, but yet in budding ears. He tramples, immature he reaps the crop. The loud lamenting tiller's hopes destroyed. The harvest intercepting in the shoot. In vain the barns, the granaries in vain. Their promised loads expect. Prostrate alike. Are thrown the fruitful clusters of the vine. With shooting tendrils, and the olive's fruit. With branches ever blooming. Flocks. He rages, these not shepherds, not their dogs. Could save, nor could the furious bull his herd. Wide fled the people, safety none durst hope. Save in their city's walls, till thirst of fame. Fired Meliga, with his chosen band. Of valiant youths. And first were seen the twins. Of Tyndarus, for wondrous skill renowned. This at the Cestus, that to curb the steed. Jason, whose art the primal ship designed. Theseus, in happy concord with his friend. Pirithus, joined, Thestius two valiant sons. Lynceus, Aphareus offspring, Ida swift. Lucipus fierce, Acastus unexcelled. To dart the javelin, Seneus, now no more. Clothed in a female figure, Phoenix, sprung. From older Minter, actors equal sons. Hippothus, Dryas, and from Elis town. Dispatched, came Phileus. Nor was absent there. Brave Telamon, nor great Achilles sire. Nor stout Eurytian, with Phoretus son. Nor Hyantian Iolaus brave. Echian in speed unconquered, Nestor then. In primal youth, Lelex, Nourishan born. Panopeus, Hylius, Hippasus the fierce. Nor those whom Hippocoon sent in aid. From old Amicle, nor Ulysses' sire. Anchius of Parasia, Mopsu's sage. Amphiarius, then by his false spouse's guile. Betrayed not. With them Atalanta came. The grace and glory of Arcadia's woods. A shining buckle from the ground confined. Her garment's border, simply bound, her hair. One knot confined, her ivory quiver, slung. Over her left shoulder, sounded as she stepped. Her hand sustained a bow, and thus arrayed. Appeared her form. Her lineaments disclosed. What scarce might feminine in boys appear? Or hardly boyish in a virgin's face? The chief of Caledon the maid beheld beheld, and loved, while heaven his love opposed. The secret flames inhaling deep, he cried. O, oh, blessed youth! If youth to gain thy hand, worthy were deemed. Nor bashful shame, nor time. 
would more allow, a mightier deed now claimed. Their utmost efforts for the furious war. Darkened with trees thick growing, rose a wood. From earliest ages there the biting axe. Had never sounded, in the plain it reared. Facing the sloping fields. The youths arrived. Some spread the knotted toils, some loose the hounds. Some strive the footprints of the boar to trace. Their danger anxious seeking. Low beneath. A hollow veil extended, where the floods. Fresh showery torrents gathered, lazy laid. The flexile willow, and the waving reed. The fenny bulrush, osier, and the cane. Diminutive, the stagnant depth concealed. Aroused from hence, the boar impetuous rushed. Amidst his host of foes, so lightnings dart. When clouds concussive clash. His rapid force. Levels the grove, the crackling trees resound. Wherever he pushes, loud the joyful youth. Exclaim, each grasping with a nervous hand. His weapon brandished, while its broad head shakes. Forward he darts, the dogs he scatters wide. And each opposing power, his strokes oblique. Their baying drives to distance. Echion's arm. Hurled the first dart, but hurled the dart in vain. Lightly a maple's trunk the weapon grazed. The next, but overurged the force that sent. Had pierced the rough back of the wished-for prey. Jason's the steel, it whizzed beyond him far. Then Mopsus prayed, O Phoebus. If thy rights. I ever performed, if still I thee adore. Grant my sure weapon what I wish to touch. The god consented, what he could he gave. The boar was struck, but struck without a wound. Diana from the flying weapon snatched. The steely head, and pointless fell the wood. More chafes the beast, like lightning fierce he burns. Fire from his eyeballs flashes, from his chest. Clouds of hot smoke through his wide nostrils roll. Forced from the close-drawn string as flies a stone. Hurled at embattled walls, or hostile towers. With foes thick crowded, so the deadly beast. Rushed on the heroes with unerring shock. Eupalamus and Pelagon, who stood. The right wing guarding, on the earth he threw. Their fellows snatched them from impending fate. Not so on Isimus, of Hippocoon. The offspring, scaped the death-inflicting blow. Torn through the ham, just as for flight he turned. His slackened nerves could bear his weight no more. Then Nestor too, long ever the Trojan times. Perchance had perished, but beside him stood. A tree, whose branches nimbly he attained. A mighty effort, aided by his spear. Safe in his seat, he viewed the foe he fled. Beneath him. Fiercely threatening death below. He wets his tush on a stumpy oak. And bold in sharpened arms, ranches the thigh. With crooked fangs, of Arthur's mighty son. Now the twin brothers, heir in heaven displayed. Bright constellations, both fair dazzling shone. Mounted on steeds, whose lilied hue surpassed. By unsullied snow, both shook their brandished spears. The trembling motion sounded high in air. Deep both had pierced, but mid the darkening trees. Their bristly foe sought refuge, where nor steed. Nor dart could reach him. Telamon pursues. Ardent, and heedless of his steps, a root. Checks his quick feet, and prone the hero falls while Peleus aids his brother chief to rise. The beauteous Atalanta to the string. Fits the swift dart, and from the bended bow. Speeds it, the arrow, fixed beneath his ear. Raises the monster's skin, and drops of blood. His bristly neck in sanguine. Joys the maid. To see the blow, but Mel eager far. In joy surpassed her. He the first beheld. The trickling blood, he to his comrades first. The wound displayed, exclaiming, Yon fair nymph. The honors so deservedly one shall bear. The warriors blush with shame, and each exhorts. His fellow, shouts their souls more valiant swell. In heaps confused their numerous javelins fly. Clashing in crowds, each javelin fails to wound. Lo! Now Anchias furious, to his fate. Blind rushing, rears his double axe, and cries. Behold, O youths! How much a manly arm! 
outstrikes a female's, to my prowess yield. The palm of conquest. Let Latona's maid. With all her power protect him, yet my force. Spite of Diana, shall the monster slay. Proud his big boasting tongue thus speaks, then grasps. His two-edged weapon firmly in his hands. And raised on tiptoe meditates the blow. The watchful beast prevents him, through his groin. To death sure passage, drives his double tusks. Anchaeus drops, his bowels gushing fall. Roll on the earth, and soak the ground in gore. Ixion's son, Pirithus, on the foe. Rushed, in his nervous hand a powerful spear. Brandishing, Theseus loudly to his friend. Exclaimed, Oh, dearer far than is myself. Half of my soul, a distance wait, the brave. A distance may engage, Vela too rash. Destroyed Anchaeus. As he spoke he hurled. His massive cornel spear, its brazen head. Well poised, its sender's anxious wish appeared. Fair to accomplish, when a leafy arm. Branched from a beech, opposed it in its flight. Next Eason's son, his javelin threw, but chance. Glanced from its mark the weapon, and transpierced. An undeserving hound, the dart was drove. Through all his belly, and deep fixed in earth. But different fortune on the arms awaits. Of Meliga, javelins two he sent. Deep in the ground the foremost pierced, the next. Firm in the monster's back quivering stood fixed. Nor stays he, whilst he raging furious whirled. In giddy circles round, and poured his foam. Mad with the new felt torture, close at hand. The hero plies his work, provokes his foe. To fiercer ire, and in his furious breast. Buries the glittering spear. A second shout. Loudly proclaims his thronging comrades' joy. Each to the victor crowding, hand in hand. Congratulating grasps him, each amazed. Views the dire savage, as his mighty bulk. Overspreads a space of land. Scarce think they yet. Their safety sure, him touching, each his spear. Extends, and dips it in the flowing gore. His foot upon the head destructive fixed. The conquering youth thus speaks, non-acria fair. Receive the spoil my fortune well might claim. Fresh glory shall I gain, with thee to share. The honours of the day. Then gives the spoils. The chine with horrid bristles rising stiff. And head, fierce threatening still with mighty tusks. She takes the welcome gift, for much she joys. From him to take it. Envy seized the rest. And sullen murmurs through the comrades ran. Above the rest, were Thestia's sons, their arms. Outstretching, clamoured thus with a mighty noise. Let not thy beauteous form thy mind deceive. When from thy eyes the donor of the spoil, besotted with thy love, shall far be moved. Woman. Restore the prize, nor hope to hold. Our intercepted claims. Speaking they rob. Her of the gift, him of the right to give. Nor passive stood the warlike youth, his teeth. He gnashed with swelling rage, as fierce he cried. Learn, ye base robbers of another's rights. What difference threats and valiant actions show. Then in Plexippus' unsuspecting breast. He plunged his impious sword, nor suffered long. Toxius to doubt, who hesitating stood. Now vengeance brooding for his brother's fate. Now dreading for himself a like swift blow. Again he warms the weapon, reeking still. Hop from Plexippus' bosom, in his blood. To every temple of the favoring gods. Althea bore donations for her son. Victorious, when the breathless bodies came. Of both her brethren, loud the sounding blows. Of grief were heard, and all the city rung. With lamentable cries, her golden robes. Were straight to sable changed. But when the hand. Which struck the blow was known, her every tear. Was dried, and vengeance only filled her soul. A log there lay when Thestius' daughter groaned. In childbed pangs, which on the greedy flames. The triple sisters flung, and while their thumbs. Twirled round the fatal thread, this was their song. O newly born. To thee and to this bow. Like date of life we give. Then ceased their words. And from her presence vanished, sudden snatched. 
the mother from the fire the burning brand, and quenched it instant in unsparing streams. Long in most secret darkness had she hid. This fatal wood, and, thus preserved, her son, had safely years mature attained, but now, forth she produced it from its close recess. Fragments of torches on the hearth she heaped, and blew the sparklings into deadly flames. And thrice she raised her hands the branch to heave. On the fierce fire, and thrice her hands withdrew. Sister and mother in one bosom fought. To adverse acts impelling. Oft her face. Dread of her meditated crime, bleached pale. Oft to her eyes her furious rage supplied. A fiery redness, now her countenance glowed. With threatenings cruel, now her softening looks. To pity seemed to melt, and when fierce ire had filled her soul, and parched up every tear. Fresh tears would gush. Thus rocks a vessel, driven by winds and adverse currents, both their force at once obeys, and can to neither yield. Thus wavered Thestia's daughter, dubious thus. Affection swayed her, now her rage is calm. Now her calmed rage with fourfold fury burns. At length the sisters over the parents tie. The prevalence obtains, impiously good. With blood her own, she soothes the brethren's shades. Now, when the fire's destructive fiercely glared, she cried, Here, funeral pile, my bowels burn. And as the fatal would her direful hand held forth, the hapless mother, at the pyre. Sepulchral, stood, exclaiming, Furies three. Avenging sisters. Hither turn your eyes. Behold the furious sacred rites I pay. For retribution I commit this crime. By death their death must be avenged, his fault. By mine be punished, on their funeral biers. His must be laid, one sinning house must fall. In woes accumulated. Blessed shall still. O Aeneas enjoy his proud victorious son. And Thestius childless mourn? Better that both. Should weep in concert. Dear fraternal ghosts. Recent from upper air, my work behold. Take to thy infernal realms my offering bought. So dear. The hapless pledge my womb produced. Ah. Whither am I swept? Brothers forgive. The parent. Lo. My faltering hands refuse. To second my intents. Well he deserves. To perish, yet by other hands than mine. Unpunished shall he escape then? Victor live. Proud of his high success, and rule the realm. Of Caledon, while ye are prostrate throne. A trivial heap of ashes, and cold shades. Patience no more will bear. Perish the wretch. Perish his father's hopes. Perish the realm. And all the country perish. Where? Oh, where? Is then the mother's soul, the pious prayers? A parent should prefer? Where the strong pains? Which twice five moons I bore? Oh, that the flames! First kindled, had thy infant limbs consumed. Would I had not then snatched thee from thy fate? Thy gift of life is mine, now that thou diest. Thy own demerits ask, take the reward. Thy deeds deserve, yield up thy twice given life. First in thy birth, then by the brand I saved. Or lay me with my brethren in their tomb. I wish, yet what I would my hands refuse. What will my soul determine? Now mine eyes. The mangled courses of my brethren fill. Now filial fondness, and a mother's name. Distract my soul. Oh, wretched, wretched me. Brothers you gain the conquest, yet you gain. Dearly for me, but on your shades I'll wait. Blessed in what gives you once to me again. She said, with face averse and trembling hand. The fateful brand amid the fires was dropped. The brand a groan deep uttered, or a groan. To utter seemed, the flames half backward caught. At length their prey, which gradually consumed. Witless of this sad deed, an absent far. Fierce Meliga, with the self-same fire. Burned inward, all his vitals felt the flame. Scorching concealed, thy excruciating pangs. Magnanimous he bore. Yet deep he mourned. By such a slothful bloodless fate to fall. 
and Happy called Ancheus in his wounds. With deep-drawn groans he calls his aged sire, his brother, sisters, and the nymph beloved, who shared his nuptial couch, with final breath. His mother too perchance. Now glows the fire. And now the pains increase, now both are faint. Now both together die. The soul flies forth. And gently dissipates in empty air. Lo now lies lofty Caledon, the youths. And aged seniors weep, the vulgar crowd. And nobles mourn alike, the matrons rend. Their garments, beat their breasts, and tear their hair. Stretched on the earth the wretched sire defiles. His hoary locks, an aged face with dust. Cursing his lengthened years, the conscious hand. Which caused the direful end, the mother's fate. Accomplished, through her vitals pierced the steel. Had heaven on me an hundred tongues bestowed. With sounding voice, and such capacious wit. As all might fill, and all the muses power. Still should I fail the grieving sister's woe. Justly to paint. Heedless of beauteous forms. They beat their bosoms livid, while the coarse. Remains, they clasp and cherish in their arms. The senseless mass, the coarse they kiss, and kiss. The couch on which it rests, to ashes burned. Careful collected in the urn, they hug. Those ashes to their breasts, and prostrate thrown. His tomb they cover, on the graven stone. Embrace his name, and on the letters pour. Their tears in torrents. Dien satiate now. The house of Oenius leveled with the dust. Raised them by wings in air, which sudden shot. From each their bodies. Gorge soul, and she. The spouse of valiant Hercules, unchanged. Were left. Long pinions for their arms were seen. Their mouths to horny bills were turned, through air. Thus altered, ample range the goddess gives. Theseus meantime, the toil confederate done. Homeward to Pallas towers his journey bent. But Achilles, swollen by showery floods. Delayed his progress. Famed Cecropius chief. He cried, here shelter, enter, neath my roof. Nor through the furious torrents trust thy steps. Whole forests off they root, and whirl along. Vast rocks with thundering sound. High stalls I've seen. Near to the banks erected, swept away. Nor aught availed the lusty bull's strong limbs. Nor aught the courser's speed, the torrents oft. Of melted snows, which from the mountains rush. Whelm the strong youths beneath the whirling pool. To rest is safer, till their wonted banks. Again the streams confine, the lessened waves. Within their channels pent. Theseus complies. And answers, Achilles, we approve. Thy prudent counsel, and thy cave will use. The grot they enter, hollow pumice, mixed. With rugged tophus, formed it, tender moss. The moist floor covered, fretwork on the roof. The purple murex and the scallop white. Alternate formed. Now Phoebus steeds had run. Two thirds their race, when Theseus on his couch. Reclined, the comrades of his toil close by. Pirithus here, Troezenian Lelex there. Whose temples now some silvery hairs displayed. With these were such as Achilles, joyed. At such a noble guest, the honor deemed. Worthy to share. The barefoot naiad nymphs. Heaped on the board the banquet, food removed. They brought the wine, in cups with jewels decked. The mighty hero then, the distant main. Surveying, asks, what land is that I see? And shows the spot, tell me what name denotes. That isle? And yet methinks not one it seems. The river god replies, what we behold. A single isle is not, but five, the eye. Is mocked by distance. That Diana's wrath. May less your wonder move, these once were nymphs. Ten bullocks had they sacrificed, and called. Each rural god to taste the sacred feast. And join the festal chorus, me alone. Forgetful, they invited not. Sore vexed. I swelled with rage, and as my anger rose. My flood increased, till at my greatest height. Woods I divorced from woods, from meadows tore. The neighboring meadows, and the naiads rolled. Now well remembering what my godhead claimed. 
down with their habitations to the main. My waves then, with the ocean's waters joined. The land divided, and those isles you view. Echinades, amid the sea were formed. More distant may your vision reach, behold. An isle beyond them to my soul most dear. By sailors named Peremil. I snatched. Her virgin treasure from the much-loved maid. Hippodamas her sire in fury raved. And, from a precipice, the pregnant nymph. Plunged in the deep. My waves received the load. And whilst I bore her floating, thus I said. O, oh, trident-bearer, thou whom Lot decreed. Lord, next to heaven, over all the wandering waves. Where all the sacred rivers end their course. To which all rivers tend, O, oh, Neptune, aid. Propitious, hear my prayer. Much have I wronged. The nymph I now support, if lenient he. An equitable, sure Hippodamas. Her sire, had pity granted, and myself. Had pardoned. Gracious Neptune, grant thy help. To her apparent fury from the earth. Why banishes? Oh, I beseech thee. Grant. A place to her, paternal rage would drown. Or to a place transform her, where my waves. May clasp her still. The ocean god consents. And all his waters shake as nods his head. Still floats thy affrighted nymph, and as she swims. I feel her heart with trepid motion beat. While pressing fond her bosom, all her form. Rigidly firm becomes, and round her chest. Rough earth heaps high, and, whilst I wondering speak. A new formed land her floating limbs enclasps. Her shape transformed, a solid isle becomes. Thus far the watery deity, and ceased. The wondrous tale all moved, save one, the sun. Of bold action, fierce of soul, he laughed. To scorn their minds so credulous, the gods. Impious contemning, as he thus exclaimed. What tales, O, oh, Achilles, you relate? Too much of potence to the gods you grant. To give and change our figures. All struck dumb. Discourage this bold speech, and Lelex first. Mature in age, and in experience old. Beyond the rest, thus spoke, celestial power. In range is infinite, in sway immense. What the gods will, completion instant finds. To clear your doubts, upon the Phrygian hills. An ancient oak, and neighboring linden stand. Girt by a low enclosure, either spot. Surveyed, when into Phrygia's realms dispatched. By Pythias, when those realms his father ruled. Not far a lake extends, a space once filled. With human habitants, whose waves now swarm. With fenny coots, and cormorants alone. Here Jove in human shape, and with his sire. The son of Maya, came, the last his rod. Shorn of its wings, still bore. A thousand doors. Seeking repose, they knocked at, every door. Firm bard repulsed them, one at length flew wide. A lowly cot, whose humble roof long reeds. And straw firm matted, covered. Borsis there. A pious dame, an old phylemon matched. In age, had dwelt, since joined in springtide youth. And there grew old together, full content. Their poverty they hid not, and more light. Their poverty on souls unmurmuring weighed. Here nor for lord, nor servant, was their need. To seek, beneath the roof these only dwelt. Each ordered, each obeyed. The heaven-born guests. The humble threshold crossing, lowly stooped. An entrance gained, the ancient host bade sit. And rest their wearied limbs, the bench was placed. Which bosses anxious for their comfort, spread. With homemade coverings, then with careful hand. The scarce warm embers on the hearth upturned. And roused the sleeping fires of yestern's eve. With food of leaves and bark dry parched, and fanned. To flame the fuel with her aged breath. Then through the small slit faggots, and the boughs. Long withered, on the top, divided small. And placed her brazen vase of scanty size. Over all. Last stripped the colwort's outer leaves. Culled by her husband from the watered ground. Which served as garden. He meantime reached down. With two forked prong, where high on blackened beam. It hung, a paltry portion of an hog. 
long hardened there, and from the back he sliced. A morsel thin, which soon he softened down. In boiling steam. The intermediate hours. With pleasing chat they cheat, the short delay. To feel avoiding. On a nail high hung. A beech end pale for bathing, by its hand. Deep curved, with tepid water this he filled. And placed before his guests their feet to lave. A couch there stood, whose feet and frame were formed. Of willow, tender reeds the centre filled. With coverings this they spread, coverings which saw. The light not, but when festal days them claimed. Yet coarse and old were these, and such as well. With willow couch agreed. The gods laid down. The dame close girt, with tremulous hand prepared. The board, two feet were perfect, neath the third. She thrust a broken sherd, and all stood firm. This sloping mended, all the surface clean. With fragrant mint she rubbed, and placed in heaps. The double-tainted fruit of pallas, made. Of unsoiled purity, autumnal fruits. Cornels, in liquid lees of wine preserved. Endive, and radish, and the milky curd. With eggs turned lightly over a gentle heat. All served in earthen dishes. After these. A clay-carved jug was set, and bechen cups. Varnished all bright with yellow wax within. Short the delay, when from the ready fire. The steaming dish is brought, and wine not long. Pressed from the grape, again went round, again. Gave place to see the third remove produced. Now comes the nut, the fig, the wrinkled date. The plum, the fragrant apple, and the grape. Plucked from the purple vine, all placed around. In spreading baskets, snow-white honey filled. The central space. The prime of all the feast. Was looks that hearty welcome gave, and proved. No indigence nor poverty of soul. Meantime the emptied bowls full off they see. Spontaneously replenished, still the wine. Springs to the brim. Astonished, struck with dread. To view the novel scene, the timid pair. Their hands are praised devoutly, and with prayers. Excuses utter for their homely treat. At unawares required. A lonely goose. They owned, the watchman of their puny farm. Him would the hosts, to their celestial guests. A sacred offering make, but swift of wing. Their toiling chase with age retarded, long. He mocked, at length the gods themselves he seeks. For sheltering care. The gods his death forbid. And speak, celestials are we both, a fate. Well earned, your impious neighboring roof shall feel. To you, and unto you alone is given. Exemption from their lot. Your cottage leave. And tread our footsteps, while of yonder mount. We seek the loftiest summit. Each obeys. The gods precede them, while their tottering limbs. A trusty staff supports, tardy from years. Slowly they labor up the long ascent. Now from the summit wanted they not more. Than what an arrow, shot with strenuous arm. At once could gain, when back their view they bent. Their house alone they saw, that singly stood. All else were buried in a widespread lake. Wondering at this, and weeping at the doom. Their hapless neighbors suffered, lo. They see. Their moldering cot, even for the pair too small. Changed to a temple, pillars rear on high. In place of crotchets, yellow turns the straw. The roof seems gilded, sculptured shine the gates. And marble pavement covers all the floor. Then Saturn's son, in these benignant words. The pair addressed, O, oh, ancient man, most just. And thou, O oh woman. Worthy of thy spouse. Declare your wishes. Borses spoke a while. With old Philemon, then their joint desire. The latter to the deities declared. To be your ministers, your sacred fane. To keep we ask, and as our equal years. In concord we have passed, let the same hour. Remove us hence, may I her tomb not see. Nor be by her interred. The gods comply. These guard the temple through succeeding life. Filled now with years, as on the temple's steps. They stood, conversing on the wondrous change. Borsis beheld Philemon shoot in leaves. And leaves Philemon saw from Borsis sprout. 
and from their heads over either's face they grew. Still while they could with mutual words they spoke. At once exclaimed, Oh, dearest spouse, farewell. At once the bark, their lips thus speaking, closed. Even yet a Tyanean shows two trees. Of neighboring growth, formed from the altered pair. Nor doted credulous, nor lying tongue. The fact to me related. On the boughs. Myself have seen the votive garlands hung. And whilst I offered fresher, have I said. Heaven guards the good with care, and those who give. The gods due honors, honors claim themselves. He ceased, the deed and author all admire. But Theseus most, whom anxious still to hear. More wondrous actions of the mighty gods. The stream of Caledon, as on his arm. Reclined, he rested, in these words addressed. There are, O oh, valiant youth. Of those once changed. Still in the new formed figures who remain. Others there are whose power more wide extends. To many shapes to alter. Proterse, thou. Art one, thou habitant of those wide waves. Which earth begird, now thou a youth appearest. And now a lion, then a furious boar. A serpent next we tremble to approach. And then with threatening horns thou seemest a bull. Oft as a stone thou liest, oft standest a tree. Sometimes thy countenance veiled in fluid streams. Thou flowest a river, sometimes mountest in flames. Nor less of power had Erisichthon's maid. Spouse of Autolycus. Her impious sire. All the divinities of heaven despised. Nor on their slighted altars offerings burned. He too, t said, the Cerealian grove. With axe profaned, his violating steel. The ancient trees attacking. Mid the rest. A huge grown oak, in yearly strength robust. Itself a wood, a prose, garlands hung round. And wreaths, and grateful tablets, proofs of vows. For prospering favors paid. The dryad nymphs. Oft in its shade their festal dances held. Oft would they, clasping hand in hand, surround. The mighty trunk, its girth around to meet. Full thrice five cubits asked. To every tree. Lofty it seemed, as every tree appeared. Lofty, when measured with the plants below. Yet not for that, did Erisichthon hold. The biting steel, but bad his servants fell. The sacred oak, lingering he saw them stand. His orders unobeyed, impious he snatched. From one his weapon, and in rage, exclaimed. What though it be the goddess' favorite care? Were it the goddess' self, down should it fall. And bow its leafy summit to the ground. He said, and poised his axe, and aimed oblique. Deep shuddering shook the Cerealian tree. And groans were uttered, all the leaves grew pale. And pale the acorns, while the widespread boughs. Cold sweats bedewed. When in the solid trunk. His blow ungodly pierced, blood flowed in streams. From out the shattered bark, not flows more full. From the deep wound in the divided throat. The gore, when at the sacred altar's foot. A mighty bull, an offered victim drops. Dread seizes all, and one most bold attempts. To check his horrid wickedness, and check. The murderous weapon, him the villain saw. And, take, he cries, the boon thy pious soul. Merit so well. And from the trunk the steel. Turns on the man, and strikes his head away. Then with redoubled blows the tree assails. Deep from the oak, these words were heard to sound. A nymph am I, within this trunk enclosed. Most dear to Ceres, in my dying hours. Prophetic I foresee the keen revenge. Which will thy deed pursue, and this solace? Grants comfort even in death. He, undismayed. His fierce design still follows, now the tree. Tottering with numerous blows, by straining cords. He drags to earth, and half the wood below. Crushed by its weight, lies prostrate. All astound. Of her deprived, and at their own sad loss. The sister dryads, clad in sable robes. To Ceres hasten, and for vengeance call. On Erisichthon. To their urgent prayers. The beauteous goddess gave assent, and shook. Her locks, the motion shook the yellow ears. 
which filled the loaded fields, and straight conceived. A torture piteous, if a pity he. For acts like these might look, to tear his form. By famine's power pestiferous. There, herself. Approach forbidden, fate long since her doomed. Ceres and famine far removed should dwell. A mountain nymph she calls, and thus directs. A region stretches on thy extremest bounds. Of icy Scythia, dreary seems the place. Sterile the soil, nor trees, nor fruits are seen. But sluggish cold, and pale affright, and fear. Still craving famine, there her dwelling holds. Bid her within the inmost vitals hide. Of this most daring, and most impious wretch. The proudest plenty shall not make her yield. For in the contest, all the power I boast. To her shall stoop, nor let the lengthened way. Appall thy mind, my car receive, receive. My dragons, through the air their course direct. By these long reins. Speaking, the reins she gave. She, born through ether in the granted car. To Scythia's realm is carried, on the ridge. A rugged mountain offered, first she eased. The dragon's necks, as Caucasus, t'was known. There she the sought for famine soon espite. Eagerly searching on the stony fields. At once with teeth and fangs, four thin sown herbs. Rough matted were her locks, deep sunk her eyes. Pale bleached her face, her lips with white and slime. Overspread, with furry crust her mouth was rough. Hard was her skin, and through it might be seen. Her inwards, both her hollow loins, upstood. The arid bones, a belly's place applied. A belly's form, her breasts to hang appeared. Held only by the chine, her fleshless shape. Each joint in bulk increased, rigidly large. The knees were swollen, and each protruding part. Immoderately was big. Then as the nymph. From far beheld her, for a nigh approach. She dreaded, what the goddess bade she told. Though brief her stay, though distant far she stood. Though instant there arrived, she felt the power. Of famine at the sight, and turning quick. Her reins, she urged her dragons to their speed. In retrograde direction, still on high. Till Thessaly they gained. Famine performs. The wish of Ceres, though her anxious aim. Is still to thwart her power, and borne on winds. Swift through the air, the fated house she finds. An instant enters, where the inmost walls. The sacrilegious wretch includes, in sleep. Deep buried, for night reigned, and with her wings. Him clasping close, in all the man she breathed. Her inspiration, in his throat, his mouth. His chest, and in his unreplenished veins. Her hunger she infused. The bidden deed. Complete, she vanished from those verdant fields. And turned her to the needy roofs again. And well-accustomed caverns. Gentle sleep. Fanned Erisichthon still with soothing wings. Even in his sleep imagined food he craves. And vainly moves his mouth, tires jaw on jaw. With grinding, his deluded throat with stores. Impalpable he crams, the empty air. Greedy devouring, for more solid food. But soon his slumbers vanished, then fierce raged. Insatiate hunger, ruling through his throat. An ever-craving stomach. Instant he. Demands what produce, ocean, earth, and air. Can furnish, still of hunger he complains. Before the full-spread tables, still he seeks. Vittles to heap on vittles. What might serve. A city's population, seems for him. Too scant, whose stomach when it loads had gorged. For load still craved. The ocean thus receives. From all earth's regions every stream, all streams. United, still requiring, greedy fire. On every offered aliment thus feeds. Countless supplies of wood consuming, more. Nutrition craving, still the more it gains. More greedy growing from its large increase. So Erisichthon's jaws profane, rich feasts. At once devour, at once still more demand. All food but stimulates his gust for food. In added heaps, and eating only seems. To leave his more more empty. Lessened now. In the deep abyss of his stomach huge. Were all the riches which his sires bequest. 
had given, the direful torment still remained. In undiminished strength, his belly's fire. Implacable still raged. Exhausted now. On the cursed craving all his wealth was spent. One daughter soul remaining, of a sire. Less impious, worthy, her the pauper sold. Her freeborn soul, a master's sway disclaimed. Her hands extending, to the neighboring main. O thou! She cried who gained my virgin spoil. Snatch me from bondage. Neptune had the maid. Previous enjoyed, nor spurned her earnest prayer. She whom her master following close, had seen. In her own shape but now, in manly guise. Appears, in garments such as fishers clothe. The master sees, and speaks, O, oh, thou. Who rulest? The trembling reed, whose bending wire thy baits. Conceal, so may thy whiles the water aid. So may the fish deceived, beneath the waves. Thy hooks detect not, till too firmly fixed. Say thou but where she is, who stood but now. Upon this beach, in humble robes arrayed. With locks disordered, on this shore she stood. I saw her, but no further mark her feet. The aid of Neptune well the maid perceived. And joys that of herself herself is sought. Thus his inquiries answering, whom thou art. I know not, studious bent, the deep alone. And care to drag my prey, my eyes employ. More to remove thy doubts, so may the God. Who rules the ocean, aid my toiling art. As here I swear, no man upon this shore. Nor female, I accepted, has appeared. These words the owner credits, and the sand. Treads with returning steps, deluded goes. And as he goes, her former shape returns. Soon as this changing power the sire perceived. The damsel oft he sold. Now she escapes. Beneath a mare's resemblance, now a bird. An heifer now, and now a deer she seemed. Her greedy parents more with food ill-gained. Supplying. When at last his forceful plague. Had every aid consumed, and every aid. Fresh food afforded to his fierce disease. Then he commenced with furious fangs to tear. For nurture his own limbs, life to support. By what his body and his life destroyed. But why on others' transformations dwell? Myself, O oh youths. Enjoy a power, my form. To alter, not unlimited my range. Now in the shape at present I assume. Anon I ride beneath a serpent's form. Or take the figure of a lordly bull. And wear my strength in horns, while horns I had. Disfigured now, my forehead side laments. One weapon ravished, as you well may see. He spoke, and heavy sighs his words pursued. Book 9. The son of Aegis begs the cause to know. Whence spring those groans, and whence that wounded front? And thus the stream of Caledon replies. His uncombed locks with marshy reeds entwined. A mournful task, O oh, warrior. You impose. For who, when vanquished, joys to tell the fight? Where he was worsted. Yet will I relate. In order all, vanquished, the shame was small. The honor great, for such a prize to strive. And such a conqueror more the mind relieves. Has ever the beauteous Degenera's name. Reach to your ears? Her charms the envied hope. Of numerous wars formed, mine with the rest. As over the threshold of my wished for sire. I stepped, I hailed him. O, oh, Parthaon son. For thine accept me. So Alcides spoke. And all the rest to our pretensions bowed. Of Jove, his sire, he boasts, and all the fame. His acts deserved, and stepdame's cruel laws. Final completed. I, who shameful thought. That God should yield to mortals, then a God. Alcides was not, thus his claim opposed. A king of floods behold me, floods which roll. With winding current through the land you sway. A son in me accept, no stranger sent. From distant regions, of your country one. Part of your rule. Let it not hurt my claim. That Juno hates me not, that all the toil. Of slavish orders I have never performed. Alcmena was his mother, let him boast. Jove is a sire but feigned, or if one true. 
is criminally so. He claims a sire. To prove his mother's infamy, then choose. Say feign thy origin from Jove, or fruit. Of intercourse adulterous, own thou art. Me, speaking thus, with furious eyes he viewed. Nor ruled his swelling rage, replying fierce. More than my tongue I on my arm depend. Whilst I in fighting gain the palm, be thou. Victor in talking. Furious on he rushed. So proudly boasting, to submit I scorned. But stripped my sea-green robe, my arms opposed. And held my firm clenched hands before my breast. For stout resistance every limb prepared. To meet the fight. He in his hollow palms. The dust collecting, sprinkled me all over. And then the yellow sand upon me threw. Now on my neck he seizes, now he grasps. My slippery thighs, but only thinks to hold. In every part assailing. Still secure. In bulk I stand, and he assails in vain. Thus stands a rock, which waves with thundering roar. Surround, it stands unhurt in all its strength. A little we recede, then rush again. To join the war, stoutly our ground we hold. Steady resolve to yield not. Foot to foot. Fixed firm, I prone press with my ample breast. And hand with hand, with forehead forehead joins. So have I seen two mighty bulls contend. When each the fairest heifer of the grove. Expects the arduous struggle to reward. The herds behold and tremble, witless which. The powerful contest shall successful gain. Thrice while I clasped him close, Alcide strove. To throw me from his breast, in vain, the fourth. He shook me from him, and my clasping arms. Unloosing, instant turned me with his hand. Truth must I speak, and heavy on my back. He hung. If credence may my words demand. Nor seek I fame through tales of false deceit. A mighty mountain on me seemed to weigh. Scarce were my arms, with trickling sweat bedewed. Loosed from his grasp, scarce was my body freed. From his hard gripe, when panting hard for breath. Ere I could strength regain, my throat he seized. Then on the earth my knee was pressed, my mouth. Then bit the sand. Inferior proved in strength. To arts I next betook me. Slipped his hands. In form a long round serpent, while I rolled. In winding spires my body, while I shook. My forked tongue with hisses dire, he laughed. And mopped my arts, exclaiming, snakes to kill. I in my cradle knew, grant thou excellest. Oh, Achilles. Others far in size. What art thou mated with the hydra's bulk? He fertile from his wounds, his hundred heads. Never felt diminished, for straightway his neck. With two successors, braved the stroke again. Yet him I vanquished with his branching heads. From blood produced, from every loss more stout. Him prostrate I overthrew. What hopest thou? Inform fallacious, who with borrowed arms. Now threatenest? Whom a form precarious hides? He said, and fast about my throat he squeezed. His nervous fingers, choking, hard I strove. As pincer like he pressed me, to unloose. From his tight grasp my neck. Conquered in this. Still a third shape, the furious bull remained. Changed to a bull, again I waged the war. Around my brawny neck his arms he threw. To left, and spite of every effort trite. To escape, he dragged me down, the solid earth. Deep with my horn he pierced, and stretched me prone. On the wide sand. Unsated yet his rage. His fierce hand seized my stubborn horn, and broke. From my maimed front the weapon. Naiad nymphs. This consecrated, filled with fruits, and flowers. Of odorous fragrance, and the horn is prized. By plenty's goddess as her favorite care. He spoke, a nymph close girt like Dien's train. Her ample tresses over each shoulder spread. Entered, supporting all of autumn's fruit. In the rich horn, and mellowest apples came. The second course to grace. Now day appeared. The youths when light the loftiest summits touched. Of the high hills, departed, waiting not. Till the rough floods in peaceful channels flowed. 
the troubled current smoothed. Profound his head. Of rustic semblance, Achilles hides. Reft of his horn, beneath his deepest waves. His forehead's honor lost saw galled him, all. Save that was perfect. Even his forehead's loss. With willow boughs and marshy reeds was hid. Thou too, rash Nessus, through thy furious love. Of the same virgin, thy destruction met. Pierced through thy body with the feathered dart. Jove's son returning to his natal soil. Companioned by his new-made bride, approached. Evanus rapid flood. Swollen was the stream. With wintry showers as wont, and raging whirls. Unfordable proclaimed it, him, himself. Fearless, yet anxious for his spouse's care. Nessus approached, in strength of limb secure. And knowledge of the fords, and thus he spoke. Her, O Alcides. Will I safely bear? To yonder bank, thou all thy efforts use. In swimming. Straight that the ban hero gives. The pallid Caledonian to his care. Shivering with dread, no less the centaur frights. Than the rough flood. The mighty warrior, pressed. With his large quiver, and the lion's hide. For on the bank opposing had he flung. His club and curved bow, exclaimed the stream. My arms will vanquish, soon as I essay. Nor dubious waits, but in the torrent leaps. Not heeding where most tranquil flows the stream. But stemming furious all its utmost rage. Now had he reached the bank, now held again. The bow flung over, when loud his spouse's shrieks. Assailed his ear. To Nessus, whom he saw. His trust about betraying, loud he cried. What vain reliance on thy rapid speed. Tempts thee to violence? Oh, double-shaped. I speak, regard me, to respect my rights. Should deference to me not move thee, think. How wells thy sire, and that thy rage may check. For wishes unallowed. Yet hope thou not. With courser's speed to escape me, with my dart. Not feet, will I pursue thee. His last words. With deeds he guarantees, and through and through. The flying culprit felt the javelin driven. Out through his breast the forked weapon stood. Withdrawn, from either wound gushed forth the gore. Mixed with the venom of Lernia's pest. This be preserved. Nor will I unrevenged. Expire, he murmured faintly to himself. And gave his raiment, in the warm blood dipped. A present to the nymph whose spoil he sought. To wake again her husband's dormant love. Long was the intermediate time, the deeds. Of great Alcides, and his stepdame's hate. Filled all the world meanwhile. Victor returned. From out Oecalia, when the promised rites. To Jove Senian, he prepared to pay. Tattling report, who joys in falsehood mixed. With circumstantial truth, and still the least. Swells with her lies, had in thine ears instilled. O Degenera! That Alcmena's son. With Iol was smitten. Ardent love. Swayed her belief, and terror struck to hear. Of this new flame, she melted into tears. With them her weeping grief first flowed away. But soon she bursted forth. Why weep I so? The harlot will but gladden in my tears. But ere she here arrives, it me behoves. Each effort to employ, while time now serves. To hinder what he seeks, whilst yet my couch. Another press is not. Shall I complain? Or rest in silence? Shall I Caledon? Reseek, or here remain? Shall I abscond? His habitation, or, if naught else serves. Strenuous oppose him? Or if truly bent? O, oh, Mel eager. With a sister's pride. Thy wicked deeds tee out thy, a witness leave. The harlot's throat divided, what the rage. Of woman may accomplish, when so wronged. In whirls her agitated mind is tossed. Determining last to send to him the robe. In Nessus' blood imbued, and so restore. His waning love. Witless of what she sends. Herself to Lyca's unsuspecting hands. The cause of future grief delivers. Wretch. Most pitiable. She, with warm coaxing words. 
instructs the boy to bear her spouse the gift. Thy unwitting warrior takes it, and straight clothes. His shoulders with echidna's poisonous gore. Incense he sprinkles in the primal flames. He kindles, with the flames his prayers ascend. As from the goblet he the vintage pours. On marble altars, hapless by the heat. The poison more was quickened, by the flame. Melted, it grew more potent, wide diffused. Through all the limbs of Hercules it spread. Still while he could, his fortitude, as wont. His groan suppressed, at last his patience spent. Fierce from the altar flinging, Oetes mount. So woody, with his plaintive shrieks he fills. An instant from his limbs the deadly robe. Essays to tear, that, where he strips, the skin. Stripped also, follows, dreadful to describe. Or to his limbs, his utmost struggling vein. It clings, or bare his lacerated joints. And huge bones stand. With hissing noise his blood. Burns, as when glowing iron in a pool. Is dipped, so boils it with the venom fierce. Nor hope of help remained, the greedy fires. His utmost vitals waste, and purple sweat. Bedews his every limb, his scorched nerves crack. And whilst his marrow, with a latent pest, Runs fluid, high-towered heaven his arms he holds. Exclaiming, now Saturnia, feast thy soul. With my destruction, joy, O savage. View. From lofty heaven my tortures, satiate now. Thy rancorous soul, but if a foe may move. Commiseration, for thy foe I am. Take hence this life, grievous, through direful pains. Hateful to thee, and destined first for toils. Death now would be a boon, and such a boon. A stepdame might confer. Have I for this? Bus Iris slain, who drenched the temples deep. With traveller's blood? For this Antaeus robbed. Of nutriment parental? Did thy bulk? Of triple form, swain of Iberia, fright? Or thou, three-headed Cerberus, me move? Wrought I for this in Elis? At the lake? Of Stymphalis? And in Parthenian woods? Did not my valour seize the golden belt? Of Thermodon's brave queen? The apples gain. Ill guarded by thy unsleeping dragon's care? Could the fierce centaur me resist? Or could? The mighty boar that laid Arcadia waste? And what availed the hydra, that he grew? From every loss, in double strength revived? How? Saw I not the Thracian coursers gorged? With human gore. Who stalls with mangled limbs? Crowded, I overthrew, and slew their lord. On his slain coursers? Strangled by these hands. Nemea's monster lies. Heaven I upbore. Upon these shoulders. The fierce wife of Jove. Wearied at length with bidding, I untired. Still was of acting. But at length behold. A new found plague, which not the bravest soul. Nor arms, nor darts can aught resist. Fierce fire. Darts through my deepest inwards, all my limbs. Greedy devouring. Yet Eurystheus lives. Still are there who the deities believe. He said, and over high oet tortured roved. Like a mad tiger, when the hunter's dart. Stands in his body, and the wounder flies. Oft would you see him groaning, storming oft. Oft straining from his limbs again to fling. The vest, trees rooting up, against the hills. Fierce railing, next up to his father's skies. His arms extending. Lo! He like as spies. Where trembling in a hollow rock he hides. Then, all his fury in its utmost strength. Raging, he cried, thou, like as, thou supplied. This deadly gift. Thou art the author then. Of my destruction. Shuddering he, and pale. In timid accents strove excuse to plead. Speaking, and round his knees prepared to cling. Alcide seized him, with an engine's force. Whirled round and round, and hurled him in the waves. Which by you be a roll. He, as he shot. Through air, was hardened. As the falling showers. Concrete by freezing winds, when snow is formed. As snows by rolling, their soft bodies join. Conglomerating into solid hail. 
so ancient times believed, the boy thus flung. Through empty air, by strong Alcide's arm. Bloodless through fear, and all his moisture drained. Changed to a flinty rock. A rock e'en now. High in you be as gulf exalts its head. Which still of human form the marks retains. Which, as though still of consciousness possessed. The sailors fear to tread, and like as call. Thou, Jove's renowned offspring, felled the trees. Which lofty oet bore, and built a pile. Then bade the son of Pean bear thy bow. Thy mighty quiver, and thy darts, to view. Once more the realm of Troy, and through his aid. The flames were placed below, whose greedy spires. Seized on the structure. On the woody top. Thou laidest the hide Nemean, and thy head. Supported with thy club, with brow serene. As though with garlands circled, at a feast. Thou laidest, mid goblets filled with sparkling wine. Now the strong fire spread wide over every part. Crackling, and seizing his regardless limbs. Who them despised. The gods beheld with fear. The earth's avenger. Jove, who saw their care. With joyous countenance, thus the powers addressed. This fear, O deities. Makes glad my heart. And lively pleasure swells in all my breast. That sire and sovereign over such grateful minds. I hold my sway, since to my offspring too. Your favoring care extends. No less, tis true. His deeds stupendous claim. Still I'm obliged. But from your anxious breasts banish vain fear. Despise those flames of Oet, he who all. Overcame, shall conquer even the flames you see. Nor shall the power of Vulcan aught consume. Save his maternal part, what he derived. From me, is ever during, safe from death. And never vanquished by the force of fire. That will receive, his earthly race complete. Amidst the heavenly host, and all I trust. My actions gladly will approve. Should one. Haply, with grief see Hercules a god. And grudge the high reward, even he shall grant. His great deserts demand it, and allow. Unwilling approbation. All assent. Not even his royal spouse's forehead wore. A frown at aught he said, his final words. Irked her at length, to be so plainly marked. Vulcan meantime each corruptible part. Bore off in flames, nor could Alcides form. Remaining, now be known, naught he retained. Of what his mother gave, Jove's share alone. A serpent revels thus in glittering scales. His age and former skin thrown off at once. So when Tyrinthius from his mortal limbs. Departed, in his better part he shone. Increased in stature, and majestic grace. Augustly decked his venerable brow. Veiled in a hollow cloud, and borne along. By four swift steeds, in a high car, the sire. Him placed in glory, mid the radiant stars. Atlas perceived his load increased. Nor yet. Eurystheus baited in his rancorous hate. But cruel exercised his savage rage. Against the offspring of the sire abhorred. But now Alcmena, worn with constant cares. In Argolis, to Iol confides. Her aged plaints, to her the labors tells. Her son achieved, over all the wide world known. And her own griefs beside. Alcide's words. Caused Hillas to his couch to take, and take. Iol, cordial to his inmost heart. And now with generous fruit, the nymph was large. Alcmena, thus to her commenced her tale. May thee, at least, the favoring gods indulge. And all delay diminish, when matured. Thou to Alithia shalt have need to call. Who over travailing mothers bears the rule. Whom Juno's influence made so hard to me. Of Hercules toil-bearing, now the birth. Approached, and in the tenth sign ruled the sun. A mighty bulk swelled out my womb, so huge. Well might you know that Jove the load had caused. Nor could I longer bear my throes, my limbs. Cold rigor sees, while now I speak, my pains. Part even in memory now I seem to feel. Through seven long nights, and seven long days with pangs. Incessant was I racked, my arms to heaven. Stretching, I called Lucina, and the powers. 
with outcries mighty. True Lucina came. But came by Juno preposist, and bent. My life to sacrifice to Juno's rage. Soon as my groans she hearkened, down she sate. Upon the altar, placed without the gates. Neath her right ham, her left knee pressing, joined. Fingers with fingers crossed upon her breast. My labor stayed, and spellful words she spoke. In whispering tone, the spellful words delayed. Thy approaching birth. I strain, and madly rave. With vain upbraidings to ungrateful Jove. And crave for death, in such expressions a plain. As hardest flints might move. But the band dames. Around me throng, assist me with their prayers. And me my trying pains exhort to bear. Galanthus, one who tended me, of race. Plebeian, yellow-haired, and sedulous. What order to perform, and much esteemed. For courteous deeds, she first suspected, what? I know not, somewhat, formed by Juno's pique. And while she constant passed, now to, now fro. She saw the goddess on the altar sit. Girding her arms, with close-knit fingers over. Her knees, and said, O dame, whoever thou art. Our mistress gratulate. Alcmena now. Argolican, is lightened. Now the prayers. Of the child-bearer meet her hopes. The dame. Who rules the womb, straight from her station leaped. And all astounded, her clenched fingers loosed. I in that moment felt my bonds undone. Galanthus, they report, the goddess mocked. Thus cheated, by her laughter. Savage, she. Dragged her so laughing, by the tresses seized. And forced her down to earth, as up she strove. Erect to rise, and to forefeet her arms. Transformed. The same agility remains. Her back its color keeps, her form alone. Is diverse. She, cause then her lying mouth. My birth assisted, by her mouth still bears. And round my house she harbors as before. She said, and by the memory moved, she mourned. For her lost servant, whom, lamenting, thus. Her child-in-law addressed. If then the form. Altered, of one an alien to your blood. O mother. Thus affects you, let me tell. The wondrous fortune which my sister met. Though grief and tears will frequent choke my words. Her mother, Dryope alone could boast. Me to my sire another bore, her charms. O Athalia all confessed, whom, rifled first. A virgin charms, when passively she felt. His force, who dealt hose, and who delos rules. And dream and took, and held a happy spouse. A lake expands with steep and shelving shores. Encompassed, myrtles crown the rising bank. Here Dryope, of fate unconscious came. And what must more commiseration move? Came to weave chaplets for the naiad nymphs. Her arms sustained her boy, a pleasing load. His first year scarce complete, as with warm milk. She nourished him. The watery lotus there. For promised fruit in Tyrian splendor bright. Grew flowering near. The flowers my sister cropped. And held them to delight her boy, and I. For there I stood, the same prepared to do. But from the flowers red flowing drops I saw. And all the boughs with tremulous shuddering shook. Doubtless it is, but far too late we learned. By the rough swains, nymph Lotes, when she fled. From Priapus obscene, her shape transformed. Into this tree which still retains her name. My sister witless of this change, in fright. Would back retreat, and leave the nymphs adored. But roots her feet retain, these from the ground. She strains to rend, but save her upper limbs. Nor can she move, a tender bark grows over. The lower parts, and her mid-limbs invades. This seeing, and her locks to rend away. Attempting, her raised hand with leaves was filled. Leaves covered all her head. Amphissus found. His grandsire had the child Amphissus named. His mother's breasts grow hard, nor when he sucked. Lacteal fluid gained he. I there stood. Of her sad fate spectator, loud I cried. But, O oh my sister! Aid I could not bring. Yet what I could I urged, the growing trunk. 
and growing boughs, my close embraces stayed. In the same bark I glad had been enclosed. Lo! Come her spouse and dreamen, and her sire. So wretched, and for dry oak they seek. A lotus, as for dry oak they ask. I show them, to the yet warm wood salutes. Ardent they give, and prostrate spread, the roots. They clasp of their own tree. Now, sister dear. Nought save thy face but what a tree becomes. Thy tears, the leaves thy body formed, bedew. And now, whilst able, while her mouth yet gives. To words a passage, such like plaints as these. She breathes, if faith thy unhappy ever can claim. I swear by all the deities, this deed. I never merited, without a crime. My punishment I suffer. Innocent. My life has been. If I deceive, may drought. Parch those new leaves, and, by the hatchet felled. May fire consume me. Yet this infant bear. From those maternal branches, to a nurse. Transfer him, but contrive that oft he comes. And neath my boughs let him his milk imbibe. And neath my boughs sport playful. When with words. Able to hail me, let him me salute. And sorrowing say, within that trunk lies hid. My mother but the lakes, oh. Let him dread. Nor dare from any tree to snatch a flower. But think each shrub he sees a god contains. Adieu. Dear husband, sister dear, adieu. Father, farewell. If pious cares you feel. From the sharp axe defend my boughs, and from. The browsing flocks. And now, as fate denies. To lean my arms to yours, your arms advance. Approach my lips, whilst you my lips may touch. And to them lift my infant boy. More words. I may not, now the tender bark my neck. So white, invades, my utmost summit hid. Move from my lids your fingers, for the bark. So rapid growing, will my dying eyes. Without assistance close. Her lips to speak. Cease, and existence ceases, the fresh boughs. Long in the altered body warm were felt. While I'll the mournful fact relates. And while Alcmena, from Eurytus made. With ready fingers dried the tears, herself. Still weeping, lo! A novel deed assuaged. Their grief for Iolaus, scarcely youth. His cheeks with tender down just covered, stands. Within the porch, to early years restored. Junonian heap, by her husband's prayers. Overcome, to Iolaus gave the boon. Who, went to vow she went, that future times. Should none such gift enjoying, ever perceive. Was checked by the miss. Now all Thebes, she said. Discordant warfare moves. Through Jove alone. Capanius can be conquered. Mutual wounds. Shall slay the brothers. In the yawning earth. A living prophet his own tomb shall see. A son avenger of his parents' death. Upon his parent, impious for the deed. At once, and pious, at the action stunned. Exiled from home, and from his senses driven. The fury's faces, and his mother's shade. Shall haunt him, till his wife the fatal gold. Shall ask, until the Fijian sword shall pierce. Their kinsman sighed. Callaho then, the nymph. From Achilles sprung, suppliant shall seek. From Jove, her infant's years mature may gain. Moved by her prayers, Jove will from thee demand. Son spouse, and daughter of his wife, the boon. An unripe men thou lt make the youths become. While the mist thus, with fate foretelling lips. This spoke, the gods in murmuring grudgings mourned. Angry why others might not grant the gift. Aurora mourned her husband's aged years. Mild Ceres plained that Jason's hairs were white. Vulcan, for Erichthonius prayed an age. Renewed. Even Venus' future cares employed. Anxious for promise that anchises years. Replenishment might find, and every god. Had whom he loved, and dark sedition grew. From special favor, till the mighty sire. The silence broke. If reverence I may claim. Where rashly rush ye? Which of you the power? Fate to control, possesses? Fate it was. 
gave Ilor's youth restored again. By fate Kalahoe sons ere long shall spring. To manhood, prematurely, nor can arms. Nor yet ambition gain this gift. With souls. More tranquil bear this, since you see the fates. Me also rule. Could either fates once change? Old age should never bend Ecus down. And Radamanthus had perpetual spring. Of youth enjoyed, with Minos, now despised. Through load of bitter years, nor reigns as won't. Jove's words the deities all moved, not one. Longer complained, when heavy pressed with years. They Ecus, and Radamanthus saw. And Minos, who, when in his prime of age, made mightiest nations tremble at his name. He, feeble then, at Dionaeus' son. Miletus, trembled, who with youthful strength. And Phoebus' origin proud swollen, unknown. About to rise against his rule, yet him. He dared not from his household roof to drive. But thou, Miletus, fleddest spontaneous, thou. Thy Aegean waves in thy swift ship didst pass. And on the Asian land the walls didst found which bear the builder's name. Science here. Meanderese daughter, whose recurving banks. She often trod, whose stream itself reseeks. So oft, in beauteous form, by thee was known. And, clasped by thee, a double offspring came. Byblis and Cornus, from the warm embrace. Let Byblis warn, that nymphs should never indulge. Illicit warmth. Her brother Byblis loved. Not as she ought, not with a sister's soul. No fires at first the maid suspected, naught. Of sin, the thought that oft her lips to his. She wished to join, and clasp her arms around. His neck fraternal, long herself deceived. Beneath the semblance of a duteous love. Love gradual bends to him her soul, she comes. Fully adorned to see him, anxious pants. Beauteous to seem, if one more beauteous there. She sees, invidious she that face beholds. Still to herself unconscious was her love. No wish she formed beneath that burning flame. Yet all within was fire. She called him Lord. Now kindred's name detesting, anxious more. Byblis, than sister he should call her still. Yet waking, never her soul durst entertain. Lascivious wishes. When relaxed in sleep. Then the loved object oft her fancy saw. Oft seemed her bosom to his bosom joined. Yet blushed she, tranced in sleep. Her slumbers fly. She lies a while in silence, and revolves. Her dream, and thus in doubting accent speaks. Ah, wretch! What means this dream of silent night? Which yet I oft would wish. Why have I known? This vision? Envy's eyes must own him fair. And but his sister am I, all my love. He might possess, worthy of all my love. A sister's claim then hurts me. Oh. At least. While tempted thus I wakeful naught commit. Let sleep oft visit with such luscious dreams. No witness sees my sleeping joys, my joys. Though sleeping, yet are sweet. Oh, Venus. Oh. Thou feathered Cupid, with thy tender dame. What transports I enjoyed. What true delight. Me thrilled. How lay I, all my soul dissolved. How joys it me to trace in mind again. The pleasure though so brief, for flying night. Invidious checked enjoyment in the bud. O Cornus. That an altered name might join. Us closely, that thy sire a sire-in-law. To me might be, O oh, Cornus, how I joy. Wert thou not son, but son-in-law to mine? Would that the gods had all in common given. Save parents only. Thou in lofty birth. I would should me excel. O beauteous youth. A mother whom thou alt make I know not, I. Never can thee know but with a sister's love. Parents the same as thine my hapless lot. All that I have, me only pains the more. What are to me my visions? Wait have dreams? How much more happy are thy immortal gods? The gods embrace their sisters. Saturn clasps. Ops, joined to him by blood, ocean enjoys. His sister Tessis, an Olympus king. His Juno. 
God's peculiar laws possess. Why seek I then celestial rights to bring? Diverse, with human ordinance to compare? Forbidden love shall from my breast be driven. Or that impossible, may death me seize. Instant, and cold upon my couch outstretched. My brother then may kiss me as I lie. Yet still my wish double consent requires. Grant I should yield, still might the deed to him. Seem execrable. Yet thy Aeolian youth. A sister's nuptial couch never dreaded. Why? Oh, why? On this so dwell? Why thus recall? Examples to my view? Where am I born? Hence, flames obscene. Hence far. A sister's love. And that alone my brother shall enjoy. But had his soul first burned for me, perchance. I had indulged his passion. Surely then. I may demand, who would not, ask, refuse. What couldst thou speak? Couldst thou confess thy flame? Love forces, and I can. If shame my lips. Close binds, yet secret letters may disclose. The hidden flame. With this idea pleased. These words her hesitating mind resolved. Raised on her side, supported by her arm. He shall, she said, now know it, all my love. Preposterous confessed. Alas. What depth. Now rush I to? What fire has seized my soul? And then with tremulous hand the words composed. Her right hand grasps the style, the left sustains. The waxen tablet smooth, and then begins. She doubts, she writes, condemns what now she wrote. Corrects, erases, alters, now dislikes. And now approves. Now throws the tablet by. Then seizes it again. Eries leave what? She would, whatever is done displeases, all. Shame and audacious boldness in her face. Are mingled. Sister, once her hand had wrote. But sister, soon as seen, her hand erased. And her fair tablet bore such words as these. To thee, a lover salutation sends. And health, which only thou to her canst give. Ashamed, she blushes to disclose her name. For should I press to gain my wish desire. Without my name, my cause I trust would find. Successful aid. Let by bliss not be known. Till certain hopes of bliss her mind shall cheer. Yet faded colour, leanness, and pale face. With constant dripping eye, and rising sobs. Show my unhidden grief. Well might these prove. To thee an index of a wounded heart. My constant clasping, numerous fond salutes. If ever thou est marked, thou well might have perceived. Not sister-like embracings. In my soul. Though this deep wound I bear, though in my breast. This fire consuming burns, yet strive I all. Witness, ye gods. My truth, all to suppress. And act with wiser conduct, hapless war. Long have I waged against Cupid's furious rule. More pressure have I borne, than what a maid. Could ever be thought to bear. At length overcome. And forced to yield, thy help I must implore. With trembling voice, thou only canst preserve. Thou only canst the loving nymph destroy. With thee the choice remains. No foe thus sues. But one by nearest ties to thee conjoined. Pants to be joined more nearly, linked to thee. With closest bands. Let aged seniors learn. Our laws, and seek what moral codes permit. What is permitted, and what is denied? Let them inquire, and closely search the laws. A bolder love more suits our growing years. As yet we know not what the laws allow. And judge for all things we free leave enjoy. Thy example following of the mighty gods. Nor parent stern, nor strict regard for fame. Nor timid thoughts should check us, absent all. Should be each cause of fear. The dear sweet theft. Beneath fraternal love may be concealed. With thee in secret converse I may speak. Embrace thee, kiss thee in the open crowd. How little then remains. Pity, forgive. The declaration of this love, never told. Had raging fire not urged it, nor allow. 
Upon my tomb this cause of death to stand. Here the filled tablet checked her hand, in vain. Thus writing, at the utmost edge the lines. But stayed. Her crime straightway she firmly pressed. With her carved gem, and moistened it with tears. Her tears of utterance robbed her. Bashful then. She called a page, and blandishing in fear. Exclaimed. Thou faithful boy, this billet bear. And hesitated long ere more she said. Ere to my brother, bear it. As she gave. The tablet, from her trembling hand it fell. The omen deep disturbed her. Yet she sent. A chosen hour the servant sought, went forth. And gave the secret message. Sudden rage. Me youth meandrian petrified, and down. The half read lines upon the ground he flung. His hand scarce holding from the trembling face. Of the pale messenger. Quick, fly, he cried. Thou wicked pander of forbidden lust. Fly while thou mayest, and know, had not thy fate. Involved our modest name, death hadst thou found. He terrified escapes, and backward bears. To his young mistress all fierce corner spoke. Pale, thou, O Biblis. Hard's the rough repulse. Thy breast with frigid chills beset. But soon. Her spirits rally, and her furious love. Returns, scarce to the trembling ere her tongue. Can utterance give in these indignant words? Deservedly mourn I, who so rashly gave. Him of my wounds the conscious tale to learn. Why trust so soon to words, what still might hid? Remain, on tablets hastily composed. Why were not first the wishes of my soul? Trite in ambiguous hints? First, sure I ought. Whence the wind blew have marked, nor loosed my sails. Him flying, to pursue, and the wide main. In all directions plough, now bellies out. My canvas, not a single course explored. Hence am I born against the rocks, hence whelmed. In the wide depth of ocean, nor my sails. No I to tack returning. Did not heaven. Check the indulgence of my love, by marks. Obvious to all? When from my hand down dropped. The tablet, which the boy was bad to bear. Mark that my falling hopes not. More deferred. Thy wishes, or the day should sure have been. Surely the day. For heaven itself me warned. And certain signs me gave, but those my mind. Stupid neglected. Personal my words. Should I have urged, nor trusted to the wax. In person should my love have been displayed. Then had my tears been seen, then had he viewed. My raptured countenance, then had I spoke. Far more than power of letters can convey. My arms around his neck I then had thrown. However unwilling, and, had he been coy. In dying posture I his feet had clasped. And stretched before him life demanding, all. Had I achieved. Perchance though, by the boy. My messenger commissioned, I have failed. Aptly perhaps he entered not, perhaps. And much I fear, improper hours he chose. Nor sought a vacant time, when naught his mind. Disturbed. This has, alas. My hopes destroyed. For from a tiger corner sprung not, round. His heart not solid steel, nor rigid flint. Nor adamant is girt, nor has he sucked. The lioness's milk. He shall be bent. And gained his heart shall be, nor will I brook. The smallest bar to what I undertake. While now this spirit holds. My primal wish. If it were given I might revoke my deeds. Is, I had never commenced, my second now. Is, that I persevere in what's begun. For should I now my wishes not pursue. Still must he of those daring wishes think. And should I now desist, well might he judge. Formed lightly my desires, or plan to try. His virtue, and involve in snares his fame. Or, dreadful, think me not by love overcome. Who burns and rages fiercely in my breast. But by hot lust. For now concealed no more. My guilty act can be, I've written once. Once have I asked, corrupted all my soul. Should further no depravity ensue. Guilty I must be called. 
What more remains? In crime is little, but in hope immense. She said, and such the wavering of her breast. That, whilst the trial grieves her which she made. Farther to try she wishes, every bound. Overpassing, and, with luckless fate, her suit. Still meets repulsion. He, when endless seemed. Her pressing, fled his country, and the crime. And in a foreign region raised new walls. Then, daughter of Miletus, they report. Forsook thee all thy senses, then in truth. Thou rent thy garments from thy breast, thy breast. Thy furious hands hard smote. Now to the world. Madly she raves, now to the world displays. Her wished for love, denied, all hope despair. She too forsook her country, and the roof. So hated, and the vagrant steps pursued. Her flying brother trod. As Thracia's dames. O, oh, son of Samiel. Thy thyrsus shake. When celebrating thy triennial rites. So did the Caian matrons, Biblis see. Fly over the widespread fields, with shrieks and howls. These left behind, over Caria's plains she runs. And through the warlike leliges, and through. The Lycian realms. Now Kragos had she left. And Limaya, and Xanthus waves behind. With the high ridge Chimera lifts, who burns. Central with flames, his breast and front fierce armed. A lion towered his tail a serpent formed. Now all the forests passed, thou Byblis, faint. With long pursuit, phalaced flat, on the hard ground. Thy locks are spread, dumb now thou liest, thy face. Presses the fallen leaves. Oft in their arms. So delicate, the Lelegean nymphs. To raise thee up attempted. Oft they strove. To give advice that might thy love control. And offer solace to thy deafened ear. Still silent Byblis lies, and with her nails. Rends the green herbage, moistens all the grass. With rivulets of tears. And here, they say. The naiad nymphs their bubbling art supplied. Never drought to know, more to afford, their power. Sure could not. Straightway, as the pitchy drops. Flow from the fire's cleft bark, from solid earth. As stiff bitumen oozes, or as streams. By cold congealed, thaw with the southern wind. And warming sun, Phoebean Byblis so. By her own tears exhausted, was transformed. A fount becoming, which still in that vale. Neath a dark ilex springing, keeps her name. Now had the rumor of this wondrous change. Spread rapid through the hundred towns of Crete. But Crete had lately seen a wondrous change. In her own clime, in Iphis' altered form. There in the Festian land, near Nossa's realm. Was Ligdus born, a man of unknown fame. But a plebeian of unblemished worth. Nor had he, more than noble stock, estate. Yet unimpeached for honesty his life. He thus the ears of his then pregnant spouse. Addressed, when near her bearing time approached. Two things my wishes bound, first that thy pains. May lightly press, next that a male thou bringest. More burdensome are females, strength to them. Nature denies. Then if by fate ordained. To give a female birth, which I detest. Unwilling I command, O piety. Excuse it, let the babe to death be given. He said, and tears profuse the cheeks bedew. Of him who bade, and her who heard his words. Still Telethusa to the latest hour. With vain petition strives her spouse to move. That thus he should not straighten so his hopes. Firm to his purpose Ligda stood. And now. Scarce could the heavy weight her womb sustain. When in the silent space of night, in sleep. Entranced, or Isis stood before her bed. Or seemed to stand, surrounded by the pomp. To her belonging. On her forehead shone. The lunar horns, and yellow wheat them bound. In golden radiance, with a regal crown. With her anubis, Barca came, and came. Bubastis holy, APIs various marked. He who the voice suppresses, and directs. To silence with his finger, timbrels loud. Osiris never sought enough, and snakes. Of foreign lands full of somniferous gall. To her the goddess thus, as raised from sleep. 
she seemed, and manifest each object stood. O Votarwai, Telethusa! Fling aside. Thy weighty cares, thy husband's mandates cheat. Nor waver, when Lucina helps thy pains. Save it whatever it be. A goddess I. Assisting, still give aid when rightly claimed. Nor will it ever thee grieve to have adored. An ingrate goddess. Thus as she advised. She vanished from the bed. The Cretan dame. Rose from the couch overjoyed, and raising high. To heaven her guiltless hands, prayed that her dream. On truth was founded. Now her pains increased. And now her burthen forced itself to air. A daughter came, but to the sire unknown. The mother bade them rear it as a boy. And all a boy believed it, none the truth. The nurse accepted, knew. Glad prayer as the sire. Offers, and from its grandsire is it named. Iphis, the grandsire's appellation. Joyed. The mother hears the name, which either sex. May claim, and none, in that at least, deceived. The lie lay hid beneath a pious fraud. The robes were masculine, the face was such. As beauteous boy, or beauteous girl might own. And now three annual sons the tenth had passed. Thy father, Iphis, had to thee betrothed. Ianthe, yellow-haired, nymph most admired. Mongst all the Festians, for her beauteous charms. Telestes of Dictia was her sire. Equal in age, and equal in fair form. The self-same masters taught the early arts. Suiting their years. Their unsuspecting minds. Were both by love thus touched, in both was fixed. An equal wound, but far unlike their hopes. Ianthe, for a spouse impatient looks. With nuptial torches. Whom a man she thinks. That spouse she hopes will be. Iphis too loves. Despairing what she loves ever to enjoy. This still the more her love augments, and burns. A virgin for a virgin. Scarce from tears. Refraining, what, she cries, for me remains. What will the issue be? What cure for this? New love, unknown to all, who prodigies. Possessing this desire? If the high gods. Me wish to spare, straight should they me destroy. Yet would they me destroy, they should have given. A curse more natural, a more usual fate. Love for an heifer never an heifer moves. Nor burns the mare for mares, rams follow ewes. The stag pursues his female, birds thus join. Nor animal creation female shows. With love of female seized. Would none were I. But lest all monstrous love's creep might not show. Soul's daughter chose a bull, even that was male. With female. Yet, if candidly I speak. My passion wilder far than hers appears. She hoped for love pursued, by fraud enjoyed. Beneath an heifer's form, thy adulterous spark. Deceiving. Be from every part of earth. Assembled here the skill, let Daedalus. Hither, on waxen wings rebend his flight. What could all aid? Could all their learned art. Change me from maid to youth? Or alter thee? I am thee? But why resolute, thy mind? Not fix. Why Iphis thus thyself forget? These stupid wishes driving hence, and thoughts. So unavailing? Lo! What thou wast born. Save thou wouldest also thine own breast deceive. What is allowed behold, and as a maid. May love, love only. Hope, first snatched by love. Love feeds on still. From thee all hope is born. No guardians thee debar the dear embrace. Nor watchful husband's care, no sire severe. Nor she herself denies thy pressing prayers. Yet art thou still forbid, though all agree. To reap the bliss, though gods and men unite. Behold, too, all my votive prayers succeed. The favouring gods whatever I prayed have given. My sire and hers, and even herself comply. But nature far more strong denies, alone. Me irking with refusal. Lo! Arrives. The wished-for hour, the matrimonial light. Approaches, when Ianthe will be mine. And yet far from me. In the midst of waves. 
For thirst I perish. Nuptial Juno, why? Comest thou, or hymen to these rites, where none? Leads to the altar, but where both are led? Here stayed her speech, nor less the other nymph. Burned, and oh, hymen, prayed thy quick approach. But what she wishes Telethusa dreads. And searches for delays, feigned sickness oft. Prolongs the time, oft omens dire, and dreams. Now all her artful fictions are consumed. And now the long protracted period came. For nuptial rites, and, but one day remained. She from her own and daughter's head unbinds. The fillets, and with locks dishevelled, clasps. The altar, crying, Isis, thou who dwellest. In Paratonium, Mariotis fields. In Pharos, and the sevenfold mouths of Nile. Help me I pray. Relieve my trembling dread. Thee, goddess, once I saw, and with thee all. Those images beheld, them all I know. Thy train, thy torches, and thy timbrels loud. And with a mindful soul thy words I marked. That she enjoys the light, that I myself. Not sinful suffer, to thy counsels, we. And admonitions owe. Pity us both. Grant us thy helping aid. Tears followed words. Straight seemed the goddess altars all to shake. And shake they did, trembled the temple's doors. The lunar horns blazed bright, the timbrels rung. Forth goes the mother, of the omen glad. Yet not in faith secure. Iphis pursues. His mother with a step more large than wont. The snow-like whiteness quits his face, his strength. Increases, fiercer frowns his forehead wears. Shortened his uncombed locks, more vigor now. Than as a nymph he felt. For thou, a boy. Now art so late a female. Bear thy gifts. Straight to the temple, and in faith rejoice. Straight to the temple they their offerings bore. And on them this short poem was inscribed. Iphis a boy, the offerings pays, which made. Iphis had vowed. The following sun illumed. The wide world with his rays, when Venus came. Juno, and Hymen, to the genial fires. And the boy Iphis his Ianthe clasped. Book 10. Thence Hymen, in his saffron vesture clad. Through the vast air departs, and seeks the land. Siconian, by the voice of Orpheus called. Vainly. He came indeed, but with him brought. No wonted gratulations, no glad face. Nor happy omen. And the torch he bore. Crackled in hissing smoke, nor gathered flame. From whirling motion. Still more dire thy event. Proved, than the presage. As the new-made bride. Attended by a train of naiad nymphs. Rove through the grass, a serpent's fangs her heel. Pierced, and she instant died. Her, when long mourned. In upper air, the Rhodopean bard. Ventured to seek in shades, and dared descend. Through the Teenarian cave to Stygia's realms. Mid shadowy crowds, and Beric ghosts he goes. To Proserpine, and him who rules the shades. With sway ungrateful. There he strikes the strings. Responsive to his words, and this his song. Gods of this subterraneous world, where all. Of mortal origin must come, permit. That I the truth declare, no tedious tales. Of falsehood will I tell. Here came I not. Your dusky hell to view, nor to overcome. The triple-throated Medicean beast. Snake-haired, my wife alone my journey caused. Whose healer trampled serpent venomed stung. Snatched in her bloom of years. Much did I wish. My loss to bear, nor aught forbore to strive. But love overcame. Well do the upper gods. That deity confess. In doubt I stand. If here too he is known, but here I judge. His power is felt, the ancient rape, if true. Proves love even you first joined. You I implore. By all those regions filled with dread, by this. Chaos immense, your ample realm, all filled. With silence, once again the thread renew. Eurydice too hasty lost. To you. We all belong, a little while we stay. Then soon or late to one repose we haste. 
All hither tend, this is our final home. You hold over humankind a lengthened reign. She too, when once her years mature are filled. To you again, must by just right belong. I then request her only as a loan. But should the fates this favour me refuse? Certain I'll never return. Two deaths in joy. The bloodless shadows wept as thus he sung. And struck the strings in concord with his words. Nor Tantalus at flying waters caught. Nor rolled Ixion's wheel, the liver gnawed. The birds not, rested on their empty urns. The Belides, and Sisyphus, thou satest. Upon thy stone. Nay fame declares, then first. Vanquished by song, the furies felt their cheeks. Wetted with tears. Nor could the royal spouse. Nor he who rules deep darkness, him withstand. Thus praying, an Eurydice is called. Amid the recent dead she walked, and still. Halted with tardy steps from her late wound. Her, when the bard of Thrace received, this law. Received he also, that his eyes reverse. He should not bend, till past Avernus realms. Else he'd the granted favour useless find. In silence mute, through the steep path they climb. Dark, difficult, and thick with pitchy mist. Nor far earth's surface wanted they to gain. The lover here, in dread lest she should stray. And anxious to behold, bent back his sight. An instant back she sunk. As forth his arms. He stretched, to clasp expecting, and be clasped. Unhappy. Nought but fleeting air he held. Twice dying, she can nought her spouse condemn. For how blame him because too much he loved? She gives her last farewell, which scarce his ears. Receive, then sinks again to shades below. Orpheus, thus doubly of his spouse despoiled. All stunned appeared, not less than he who saw. In wild affright the triple-headed dog. Chained by the midmost, fear him never fled. Till fled his former nature, sudden stone. On all his body seizing. Or than he. Olenus, when the crime upon himself. He took, and guilty wished to seem, with thee. Hapless Lethia, confident in charms. Once breast to breast you joined, now join as stones. Which watery Ida bears. Beseeching vain. And wishing once again the stream to pass. The ferryman denies. Then on the bank. In squalid guise he sate, nor tasted food. For seven long days, his cares, and grieving soul. And tears were all the sustenance he knew. Cruel he called the gods of Erebus. And to high Rodop himself betook. And lofty Hemus by the north wind beat. Thrice had the sun the year completed, each. By watery Pisces ended. Orpheus still. Fled every female's love, or his deep woe. Made him so cold, or faithful promise given. Yet crowds there were, who wished the bard embrace. Crowds with sorrow saw their love repulsed. A hill there rose, and on its summit spread. A wide extended plain, with herbage green. Shade to the place was wanting, hither came. The heaven-born poet, seated him, and touched. His sounding strings, and straighter shade approached. Nor wanted there Caonian trees, nor groves. Of poplars, nor the acorn's spacious leaves. The linden soft, the beech, the virgin bay. The brittle hazel, and spear-forming ash. The knotless fir, ilex with fruit low-bowed. The genial plain, the maple various stained. Stream-loving willow, and the watery lote. Box of perpetual green, slight tamarisk. Two tainted myrtle, and the laurestine. With purple berries. Thou too, ivy, camest. Hither with flexile feet, together flocked. Great bearing vines, and elms with vines entwined. Wild ash, and pitch tree, and arbutus, bent. With loads of ruddy fruit, the pliant palm. Mead of the conqueror, the pine close bound. About its boughs, but at its summit shagged. Dear to the mother of celestial powers. Since Atis Cybelian was transformed. And in the trunk a rigid tree became. In form pyramidal, amid the crowd. The cypress came, now tree, but once a boy. Dear to the god who rules the lyre's fine chords. And rules the bowstring. 
once was known a stag. Sacred to nymphs that owned Carthia's fields. Who bore upon his head a lofty shade. From his wide-spreading horns, his horns bright shone. With gold, his collar, with bright gems bedecked. Fell over his shoulders from his round neck hung. A silver boss, by slender reins controlled. Moved over his brow, a brazen pair the same. Shone over his temples hanging from his ears. Devoid of fear, his nature's timid dread. Relinquished, oft the houses would he seek. And oft would gently fondling stoop his neck. Heedless who stroked him. Cyperissus, thou. Beyond all others prized the sacred beast. Thou, fairest far amongst the Chian youths. Thou to fresh pastures ledest the stag, to streams. Of cooling fountains, oft his horns entwined. With variegated garlands. Horsemanlike. Now on his back thou pressest, and now here. Now there, thou rulest his soft jaws with the reins. A purple tinge. Twas once in midday heat. When burnt the bent claws of the seashore crab. In soul's fierce vapor, on the grassy earth. The weary stag reposed his limbs, and drew. Cool breezes from the tree's umbrageous shades. Here the boy Cyprus as careless flung. His painted dart, and fixed it in his side. Who, when he from the cruel wound beheld. Him dying, instant bent his mind to die. What consolation did not Phoebus speak? Urging the loss far slighter grief deserved. Yet mourned he still, and from the God supreme. Begged this last gift, to latest times to mourn. His blood in constant tears exhausted, now. His limbs a green hue take, his locks which late. Hung over his snowy forehead, rough become. In frightful bushiness, and hardening quick. Shoot up to heaven in form a slender spire. The mourning God, in grief exclaimed by me. Bemoaned, thou shalt with others always grieve. And henceforth mourners shalt thou still attend. Thus did the bard a wood collect around. And in the midst he sate of thronging beasts. And crowding birds. The chords he amply trite. With his impulsive thumb, and vare it much. In sound, he found their notes concordant still. Then to this song raised his melodious voice. O parent muse. From Jove derive my song. All yield to Jove's dominion. Off my verse. Before the mightiness of Jove has sung. I sung the giants, in a strain sublime. And vengeful thunders, over Phlegria's plain. Scattered, a tender theme now claims my lyre. I sing of youths by deities beloved. And nymphs who with forbidden wishes burned. And met the doom their sensual lusts deserved. The king of gods made Phrygian Ganymede. His favorite, but some other form possessed. Jove must in shape be something else than Jove. He deems no form becomes him, save the bird. That bears his thunder. Instant all is done. The Phrygian borne away, the air he beats. With his feigned wing. And now this youth the cup. Of nectar hands, in Juno spite, to Jove. Son of a Amycler, thee had Phoebus placed. Also the skies amidst, had fate allowed. For such position place, yet still thou holdest. Eternal, what fate grants, oft as the spring. Winter repulses, and the ram succeeds. The watery fishes, thou springest forth in flower. Mid the green sward. Beyond all else my sire. Thee loved, and Delpo's, placed in midmost earth. Wanted its ruling power, whilst now the god. Eurotas loved, and Sparta you an entrenched. Nor liar, nor darts attention claimed as won't. Of dignity unmindful, he not spurns. To bear the nets, to curb the hounds, to climb. With the full train the steepest mountain's ridge. And every toil augments his pleasure more. Now had the sun the midmost point near gained. Twixt flying night, and night approaching, each. Distant in equal space, when from their limbs. They flung their robes, with the fat olive's juice. Their bodies shone, they entered in the lists. Of the broad disc, which Phoebus first well poised. Then flung through lofty air, opposing clouds. Flying it cleft, at length on solid earth. It pitched, displaying skill with strength combined. Instant the rash teenarian boy, impelled. 
by love of sport, sprung on to snatch the orb. But the hard ground repulsive in thy face. Oh, hyacinth! It flung. Pale as the boy. The god appeared, he raised his fainting limbs. And in his arms now cherishes, now wipes. The fatal wound, now stays his fleeting breath. With herbs applied, but all his arts are vain. Incurable the hurt. Just so, when broke. The violet, poppy, or the lily hang. Whose dark stems in a watered garden spring. Flaxid they instant droop, the weighty head. No longer upright raised, but bent to earth. So bent his dying face, his neck, bereft. A vigor, heavy on his shoulder laid. Phoebus exclaimed, Fallest thou, O Abelian youth! Deprive of life in prime? And must I see? Thy death my fault? Thou art my grief, my crime. My hand the charge of thy destruction bears. I am the cause of thy untimely fate. But what my crime? Unless with him to sport. Unless a fault it were too much to love. Would I could lie for thee, or with thee quit. But fatal laws restrain me, yet shalt thou. Be with me still, dwell ever on my lips. My hand shall sound thee on the lyre I touch. My songs of thee shall tell, a new found flower. Shall bear the letters which my griefs resound. And time shall come, when a most valiant chief. Shall join him to thy flower, in the same leaf. His name too shall be read. As words like these. The truth predicting lips of Phoebus spoke. Behold. The blood which flowed along the ground. And all the herbage tinged, is blood no more. But springs a flower than Tyrian red more bright. A form assuming such as lilies wear. Like it, save purple this, that silvery white. Nor yet content was Phoebus, for from him. The honor was derived. Upon its leaves. He traced his groans, ari, ari, on every flower. In mournful characters is fair inscribed. Nor blush the Spartans, hyacinth to own. His honor still the present age attend. An annual are the hyacinthian feasts. In pomp surpassing aught of ancient days. Should you by chance of Amathus inquire? If will Liang the propoetides it bore? Denying nods would equally disclaim. Them, and the race whose foreheads once were rough. With double horns, Sarasti, hence their name. Jove's hospitable altar at their gates. Of mournful wickedness was reared, who saw. This stained with gore, if stranger, might conceive. That sucking calves, or two years sheep there bled. There bled the guest. Mild Venus grieved. At these most impious rites, at first prepared. To quit her cities, and her Cyprian fields. But how, she said, can my beloved climb? How can my towns have given offence? What fault? Abides in them? Rather the impious race. Shall vengeance feel in exile, or in death? Save death an exile medium may allow. How may that be, unless their shape is changed? Then while she doubts what shape they shall assume. Their horns attract her eyes, struck by the hint. Their mighty horns she leaves them, and transforms. To savage oxen all their lusty limbs. Still dared thy obscene propoetides deny. Venus a goddess power, for which, fame says. They first, so forced the deities revenge. Their bodies prostituted, and their charms. A shame them left, the blood which tinged their cheeks. Hardened, and soon they rigid stone became. These saw Pygmalion, and the age beheld. With crimes overrun, the shameful vice abhorred. Which lavish nature gave their female souls. Single, and spouseless lived he, long a mate. Pressed not his couch. Meantime the ivory white. With happy skill, and wondrous art he carved. And formed a beauteous figure, never made. So perfect yet was born, and his own work. With love inspired him. Of a nymph her face. Was such, you must believe the form to live. And move, if not by bashfulness restrained. Thus art his art concealed. Pygmalion stares. In admiration, and his breast draws flames. From the feigned body, oft his hands his work. Approach, if ivory or if flesh to judge. 
nor ivory then will he confess the form. Kisses he gives, and thinks each kiss returned. He speaks, he grasps her, where he grasps, he thinks. His hand's impression leave, and fears to see. On the pressed limb some marks of livid blue. Now blandished words he uses, now he bears. Those gifts so grateful to a girlish mind. Pearls, and smooth polished gems, and smallest birds. With variegated flowers, and lilies fair. And painted figures, and the heliad's tears. Dropped from the weeping tree, with garments gay. Her limbs too he adorns, and jewels gives. To deck her fingers, while a necklace large. Hangs round her neck, her ears like pearl suspend. And a bright zone is circled round her waist. All well became her, yet most beauteous far. She unattired appeared. Her on a couch. Tinged with the shell Sidonian, then he laid. And called her partner of his bed, and placed. Her head reclined, as if with sense endued. On the soft pillow. Now the feast approached. A Venus, through all Cyprus isle so famed. And snowy chested heifers, whose bent horns. With gold were gay, received the deadly blow. And incense burnt in clouds. Pygmalion stood. Before the altar, with his offered gifts. Timid he spoke, O ye all potent gods. Give me a spouse just like my ivory nymph. Give me my ivory nymph he blushed to say. Bright Venus then, as present at her feast. Perceived the inmost wishes of his soul. And gave the omen of a friendly power. Thrice blazed the fire, and thrice the flame leaped high. Returning, he the darling statue seeks. Of his fair nymph, extends him on the couch. Kisses, and thinks he feels her lips grow warm. Applies his lips again, and with his hand. Presses her bosom, pressed the ivory yields. Softening beneath his fingers, nor remains. Its rigid harshness. So high metis wax. Yields to the heat, when tempering thumbs it mould. In various forms, and fit for future use. Astonished now he joys with trembling soul. But fears deception, then he loves again. And with his hands again his wishes proves. Twas flesh, the pressed pulse leaped beneath his thumb. Then did the Cyprian youth, in words most full. Of gratitude and love, to Venus pray. Then to her living lips his lips he joined. And then the damsel felt his warm salute. Blushing she felt it, and her timid eyes. Up to the light, and with the light beheld. Her lover. Venus blessed the match she made. And when nine times the moon's full orb was seen. Sharpened to horns, the damsel paphose bore. Whose appellation off the isle receives. She sinner as two bore, if childless he. A place amongst the happiest might he claim. A direful song I sing. Be distant far. Ye daughters, distant far, O, oh, parents be. Or if a pleasure to your minds my verse. Aught gives, in this at least my truth suspect. Believe the deed not, if you must believe. Mark well the punishment the crime deserved. Since nature could such heinous deeds permit. The Thracian realms, my land, I gratulate. Enjoy this clime at such a distance lies. From that which could such monstrous acts produce. Let Arabe be in a momum rich. And cinnamon, and zedoary produce. Incense which through the wood exudes, and flowers. A ver it taints, while myrrh too it bears. Too great the price which this new tree procured. Cupid denies, O myrrh. That his darts. The wounded, vindicating from that crime. His weapons. The, with Stygian torch most fierce. And viperous venom furies did inflame. Wicked to hate thy parent sure had been. But thus to love is worse than bitterest hate. The choicest nobles come from every part. To gain thee, youths from all the east arrive. To struggle for thy hand. Choose, Myrrha, choose. One from the crowd, one only in the world. Whom choose thou mayest not. She herself perceived. And curbed the baneful passion in her mind. Communing thus, ah. Whither rove my thoughts? What meditate I? O, oh, ye gods! I pray. O piety, O parents' sacred laws! 
Forbid this wicked act, oppose a deed. So full of horrid guilt, if guilt it be. But pious nature never such love condemns. All animals in undistinguished form. Cohabit, shame the heifer never feels. Joined with her sire, the steed his daughter takes. As partner, with a female flock, who owed. To him their being, couples off the goat. And birds bring forth to birds who them produced. Bless those who thus enjoy, but human race. Perversest laws invents, vexatious rules. Forbid what nature grants. Yet am I told. Nations exist, where mother joins with son. And daughter with her sire, their pious love. Increased more strongly by the double bond. Ah, me. Unhappy, in such glorious climes. Begotten not, I suffer but from place. But why on these ideas dwell? Hence far. Forbidden hopes. Well he deserves thy love. But as a father love him. Would thou not? Of mighty sinner as the daughter, then. Thou mightest the couch of sinner as ascend. Now mine he is so much, he is not mine. Our very nearness is my greatest curse. More close, a perfect stranger had I been. Far hence I would depart, my country leave. This mischief flying, but cursed love restrains. For, present, sinner as I may behold. Touch, speak, my kisses to his face apply. If naught he'll grant beyond. How? Impious maid. Darest thou hope aught beyond? Perceivest thou not? What laws, what names thou wouldest confound? Wouldest thou? The mother's rival be? Thy father's whore? Thy offspring's sister wouldest thou then be called? Thy brother's parent? Fearest thou not the three? Whose locks with sable serpents horrid curl? Who conscious bosoms pierce with searching eyes? And hurl their furious torches in the face? While yet thy body can resist, no more. Cherish the heinous guilt thus in thy mind. Nor violate great nature's sacred law. With lust forbidden. Grant I should consent. The king would me deny, too pious he. Too dear to him the law. Oh, that in him. Such furious passion raged as burns in me. She ended, sinners, the worthy crowd. Of suitors held in doubt, herself he asked. As name by name he counted, which as spouse. She most would wish. Silent at first she stood. Then burning gazed on his paternal face. As the warm tears gushed in her shining eyes. These, sinner as effects of virgin fear. Believing, chid her and forbade to weep. Drying her cheeks, he on them pressed a kiss. With too much pleasure she the kiss received. And when consulted what the spouse must be. She would prefer, she answered, one like you. He witless of her meaning, praise her words. And said, be such thy pious duty still. The sound of piety the virgin's eyes. With sense of guilt, cast conscious to the ground. Twas now deep night when sleep soothed all the cares. Of mortal breasts. But myrrh a wakeful laid. Consumed with raging fires, and rolling deep. Her frantic wishes in her wandering mind. Despairing now, and now resolved to try. Now shame overcomes her, and anon desire. And undetermined how to act she rests. A mighty tree thus, wounded by the axe. A yet it feels the final blow, in doubt. Seems where to fall, they fear on every side. Thus did her staggered mind from varied force. Waver now here, now there, pressed hard by each. No ease for love, no rest but death appears. Death pleased. She rose, and round her throat prepared. The cord to fasten, from the topmost beam. She tied her girdle, and farewell. Exclaimed. Dear sinners. Guess whence my fatal end. Then drew the noose around her pallid neck. T said, thy imperfect murmuring of her words. Reached to the faithful nurse's ears, who laid. Before the threshold of her foster child. The matron rose, threw wide the door, and saw. Prepared the instrument of death. At once. She screamed aloud, her bosom tore, deep blows. Gave her own limbs, and from the rescued neck. Tore the tight noose. 
then had she time to weep. Then to embrace, then to inquire the cause. Of the dread cord. But dumb the virgin sate. And motionless, her eyes to earth were fixed. Grieved that so checked her efforts were for death. More than nurse presses, bears her silvered hairs. And withered bosom, by the cradle begs. And the first food she tasted, to confess. To her the cause of sorrow. Myrrh sighs. But turns her eyes aside as thus she begs. Determined still to know, the nurse persists. And not content her secrecy alone. To promise, says yet tell me, and my aid. Allow me to afford thee. Not yet slow. Though aged. Is it love? With charms and plants. I know thy love to cure. Have envious eyes. Thee harmed? With magic rites their charm I'll spoil. Are the gods angry? With appeasing rites. Their anger we will soothe. What ill beside? Can be conjectured? Lo! Thy house secure. And safe thy fortune, both in prosperous train. Yet lives thy mother, and thy father lives. Her father's name when Myrrha heard she drew. Deep from her breast a mournful sigh, nor yet. The nurse suspected guilt was in her soul. But saw that love disturbed her. In her aim. Inflexible, again she urged to know. The grief whatever it proved, and lulled her head. Upon her aged lap, and clasped her form. In her own feeble arms, as thus she spoke. I see thou lovest, banish far thy fear. My diligence in this shall aid thee, nay. Not even thy father shall the secret know. Madly she bounded from the lap, and cried. While pressed the couch her face, I beg thee go. And spare my grievous shame. More pressing still. Or go she said or ask not why I mourn. What thou so seekest to know is shameful guilt. With horror struck, the ancient dame holds forth. Her hands, which equal shook with fear and age. Then suppliant at her foster daughter's feet. Fell. Now she coaxes, now she threatens loud. If not made privy, threatens to declare. The cord's adventure, and half-finished death. And offers aid once more her love to gain. She raised her head, and filled her nurse's breast. With sudden gushing tears. And oft she strove. All to confess, as oft her tongue was mute. And in her garments hid her blushing face. Then, happy mother in thy spouse. She said. No more, but groaned. Through her cold limbs and bones. The ancient nurse a shivering tremor felt. And her white hairs all over her head, erect. Like bristles stood, for all the truth she saw. Much did she urge the direful flame to drive. Far from her soul, if that could be. The maid. Knows all is just she argues, yet is fixed. For death, unless her lover is obtained. Then she, O oh live, enjoy thy silent there. Enjoy thy parent she not dared to say. Yet by a sacred oath her promise bound. Now Ceres' annual feast, the pious dames. All solemnized, in snowy robes enwrapped. They offered wheaten wreaths, and primal fruits. The rites of Venus, and the touch of man. For thrice three nights forbidden things they held. The monarch's spouse and trace, mid the crowd. Forth went to celebrate the secret feast. And while the couch its legal partner lacked. The ill-officious nurse the king espite. Oppressed with wine, and told the tale of love. Beneath a fictitious name, and praised her charms. The virgin's years he asks. Equal her age. To Murrah she replies. Desired to bring. The damsel, she returns, rejoice. She cries. Rejoice. Our point is gained. The hapless nymph. Felt not a general joy, presaging pangs. Shot through her bosom, still she joyed, her mind. Such discord tore. Now was the silent hour. Boötes mid the triomes had bent. His wain with sloping pole, when Myrrha came. To her flagitious crime. Bright Luna fled. The skies, black clouds the lurking stars overspread. The night saw not its fires. Thou, Icarus. Thy face first hidst, and thou, Erigone. 
hallowed for thy parental love so pure. Thrice was she warned by stumbling feet, and thrice. The owl funereal uttered her death note. Yet on she went, darkness and sable night. Her shame diminished. Fast her left hand grasps. Her nurse, the other waves to explore the way. The threshold of the nuptial chamber now. She touches, now she gently opts the door. Now enters. Then her trembling knees loose shook. Beneath her bending hams, her color fled. Her blood flowed back, and all her wishes sunk. The nearer was her crime approached, the more. With horror she beheld it, and saw mourned. Her daring, anxious to return unknown. The hoary dame, her, lingering thus, dragged on. And when presented at the lofty couch, said sinner as receive her, she's thine own. And the devoted bodies gave to join. The sire his proper bowels, on the bed. Obscene, received, her virgin terrors calmed. And soothed her trembling. Happily too, he said. My daughter, from her age, and happily she. My sire, less names were wanting to their crime. Filled with her father from the bed she rose. Bearing in her dire womb the impious fruit. Carrying her crime conceived. Thy ensuing night. Her incest she repeats, nor ends she here. But sinner is eager at length to know. After such frequent converse, who him loved. At once his daughter and his sin beheld. By lamps brought sudden. Grief repressed all words. But from the sheath he snatched his glittering sword. Quick Mura fled, darkness and favoring night. Saved her from death. Over widespread fields she roamed. Through Arabe palm bearing, and the lands. Panchia holds. Nine times returning light. Had filled the horns of Luna, still she strayed. Then weary rested in Sabia's fields. While scarce she bore the burden of her womb. Then what to ask uncertain, twixt the fear. Of death and weariness of hated life. In words like these she uttered forth her prayers. Ye powers, if those who guilt confess are heard. A punishment exemplar I deserve. I shrink not from it. Yet the living race. Lest I contaminate, if left to live. Or lest I mix profane with shades below. Drive me from either realm, from life and death. Debar me, into some new shape transformed. The penitent some god propitious heard. Her final prayer at least success obtained. For as she spoke rose round her legs the earth. The lofty tree's foundation, crooked roots. Shot from her spreading toes, hard would her bones. Became, the marrow in the midst remained. As pith, a sappy dew still flowed her blood. Her arms' large boughs were spread, her fingers changed. To slender twigs, rough bark her skin became. The growing tree pressed hard the gravid womb. Invested next her breast, and over her neck. Threatened to spread. Impatient of delay. She shrunk below to meet thy approaching wood. And hid beneath the rising bark her face. Human sensation with her change of shape. She lost, yet still she weeps, and from the tree. Warm drops yet fall, and much the tears are prized. The myrrh which oozes from the bark still holds. Its mistress name, well known in every age. Meantime the misbegotten infant grew. Within the trunk, and pressed to find a way. To push to light, and leave the parent womb. Within the tree the gravid womb swelled large. Stretched was the mother with the load, but mute. Were all her woes, nor in travailing voice. Lucina could she call. Yet hard to strain. She seemed, thick groans oft gave the bending bowl. And tears flowed copious. Mild Lucina came. And stood before the groaning boughs, and gave. Assisting help, and spoke the spellful words. Cleft is the tree, and through the fissured bark. A living burthen comes, the infant cries. Who on soft grass placed? The naiad nymphs. Him bathe in tears maternal, such a face. Even envy could not blame. As painters form. The naked Cupid's beauty, such had he. And that their dress no help to guess may give. This the light quiver take, or that resign. Quick passing time unheeded glides along. 
deceiving, naught than years more quickly flies. The child, of sister and of grandsire born. Late in the tree confined, late thence relieved. Just seen most beauteous of the infant tribe. Now youth, now man appears, more beauteous still. Now Venus charmed, his mother's pangs avenged. As kisses sweet the quiver-bearing boy. Pressed on his mother's lips, he witless raised. Slightly her bosom, with a dart that stood. Protruding. Venus, wounded, angry pushed. Her son far from her, like the wound appeared. At first even her deceiving. With the blaze. Of manly beauty caught, she now contemns. The Scytherean shores, nor Papho seeks. Girt by profoundest seas, Nidos, so famed. For fish, nor Amethus with metals rich. Heaven too, she quits, to heaven she now prefers. Adonis, him she follows, him attends. Whose sole employ was loitering in the shade. In anxious study to increase her charms. Bare to the knee, her robe, like Dien's train. High girt, over hills, through woods, and brambly rocks. She roves, exhorts the dogs, and drives such game. As threaten not with danger, fearful hares. High antlered stags, and rapid flying deer. Fierce boars she shuns, and shuns the robber wolf. Strong talon bears, and lion slaughter gorged. Thou too, Adonis, admonition heartst. These to avoid, if admonition ought. With thee could weigh, be brave, the goddess said. To those who fly thee, courage gainst the bold. To danger drags. Dear youth, thy heart is brave. Indulge not to my hazard, nor provoke. Fierce beasts by nature armed, nor seek for fame. Nor youth nor beauty, such as Venus move. Will move the lion, or the bristly boar. Their eyes and breasts untouched by brightest charms. Thunder and lightning in his bended tusks. The fierce boar carries, rapid is the force. The tawny lion, hated race, exerts. My cause of hatred when to thee disclosed. Will raise thy wonder at the monstrous crime. In days of your committed. Now hard toil. Unwonted tires me. Lo. The poplar's shade. So opportune invites, and the green turf. A couch presents. Upon the ground with thee. I'll rest, she spoke, and as she stretched along. She pressed the grass, and pressed the lovely youth. Smiling, her head upon his breast reclined. Midst intermingling kisses, thus she spoke. Perhaps thou hast heard of that renowned maid. Whose fleetness in the race the swiftest man's. Surpassed. Not fabulous the tale you heard. She vanquished all. And hard it was to say. If praise for swiftness, or for beauteous form. She most deserved. To her, who once inquired. Of marriage, fate predicting Phoebus said. A spouse would, Atalanta, be thy bane. Avoid an husband's couch. Yet wilt thou not. An husband's couch avoid, but lose thyself. Thyself yet living. Terror struck to hear. The sentence of the god, maiden she lives. Amid the thickest woods, driving severe. The throngs of pressing suitors from her far. By hard conditions. Never can I be gained. She said till vanquished in the race. With me. Your swiftness try, the conqueror in the strife. Shall gain me spouse, and gain a genial couch. But death must him who lags behind reward. Such be the laws of trial. Pitiless. The law appeared, but, such is beauty's power. Crowds of rash lovers to the law agreed. There sat Hippomenes to view the race. Unequal, and exclaimed, are there so mad? A seeker wife through peril so immense. And the blind love of all the youths condemned. But when her face he saw, and saw her limbs. Bared for the contest, limbs like mine, or thine. Were thine a female mould, amaze he looked. With upraised hands, and cried, forgive my fault. Ye whom but now I blamed, the great reward. For which you labour, then to me unknown. Thus praising, fire he feels, and hopes no youth. More swift will run, and envious fears their speed. But why the fortune of this contest leave? Untried he said, myself? Heaven helps the bold. 
while musing thus Hippomene's remarks. The virgin's flying pace. Though not less swift. Thy Aeonian youth beheld her, than the dart. Shot from the Scythian bow, her beauty more. Ravished his eyes, and speed her charms increased. Thy opposing breeze, which met her rapid feet. Blew back the ribbons which her sandals bound. Her tresses floated down her ivory back. And loosely flowed her garment over her knees. With painted border gay, a purple bloom. With virgin whiteness mixed, her body showed. As when the snow white hall a deepened tinge. From purple curtains shows. While this the guest. Intently notes, the utmost goal is past. Victorious Atalanta with the wreath. Is crowned, the vanquished sigh, and meet the doom. Agreed. He, by the youth's untimely fate. Deterred not, forward stood, and on the nymph. Fixed full his eyes, and said, Why seek you thus? An easy conquest, vanquishing the weak. With me contend. So potent am I born. You need not blush to such high rank to yield. Megarius was my sire, Uncestius his. Grandson to Neptune, thus the fourth I boast. From ocean sovereign. Nor beneath my race. Stoops ought my valour, should success me crown. A lofty and an everlasting fame. Hippa means your conqueror, would you gain? As thus he spoke, with softening eyes the maid. Beheld him, doubtful which, twere best to wish. To vanquish or be vanquished. While she thus. Uttered her thoughts what God, an envious foe. To beauty would destroy him, urged to seek. My bed, by risking thus his own dear life? I cannot sure so great a prize be thought. His beauty melts me not, though yet I own. Such beauty well might melt. But such a youth. He seems, he moves me not but from his years. What courage in him reigns? His soul unawed. By death. He springs the forth from ocean's king. Then how he loves. And prizes so my hand. That should hard fortune keep me from his arms. He perish. Stranger, while thou mayest, depart. Avoid the bloody nuptials. Marriage, I. Too cruel make. No maid would thee refuse. And soon mayest thou a wiser nymph select. But why for him this care? From me who see. So many die, whom he too has beheld. Then let him perish, since the numerous train. Of slaughtered lovers warns him not, he spurns. And hated life. How? Should he then be slain? Because with me to live he wishes? Death. Inglorious must he gain, reward of love? Hatred would such a conquest still attend. Still is not mine the fault. Do thou desist. Or if thy madness holds, oh, that thy feet. More swift may be. See in his youthful face. What virgin beauties? Ah. Hippomenes. Would Atalanta thou hadest never seen. Well worthy thou of life. Were I more blessed. Had rugged fate not me a spouse for bad. Thou, soul art he, by whom to high men's couch. With joy I would be led. Thus spoke the nymph. In fond simplicity, first touched by love. Unknowing what she felt, ardent she loved. Yet knew the passion not which ruled her soul. Now loud the people, and the king demand. The wonted race. To me with anxious words. Hippomenes, great Neptune's offspring prayed. O Cytheria. I adjure thee, aid. My bold attempt, from thee those flames I felt. Grant them thy succour. Gales auspicious waft. To me the tender prayers, my soul is moved. Nor long the aid, so needful I delay. A tract there lies in Cyprus' richest lands. Name Tamasine by those who dwell around. This ancient times made sacred unto me. And with this gift my temples were endowed. Midst of the field appears a shining tree. Yellow its leaves, its crackling branches gold. By chance there straying, from the boughs I plucked. Three golden apples, bore them in my hand. And seen by none, except the favoured youth. Approached Hippomenes, and taught their use. The trumpets gave the sign, each ready sprung. 
shot from the barrier, and with rapid feet. Skimmed lightly over the sand. Over the wide mane. With feet unwetted, they might seem to fly. Or sweep thy unbending ears of hoary grain. Loud shouts encouraging, and cheering words. On every side a stimulus afford. To urge the youth's exertions. Now, they cry. Now, now, hippa means, the time to press. On, on. Exert thy vigor flag not now. The race is thine. The grateful sounds both heard. Megaria son, and Shonia's daughter, hard. Which joyed the most to judge. How oft her pace. She slackened, when with ease she might have passed. And ceased unwilling on his face to gaze. Tired now, parched breathings from the mouth ascends. Of Neptune's son, and far remote the goal. Then, as his last resource, he distant flung. One of the tree's bright produce. In amaze. The virgin saw it roll, and from the course. Swerved, tempted to obtain the glittering fruit. Hippomenes overshoots her, all around. Applauses ring. She soon corrects delay. And wasted moments, with more rapid speed. And leaves again the youth behind. Again. Delayed to catch the second flying fruit. The youth is followed, and again overpassed. Now near the goal they come, oh, goddess. Now. Who gave the boon assist, he said, and flung. With youthful force obliquely over the plain. More to detain, the last bright glittering gold. In doubt the virgin saw it fly, I urged. That she should follow, and fresh weight I gave. The apple when obtained, thus by the load. Her course impeding, and obtained delay. But lest my tail, in length surpass the race. The vanquished virgin was the victor's prize. Thinkest thou Adonis, did I not deserve? Most grateful thanks in smoking incense paid? Mindless, nor thanks, nor incense yielded he. And sudden anger in my bosom raged. Irked at the slight, I instantly provide. That future times with less contempt behave. And against them both my raging bosom burns. Now pass they near a temple, long since raised. By famed Echion, in a shady wood. To the great mother of the heavenly gods. When the long journey tempted to repose. And there, inspired by me, ill time desire. Hippomenes excited. Near the fane. A cave like close recess dim lighted stood. With native pumice roofed, hallowed of old. Where priests the numerous images had placed. Of ancient deities. They entered here. And with forbidden lust the place defiled. The wooden images their eyes avert. The tower crowned goddess Dubia stands to plunge. The guilty couple in the Stygian wave. Too light that sentence seems, straight yellow manes. Cover their soft smooth necks, their fingers curve. To mighty claws, their arms to forelegs turn. A new formed tail sweep lightly over the sand. Angry their countenance glares, for speech they roar. They haunt the forests for their nuptial dome. Transformed to lions, and by others feared. Their tamed mouths champ the Cybelian reins. Do thou, O oh dearest boy. Their rage avoid. Not theirs alone, but all the savage tribe. That stubborn meet with breasts the furious war. Not turn their backs for flight, lest bold too much. Thou and myself, have caused too much to mourn. Thus she admonished, and by coupled swans. Upborn, she cleft the air, but his brave soul. Her cautious admonitions rash contemned. By chance his dogs the well-marked footprints traced. And from his lurking covert roused a boar. Whom with a stroke oblique, as from the break. To spring he went, the gallant youth transpierced. Instant, with crooked tusks, the gore-stained spear. Wrenched the fierce boar away, and at him rushed. Trembling, and safety-seeking, every fang. Deep in his groin he plunged, and on the sand. Stretched him expiring. Cytheria, born. Through midmost ether in her chariot light. Had not at Cyprus with her swans arrived. When, known from far, she heard his dying groans. And thither turned her snowy birds. From high. When lifeless she beheld him, in his blood. 
Convulsive struggling, quick she darted down. She tore her garments, and she tore her hair. And with unpitying hands her breast she smote. Then, fate upbraiding first, she said, not all. Shall bend to your decision, still shalt thou. Remain, Adonis, monument of woe. Suffered by me. The image of thy death. Annual repeated, annual shall renew. Remembrance of my mourning. But thy blood. A flower shall form. Shalt thou, O Proserpine. A female body to a scented herb. Transform, and I the Cinerean youth. Forbidden be to change? She said, and flung. Nectar most odorous on the ebbing gore. Which instant swelling rose. So bubbles rise. On the smooth stream when showery floods descend. Nor long the term, an hour's short space elapsed. When the same tainted flower the blood produced. Such flowers the deep pomegranate bears, which hides. Its purple grains beneath a flexile rind. But short its boast, for the same winds afford. Its name, and shake them where they lighted here. Ripe for their fall in fragile beauty gay. Book 11. While thus the Thracian bard the forests drew. And rocks, and furious beasts with strains divine. Behold the Thracian dames. Their maddened breasts. Clad with the shaggy spoil of furious beasts. Espite him from an hillock's rising swell. As to his sounding strings he shaped the song. When one, her tresses in the ruffling air. Wild streaming, cried, lo. Him who spurns our ties. And full her dart, gainst the harmonious mouth. A feeble sun she flung, in twisted round. With leaves, a bruise without a wound appeared. A stone another for a weapon seized. The flying stone was even in air subdued. By harmony and song, and at his feet. Lo fell, a suppliant for its daring fault. But now the tumult swells more furious, bounds. It knows not. Mad Erinus reigns around. Yet all their weapons had his music's power. Softened, but clamour, Berecynthian horns. Drums, clappings, bacchanalian shouts, and howls. Drowned the soft lyre. Then were the stones disdained. With silenced Orpheus' blood. The Bacchae first. Drove wide the crowding birds, the snakes, the beasts. In throngs collected by his tuneful voice. Glory of Orpheus' stage. From thence they turned. Their gory hands on Orpheus, and around. Clustered like fowls that in the day espy. The bird of darkness. Then as in the morn. The high-raised amphitheater beholds. The stagger prey to hounds, so they the bard. Attacked, and flung their thirsi twined with leaves. For different use first formed. Those hurl huge clods. These branches torn from trees, and others stones. Lest to their fury arms were wanting, lo! A yoke of oxen with the plowshare broke. The ground, not distant far, with sinews there. Of nervous strength, the husbandman upturned. The stubborn soil, with sweat producing fruit. These, when the troop they saw, affrighted fled. Quitting their instruments of toil. Their rakes. Their ponderous harrows, and their huge long spades. Were scattered left on the deserted field. These when their furious hands had seized, and tore. From the strong oxen's heads the threatening horns. Back they returned to end the poet's fate. And sacrilegious, as he stretched his hands. They slaughtered him. Then first in vain his words. Were uttered, nought could then his speech avail. Then, heavenly powers. His spirit was expelled. And breathed in air, even through that mouth whose sound. Hard rocks had heard, and wildest beasts had owned. For thee, O Orpheus, mourned the feathered tribe, and crowds of savage monsters, flinty rocks, bewailed thee, forests, which thy tempting song, so oft had cause to follow, wept, the trees, shorn of their pride, bewailed with falling leaves. Each stream, tis said, with flowing tears increased. Its current, naiad nymphs and dryads wore. Garments of sable tinge, with streaming hair. Wide scattered lie his limbs. His head and lyre. 
thou, Hebrus, dost receive, and while they glide. Wondrous occurrence. Down the floating stream. The lyre a mournful moan sends forth, the lips. Now lifeless, murmur plaintive, and the bank. Echoes the lamentations. Borne along. To ocean, now his native stream they leave. And reach Mathimna on the lesbian shore. The head, exposed thus on the foreign sand. And lock still dropping with the watery wave. A snake approached. But Phoebus gave his aid. And checked the greedy bite, with open jaws. The serpent rears in stone congealed, as then. Widely he gaped. The ghost from earth descends. And views the regions he had viewed before. Exploring through thy Elysian fields he meets. His dear Eurydice, with longing arms. He clasps her. Here they walk, now side by side. With equal pace, now follows he, and now. A little space precedes her, Orpheus there. Back on Eurydice in safety looks. But Bacchus suffered not the heinous deed. Unpunished to remain, grieved at the bard. Who sung his praises, thus was snatched away. He bound the Thracian matrons, who the crime. Had perpetrated, fast by twisted roots. To earth as trees. He stretched their feet and toes. Which followed him so swift, and struck their points. Deep in the solid earth, a bird ensnared. Thus finds his leg imprisoned by the wires. Hid by the crafty fowler, and his wings. Beats, while his fluttering draws more tight the noose. So each, as firmly fixed to earth she stood. Affrighted strove to fly, but strove in vain. The flexile roots detained them, and fast tied. Spite of their struggling bounds, while they explore. For toes and nails, and while they seek for feet. They see the wood their taper legs conceal. Their grieving hands to beat their thighs are raised. Their hands strike solid wood, their shoulders, breasts. Are also would become. Their outstretched arms. Extended boughs appeared, and boughs they were. Nor sated yet was Bacchus, all their fields. He quits, attended by a worthier troop. To Tmolus vineyards and Pactolus stream. He hies, the stream not yet for gold was famed. Not yet so precious were its envit sands. Satyrs and Bacchant nymphs, his custom choir. Attend him, but Silenus was not found. Him drunken had the rustic Phrygian seized. Reeling with wine, and tottering, neath his years. With ivy crowned, and fettered to their king. The royal Midas, brought him. Midas once. The Thracian Orpheus Bacchus orgies taught. With sage Eumolpus, and at once he knew. His old associate in the sacred rites. And joyful feasted with voluptuous fare. For twice five days, and twice five nights his guest. Thy eleventh time Phosphor, now the lofty host. Of stars had chased from heaven, the jovial king. Went forth to Lydia's fields, and there restored. Silenus to the youth his foster child. He, joyed again his nursing sire to see. On him bestowed his anxious sought desire. Though useless was the gift. Greedy he craved. What only harmed him, saying grant, O, oh, power. Whatever I touch may straight to gold be changed. Bacchus consents to what he wishes, gives. The hurtful gift, but grieves to see his mind. No better wish demand. Joyful departs. The Berecynthian monarch, with ill fate. Delighted, and, each object touching, tries. The promised faith. Scarcely himself believed. When from a growing ilex down he tore. A sprouting bough, straight gold the bough became. A stone from earth he lifted, pale the stone. In gold appeared, he touched a turfy clod. The clod quick hardened with the potent touch. He plucked the ripened hoary ears of wheat. And golden shone the grain, he from the tree. An apple snatched, the famed Hesperian fruit. He seemed to hold, wherever his fingers touched. The lofty pillars, all the pillars shone. Nay, where his hands he in the waters laved. The waters flowing from his hands seemed such. As Danae might deceive. Scarce can his breast. His towering projects hold, all fancied gold. Thy attendant slaves before their master, joyed. 
At this great fortune, heap the table high. With dainties, nor was bread deficient there. But when his hands the cerealian boon had touched, the cerealian boon grew hard. And when the dainty food with greedy tooth he strove to eat, the dainty food grew bright. In glittering plates, wherever his teeth had touched, he mixed pure water with his patron's wine. And fluid gold adown his cheeks straight flowed. With panic seized, the new found plague to view. Rich, yet most wretched, from his wealthy hoard. Fain would he fly, and from his soul detests. What late he anxious prayed. The plenteous gold. Abates his hunger naught, and parching thirst. Burns in his throat. He well deserves the curse. Caused by now hated gold. Lifting his hands. And splendid arms to heaven, he cries, O sire. Lenian. Pardon my offence, my fault. Is evident, but pity me, I pray. And from me move this fair deceitful curse. Bacchus, the gentlest of celestial powers. Relieved him, as he thus his error owned. The compact first agreed dissolved, and void. The grant became, lest still thou shouldst remain. With gold, he said, so madly wished, imbued. Haste to the stream by mighty Sardis town. Which flows, thy path along the mountain's ridge. Explore, opposing still the gliding waves. Till thou the spring espiest. Then deeply plunge. Beneath the foaming gush thy head, where fall. It spouts its waters, and thy error cleanse. As clean thy limbs thou washest. To the stream. The king as bidden hastes. The golden charm. Tinges the river, from the monarch's limbs. It passes to the stream. And now the banks. Harden in veins of gold to sight disclosed. And the pale sands in glittering splendor shine. Detesting riches, now in woods he lives. And rural dales, with Pan, who still resorts. To mountain caverns. Still his soul remains. Stupidly dull, the folly of his breast. Was doomed to harm its owner as before. Hytmolus rears with steep ascent his head. Overlooking distant ocean, wide he spreads. His bounds abrupt, confined by Sardis here. By small high peep there. Upon his top. While Pan in boastful strain the tender nymphs. Pleased with his notes, and on his wax joined reeds. A paltry ditty played, boldly he dared. To place his own above Apollo's song. The god to try thy unequal strife descends. Tmolus the umpire. On his mountain placed. The ancient judge from his attentive ears. The branches cleared, save that his azure head. With oak was crowned, an acorn's dangling down. His hollow temples graced. The shepherd's god. Beholding, no delay, your judge, he said. Shall cause, and straight pan sounds the rural reeds. His barbarous music much the judgment pleased. A Midas, who amidst the crowd approached. Now venerable Tmolus on the face. A Phoebus turned his eyes, and with him turned. Thy attentive woods. Parnassian laurel bound. His golden locks, deep dipped in Tyrian dye. His garment swept the ground, his left hand held. The instrument with gems and ivory rich. The other grasped the bow, his posture showed. The skillful master's art, lightly he touched. The chords with thumb experienced. Justly charmed. With melody so sweet, Tmolus decreed. The pipe of Pan to Phoebus lute should yield. Much did the judgment of the sacred hill. And much his sentence all delight, save one. For Midas blames him, and unjust declares. The arbitration. Human shape no more. The god permits his foolish ears to wear. But long extends them, and with hoary hairs. Fills them within, and grants them power to move. From their foundation flexile. All beside. Was man, one part felt his revenge alone. A slowly pacing ass's ears he bears. His head, weighed heavy with his load of shame. He strove in purple turban to enfold. Thus his disgrace to hide. But when as won't. His slave his hairs, unseemly lengthened, cropped. He saw the change, the tale he feared to tell. Of what he witnessed, 
though he anxious wished. In public to proclaim it, yet to hold. Sacred the trust surpassed his power. He went. Forth, and digged up the earth, with whispering voice. There he imparted of his master's ears. What he had seen, and murmured to the sod. But bear it close the confidential words. Beneath the turf again, then, all filled up. Silently he departed. From the spot. Began a thick-grown tuft of trembling reeds. To spring, which ripening with the years full round. Betrayed their planter. By the light south wind. When agitated, they the bear it words. Disclosed, betraying what the monarch's ears. Late on a sun, avenged, high tmolus leaves. And cleaving liquid air, lights in the realm. Laomedon commands, on the straight sea. Nephelian Helen names, an altar stands. Sacred to Panamphian Jove, where seen. Lofty Retium rises to the left. Sigium to the right. From thence he saw. Laomedon, as first he toiled to build. The walls of infant Troy, with toil immense. The undertaking in progression grew. And mighty sums he saw the work would ask. A mortal shape he takes, a mortal shape. Clothes to the trident bearing sire, who rules. The swelling deep. The Phrygian monarch's walls. They raise, a certain treasure for their toil. Agreed on first. The work is finished. Base. The king disowns the compact, and his lies. Perfidious, backs with perjury. Boast not. This treatment calmly borne, the ocean's god. Exclaimed, and over the sordid Trojan's shores. Poured all his flood of billows, and transformed. The land to sheets of water, swept away. The tiller's treasure, bear it all the meads. Nor sated with this ruin, he demands. The monarch's daughter should be given a prey. To an huge monster of the main, whom, chained. To the hard rock, Alcide's arm set free. And claimed the boon his due, the promised steeds. Refused the prize his valorous deed deserved. He sacked the walls of doubly perjured Troy. Nor thence did Telamon, whose powerful arm. The hero aided, unrewarded go. Hesion was by Alcides given. Peleus was famous for his goddess spouse. Proud not more justly of his grandsire's fame. Than of his consort's father, numbers more. Might boast them grandsons of imperial Jove. To him alone a goddess bride belonged. For aged Proterus had to that he said. O, oh, goddess of the waves, a child conceive. Thou shalt be mother of a youth, whose deeds. Will far the bravest of his sires transcend. And mightier than his sires shall be his name. Hence, lest the world than Jove a mightier god. Should know, though Jove with amorous flames fierce burned. He shunned thy embraces of the watery dame. And bade his grandson Peleus to his hopes. Succeed, and clasp the virgin in his arms. Hemonia's coaster bay possesses, curved. Like a bent bow, whose arms enclosing stretch. Far in the sea, where if more deep the waves. And haven would be formed, the waters spread. Just over the sand. Firm is the level shore. Such as would never the race retard, nor hold. The print of feet, no seaweed there was spread. Nigh sprung a grove of myrtle, covered thick. With double tainted berries, in the midst. A cave appeared, by art or nature formed. But art most plain was seen. Here, the tease. Oft. Placed unattired on thy rain dolphin's back. Thou didst delight to come. There, as thou laidest. In slumbers bound, did Peleus on thee seize. And when his most endearing prayers were spurned. Force he prepared, both arms around thy neck. Close clasped. And then to thy accustomed arts. Of often varied form, hadst thou not fled. He might have prospered in his daring hope. But now a bird thou wert, the bird he held. Now an huge tree, Peleus the tree grasped firm. A spotted tiger then thy third changed shape. Frighted at that, he asides his hold. Quit from her body. Then the ocean powers. He worshipped, pouring wine upon the waves. And bleating victims slew, and incense burned. Till from the gulf profound the prophet spoke. Of Carpathus. 
O, oh, Peleus! Gain thou shalt. The wished for nuptials, only when she rests. In the cool cavern sleeping, thou with cords. And fetters strong her, unsuspecting, bind. Nor let an hundred shapes thy soul deceive. Still hold her fast whatever form she wears. Till in her pristine looks she shines again. This Proter said, and plunged his head beneath. The waves, while scarce his final words were heard. Prone down the west was Titan speeding now. And to thy Hesperian waves his car inclined. When the fair Nereid from the wide deep came. And sought her customed couch. Scarce Pelia seized. Her virgin limbs, when straight a thousand forms. She trite, till fast she saw her members tied. And her arms fettered close in every part. Then sighed, and said, Thou conquerest by some god. And the fair form of the tease was displayed. The hero clasped her, and his wishes gained. And great Achilles straight the nymph conceived. Now blessed was Peleus in his son and bride. And blessed in all which can to man belong. Save in the crime of murdered focus. Driven. From his paternal home, of brother's blood. Guilty, Trachinia's soil received him first. Here seeks, Pharsphor's offspring, who retained. His father's splendor on his forehead, ruled. The land, which knew not bloodshed, knew not force. At that time gloomy, sad, himself unlike. He mourned a brother's loss. To him, fatigued. With travel, and with care worn out, the son. Of Ecus arrived, and in the town. Entered with followers few, the flocks and herds. That journeyed with him, just without the walls. In a dark vale were left. When the first grant. T approached the monarch was obtained, he raised. The olive in his suppliant hand, then told. His name, and lineage, but his crime concealed. His cause of flight dissembling, next he begged. For him and his, some pastures and a town. Then thus Trachinia's king with friendly brow. To all, the very meanest of mankind. Are our possessions free, nor do I rule. A realm inhospitable, add to these. Inducement strong, thine own illustrious name. And grandsire Jove. In praying lose not time. Whatever thou wouldst, thou shalt receive, and all. Such as it is, with me most freely share. Would it were better. Speaking thus, he wept. His cause of grief to Peleus and his friends. Anxious inquiring, then the monarch told. Perchance this bird, which by fierce rapine lives. Dread of the feathered tribe, you think still wings. Possessed. Once man, he bore a noble soul. Though stern, and rough in war, and fond of blood. His name Dedalian, from the sire produced. Who calls Aurora forth, and last of stars. Relinquishes the sky. Peace my delight. Peace to preserve was still my care, my joys. I shared in Hymen's bonds. Fierce wars alone. My brother pleased. His valor then overthrew. Monarchs and nations, who, in altered form, drives now Thisbian pigeons through the air. His daughter Keone, in beauty rich. For marriage ripe, now fourteen years had seen. And numerous suitors with her charms were fired. It chanced that Phoebus once, and Myra's son. Returning from his favorite delp hose this. That from Selene's top, together saw. The nymph, together felt the amorous flame. Apollo his warm hopes till night defers. But Hermes brooks delay not, with his rod. Compelling sleep, he strokes the virgin's face. Beneath the potent touch she sinks, and yields. Without resistance to his amorous force. Night spread over heaven the stars, when Phoebus took. A matron's form, and seized foretasted joys. When its full time the womb matured had seen. Autolycus was born, the crafty seed. Of the winged-footed god, acute of thought. To every shade of theft, from his sire's art. Degenerate naught, white he was wont to make. Appear as black, and black from white produce. Philammon, famous with the lyre and song. Was born to Phoebus, twins the nymph brought forth. But where the benefit that two she bears? Where that the favorite of two gods she boasts? What that a valiant sire she claims? 
and claims. As ancestor the mighty thundering God. Is it that glory such as this still harms? Certain it hurtful proved to her, who dared. Herself prefer to Dien, and despise. The goddess beauty, fierce in ire she cried. At least I'll try to make my actions please. Nor stayed, the bow she bent, and from the cord. Impelled the dart, through her deserving tongue. The reed was sent. Mute straight that tongue became. Nor sound, nor what she tried to utter, heard. Striving to speak, life flowed with flowing blood. What woe, O hapless piety, oppressed. My heart. What solace to her tender sire. I spoke, my solace just the same he heard. As rocks hear murmuring waves. But still he moaned. For his lost child, but when the flames he saw. Ascending, four times, mid the funeral fires. He strove to plunge, four times from thence repulsed. His rapid limbs addressed for flight, and rushed. Like a young bullock, when the hornets sting. Deep in his neck he bears, in pathless ways. Even now more swift than man he seemed to run. His feet seemed wings to wear, for all behind. He left far distant. Through desire of death. Rapid he gained Parnassus' loftiest ridge. Apollo, pitying, when D. Dalian flung. From the high rock his body, to a bird. Transformed him, and on sudden pinions bore. Him floating, bended hooks he gave his claws. And gave a crooked beak, valor as wont. And strength more great than such a body shows. Now as an hawk, to every bird a foe. He wages war on all, and grieved himself. He constant cause for others' grief affords. While these miraculous deeds bright fast for sob. Tells of his brother, Peleus herdsman comes. Phocian anita, flying, and, with speed. Breathless, O Peleus. Peleus, he exclaims. Of horrid slaughter messenger I come. Him Peleus bids, whatever he brings, to speak. Trachinia's monarch even with friendly dread. Trembles the news to hear. When thus the man. The weary cattle to the curving shore. I driven, when soul from loftiest heaven might view. His journey half performed, while half remained. Part of the oxen on the yellow sand. On their knees bending viewed the spacious plain. Of widespread waters, part with loitering pace. Strayed here, and thither, others swam and reared. Their lofty necks above the waves. There stood. Close to the sea a temple, where nor gold. Nor polished marble shone, but reared with trees. Thick piled, it gloomed within an ancient grove. This, Nereus and the Nereid nymphs possess. A fisherman, as on the shore he dried. His nets, informed us these the temple owned. A marsh joins near the fane, with willows thick. Beset, which waves overflowing first has formed. A wolf from thence, a beast of monstrous bulk. Thundering with mighty clash, with terror struck. The neighboring spots, then from the marshy woods. Sprung out, his jaws terrific, smeared with foam. And clotted gore, his eyes with red flames glared. Mad though he raged with ire and famine both. Famine less strong appeared, for his dire more. And craving hunger, he not cared to fill. With the slain oxen, wounding all the herd. All hostile overthrowing. Some of us. Ranched by his deadly tooth, to death were sent. Defense attempting. The shore and marsh. With bellowings echoing, and the ocean's edge. Redden with blood. But ruinous, delay. For hesitation leisure is not now. While aught remains, let all together join. Arm. Arm. And on him hurl united spears. The herdsman ceased, Peleus the loss not moved. But conscious of his fault, infers the plague. Sent by the childless Nereid to avenge. Her slaughtered focus loss. Yet seeks bids. His warriors arm, and take their forceful darts. With them prepared to issue, but his spouse. Alcyone, roused by the tumult, sprung. Forth from her chamber, unadorned her locks. Which scattered hung around her. Seeks, neck. Clasping, she begged with moving words and tears. Aid he would send, but go not, thus preserve. Two lives in one. 
then Pelias to the queen. Banish your laudable and duteous fears. For what the king intended, thanks are due. Arms against this novel plague I will not take. Prayers must the goddess of the deep appease. A lofty tower there stood, whose summit bore. A beacon, grateful object to the sight. Of weary mariners. Thither they mount. And see with sighs the herd strewed over the beach. The monster ravaging with gory jaw. And his long shaggy hairs in blood beaded. Thence Peleus, stretching to the wide seashore. His arms, to Samoth Cerulean prayed. To finish there her rage, and grant relief. Unmoved she heard Eosides implore. But the tease, suppliant, from the goddess gained. The favor for her spouse. Unchecked, the wolf. The furious slaughter quits not, fierce the more. From the sweet taste of blood, till to a stone. Transformed, as on a bull's torn neck he hung. His form remains, and, save his color, all. The color only shows him wolf no more. And shows no terror he shall now inspire. Still in this realm the angry fates denight. Peleus to stay, exiled, he wandered on. And reached Magnesia, from Acastus there. Thessalian, expiation he received. Seeks meantime, with anxious doubts disturbed. First with the prodigy, his brother's change. Then those which followed, to the clarion god. Prepared to go, the oracles to seek. Which sweetly solace men's uneasy minds. Delpose was inaccessible, the road. Forbes profane, with all his phlegians barred. Yet first Alcyone, most faithful spouse. He tells thee of his purpose. Instant seized. A death-like coldness on her inmost heart. A boxen paleness over her features spread. And down her cheeks the tears in torrents rolled. Thrice she attempted words, but thrice her tears. Her words prevented, then her pious plaints. Broken by interrupted sobs, she spoke. My dearest Lord. What hapless fault of mine. Thy soul has altered? Where that love for me. Thou wontest to show? Canst thou now unconcerned. Depart, and leave Alcyon behind? Glads thee this tedious journey? Am I loved? Most dearly farthest absent? Yet by land. Was all thy journey, then I should but grieve. Not tremble, sighs would then of fears take place. The sea, the dread appearance of the main. Me terrifies. But lately I beheld. Torn planks bestrew the shore, and oft I've read. On empty tombs, the names of dead inscribed. Let not fallacious confidence thy mind. Mislead, that airless I call my sire. Who binds the furious winds in caves, and smooths. At will the ocean. No. When issued once. They sweep the main, no power of his can rule. And uncontrolled they ravage all the land. Nor checks them aught on ocean. Clouds of heaven. They clash, and ruddy lightnings hurl along. In fierce encounter. More their force I know. For well I knew, and oft have marked their power. While yet an infant at my sire's abode. The more I deem them such as should be feared. Yet dearest spouse, if thy firm fixed resolve. No prayers can change, and obstinate thou standest. For sailing, let me also with thee go. Together then the buffeting will bear. Then shall I fear but what I suffer, then. Whatever we suffer we'll together feel. Together sailing over the boundless main. Her words and tears the star-born husband moved. For less of love he felt not. Yet his scheme. To voyage over the deep he could not change. Nor yet consent Alcyone should share. His peril, and with soothing soft replies. He tried to calm her timid breast. Nor yet. Himself approved the arguments he tried. His consort to persuade consent to yield. To his departure. This at length he adds. As solace, which alone her bosom moved. All absence tedious seems, but by the fires. My father bears, I swear, if fates permit. Returning, thou shalt see me, ere the moon. Shall twice have filled her orb. Hope in her breast. Thus raised by promise of a quick return. Instant the vessel, from the dock drawn forth. 
he bids them launch in ocean, and complete. In all her stores and tackling. This beheld. Alcyon, and, presaging again. Woes of the future, trembled, and a flood. Of tears again gushed forth, again she clasped. His neck, at length, as, wretched wife, she cried. Farewell, she, swooning, lifeless sunk to earth. The rowers now, while seek sought delays. To their strong breasts the double-ranking oars. Drew back, and cleft with equal stroke the surge. Her humid eyes she raised, and first beheld. Her husband standing on the crooked poop. Waving his hand as signal, she his sign. Returned. When farther from the land they shot. Her straining eyes no more indulged to know. His features, still, while yet they could, her eyes. Pursued the flying vessel. This at length. Increasing distance her forbade to see. Still she perceived the floating sails, which spread. From the mast's loftiest summit. Sails at length. Were also lost in distance, then she sought. Anxious her widowed chamber, and her limbs. Threw on the couch. The bed, the vacant space. Renewed her tears, reminding of her loss. Now far from port they'd sailed, when the strong ropes. The breeze began to strain, the rowers turn. Their oars, and lash them to the vessel's side. Hoist to the mast's extremist height their yards. And loose their sails to catch the coming breeze. Scarce half, not more than half, the sea's extent. The vessel now had ploughed, and either land. Was distant far, when, as dim night approached. The sea seemed foaming white with rising waves. And the strong east more furious, gan to blow. Long had the master cried, lower down your yards. And close furl every sail, he bids, the storm. Adverse, impedes the sound, the roaring waves. Drown every voice in noise. Yet some, untold. Haste to secure the oars, part bind the sails. Part fortify the sides, this water laves. Ejecting seas on seas, that lowers the yards. While thus they toil unguided, rough the storm. Increases, from each quarter furious winds. Wage warfare, and with mounting billows join. Trembles the ruler of the bark, and owns. His state, he knows not what he should command. Nor what forbid, so swift the sudden storm. So much more strong the tempest than his skill. Men clamorous shout, chords rattle, mighty waves. Roar, on waves rushing, thunders roll through air. In billows mounts the ocean, and appears. To meet the sky, and over the hanging clouds. Sprinkles its foam. Now from the lowest depths. As yellow sands they turn, the billows shine. Now blacker seem they than the Stygian waves. Now flattened, all with spumy froth is spread. The ship Trachinian too, each rapid change. In agitation heaves, now raised sublime. The deepened veil she views as from a ridge. So lofty, down to Atron's low depths. Now in the hollow of the wave she falls. And views thy overhanging heaven from hell's deep gulf. Oft bursting on her side with loud report. The billow sound, nor with less fury beat. Than the ballista, or huge battering ram. Driven on the tottering fort, all lions fierce. Whose strength and rage increasing with their speed. Rush on the armoured breast and outstretched spear. So rush the waves with wind-propelling power. High over the decks, and, both the rigging rose. Now shook the wedges, open rents appeared. The pitchy covering gone, and wide displayed. A passage opens to the deadly flood. Then from the breaking clouds fell torrent showers. All heaven seemed sweeping down to swell the main. And the swollen main, ascending to invade. Celestial regions, soaked with floods each sail. And ocean's briny waters mixed with rain. No light the firmament possessed, and night. Frowned blacker through the tempest. Lightning oft. Reft the thick gloom, and gave a brilliant blaze. And while the lightnings flamed the waters burn. Now over the vessel's covered deck the waves. High tower, and as a soldier, braver far. Than all his fellows, urged by thirst of fame. The well-defended walls to scale off trite. At length his hope obtains, and singly keeps. 
his post, by foes on every side assailed. So when the furious billows raging beat, the lofty side, the tenth impetuous rears. Above the rest, and forceful rushes on. The battery ceasing not on the spent bark. Till over the wall, as of a captured town. Downward it rushes. Part without invade. And part are lodged within. In terror all. In trembling panic stand, not more the crowd. Which fill a city's walls, when foes without. Mine their foundations, while an entrance gained. Within, part rage already. Art no more. Can aid, all courage droops, as many deaths. Seem rapid rushing as the billows break. This wails in tears his fate, that stupid stands. This calls those blessed whom funeral rites await. One to his deity rich offerings vows. And vainly stretching forth to heaven his arms. The heaven he sees not, begs for aid, his friends. Brethren and parents, fill of this the mind. Of that his children, or whatever he leaves. Alcyon, alone in seeks, soul. Found place, and but Alcyon, his lips. Nought uttered. Her alone he wished to see. Yet joyed she far was absent. Much he longed. To view once more his dear paternal shores. And turn his last looks towered his regal dome. But where to turn he knows not, in a whirl. So boils the sea, and all the heaven is hid. In shade, by more than pitchy clouds produced. Night doubly darkened. Now the whirlwind's force. Shivers the mast, and tears the helm away. And like a victor, proud to view his spoils. Mounts an high wave, and scornfully beholds. The lower billows, thundering down it sweeps. Impelled by force that Athos might overturn. Or Pindus, from their roots, and plunge in sea. Down in the lowest depths, the weight and blow. Buried the vessel, with her most the crew. Sunk in the raging gulf, some met their fate. Never to return to air, some floated still. To splintered fragments of the bark they clung. Seeks himself, grasped only in that hand. A shattered plank, which once a scepter held. An airless and phosphor called in vain. But chiefly from his lips was, as he swam. Alcyon resounded, that loved name. Remembered constant, and repeated most. He prays the billows may his body bear. To meet her eyes, and praise her friendly hands. His burial may perform. While thus he swims. Alcyon he names, whenever the waves. To gasp for breath permit him, and beneath. The billows, tries Alcyon to sound. Lo! A black towering arch of waters broke. Midst of the surges, in the boiling foam. Involved, overwhelmed he sunk. That mournful night. Was phosphor, dark, impalpable to view. And since stern fate to heaven his post fast bound. He veiled in densest clouds his grieving face. Meantime Alcyon her height of woe. Unknown, counts each sad night, and now with haste. The garments he should wear prepares, and now. Those to adorn herself when him she meets. Cherishing emptiest hopes of his return. Devoutest offerings to the heavenly powers. She bore, but incense far before the rest. On Juno's altar burned, and oft she prayed. For him who was not. For his safety prayed. For his return, and that his love might still. Without a rival hers remain, the last. Of all her ardent prayers indulgence found. But longer bore the goddess not to hear. Such vain petitions for the dead, these hands. Polluted, from her altars to remove. To Iris thus she spoke, O, oh, faithful maid. Most trusty messenger, with speed repair. To somnus drowsy hall, him bid to send. A vision formed in lifeless seek's shape. To tell Alcyon her woe's extent. She ended, in her various tainted robe. Attired, and spreading over the spacious heaven. Her sweeping arch, Iris the dwelling sought. The goddess ordered. Hid beneath a steep. Near the Cimmerians, in a deep dug cave. Formed in a hollow mountain, stands the hall. And secret dwelling of inactive sleep. Where Phoebus rising, or in midday height. Or setting radiance, never can dart his beams. 
Clouds with dim darkness mingled, from the ground. Exhale, and twilight makes a doubtful day. The watchful bird, with crested head, never calls. Aurora with his song, no wakeful dog. Nor goose more wakeful, ever the silence breaks. No savage beasts, no pastured flocks, no boughs. Shook by the breeze, no brawl of human voice. Their sounds, but death-like silence reigns around. Yet from the rock's foundation, gently flows. A stream of Lethe's water, whose dull waves. In gentle murmuring over the pebbles pearl. Tempting to slumber. At the cavern door. The fruitful poppy, and ten thousand plants. From which moist night the drowsy juices drains. Then scatters over the shady earth, grew thick. Round all the house no gate was seen, which, turned. On the dry hinge should creak, no sentry strict. The threshold to protect. But in the midst. The lofty bed of ebon formed, was placed. Black were the feathers, all the coverings black. And stretched at length the god was seen, his limbs. With lassitude relaxed. Around him thronged. In every part, vain dreams, in various forms. In number more than what the harvest bears. Of bearded grains, the woods of verdant leaves. Or shore of yellow sands. Here came the nymph. Thy opposing dreams pushed sideways with her hands. And through the sacred mansion from her robe. Scattered refulgent light. With pain the god. His eyelids weighed with slothful torpor, raised. But at each effort down they sunk again. And on his breast his nodding chin still smote. At length he roused him from his drowsy state. And, on his elbow resting, asked the nymph. For well he knew her, why she thither came. Then she, O oh Somnus. Peaceful rest of all. Somnus. Most placid of immortal powers. Calm of the soul, whom care for ever flies. Who soothest bosoms, with diurnal toil. Fatigued, and renovatest for toil again. Dispatch a vision to Trachinia's town. By great Alcides founded, in the form. Its hapless monarch bore, let it display. The lively image of her husband's wreck. To sad Alcyone. This Juno bids. Iris, her message thus delivered, turned. For more the soporific mist, which rose. Around, she bore not, soon as sleep she felt. Stealing upon her limbs, abrupt she fled. Mounting the bow by which she glided down. The drowsy sire, from amidst a thousand sons, calls Morpheus forth, an artful god, who well all shapes can feign. None copies else so close. The bidden gait, the features, and the mode of converse, vesture to the same he wears, and language such as most they wont to speak. Mankind alone he imitates. To seem fierce beasts, and birds, and long extended snakes. Another claims, this ice loss the gods have named, by mortals as folk born known. A third is Phantasis of different skill. His change is happiest when he earth becomes. Or rocks, or waves, or trees, or substance ought. That animation lacks. These show their forms. By night to mighty heroes and to kings. The rest before thy ignobler crowd perform. All these the ancient Somnus passed, and chose. Morpheus alone from all his brethren crowd. The deed Thor mansion Iris bade, to do. Then, weighed with slumber, dropped again his head. And shrunk once more within the sable couch. He flies through darkness on unrustling wings. And short the space, ere in Trachinia's town. He lights, and from his shoulders lays aside. His pinions, when he seeks, form assumes. In seeks, ghastly shape pallid he stood. Despoiled of garments, at the widowed bed. Of the sad queen, soaked was his beard, and streams. Seemed from his heavy dripping locks to flow. Then leaning over the couch, while gushing tears. Overspread his cheeks, he thus his wife bespoke. Knowest thou thy seeks, wretched, wretched wife? Or are my features changed by death? Again. View me, and here behold thy husband's shade. Instead of husband, all thy pious prayers. For me, Alcyon, were vain. I'm lost. No more false hopes encourage, me to see. 
the showery south wind, on thy Aegean main. Seized on our vessel, and with mighty blast. Shivered it wide in fragments, and the waves. Rushed in my throat as loud thy name I called. But called in vain. No doubtful author brings. To thee these tidings, no vague rumour this. In person I relate it. Shipwrecked I. My fate to thee detail. Rise, and assist. Pour forth thy tears, in sable garments clothe. Nor send my ghost to wander undeplored. In shady Tartarus. Thus Morphew spoke. And in such accents, that the queen, deceived. Believed her husband spoke. Adown his cheeks. Seemed real tears to flow, and even his hand. With Sikh's motion moved. Deeply she groaned. Even in her sleep, and raised her longing arms. To clasp his body, empty air she clasped. Exclaiming, Stay, O oh, whither dost thou fly? Together let us hence. Roused with the noise. And spectre of her spouse, sleep fled her eyes. And round she cast her gaze for that to seek. Which she but now beheld. Waked by her voice. Her slaves approached with lights, but when in vain. She searched for what she lacked, her face she struck. Rent from her breasts her garments, beat her breasts. Themselves, nor stayed her twisted hair to loose. But tore the bands away, then to her nurse. Anxious the subject of her grief to learn. Alcyone, she cries, is now no more. She with her seeks in one moment fell. Hence with your soothing words, shipwrecked he died. I saw, I knew him, as he fled me, stretched. My arms to hold the fugitive. Ah. No. The shadow fled, twas but his ghost, but shade. My husband mere resembling never was formed. Yet had he not his wonted looks, nor shone. In former brightness his beloved face. I saw him, hapless stand with pallid cheek. Naked, with tresses dropping still. Lo. Here. Wretched he stood, just on the spot I point. Then anxious tried his footmarks there to trace. This did my mind foreboding fear, I prayed. When me thou fleddest, the winds thou wouldest not trust. But since to sure destruction forth thou wentest. Would that by me companion thou hadest gone. With thee my bliss had been, with thee to go. Unwasted then one moment of the space. For life allowed, not even in death disjoined. But now I perish, and upon the waves. Though absent, float, the main me overwhelms. Though from the main far distant. Mental storms. To me more cruel were than ocean's waves. Should I but longer seek to spin out life. And combat such deep grief? I will not strive. Nor wretched thee desert, but now, though late. Now will I join thee, and the funeral verse. Shall us unite, not in the self-same urn. Yet in the self-same tomb, bones joined with bones. Allowed not, yet shall name with name be seen. The rest by grief was choked, and sounding blows. Each sentence interrupted, while deep groans. Burst from her raving bosom. Morning shone. And forth she issued to the shore, and sought. In grief the spot, where last his face she viewed. Departing. Here, she said, as slow he went. As slow he loosed his cables, on this beach. The parting kiss he gave. While her mind's eye. Retraces every circumstance, she looks. And something sees far floating on the waves. Not much unlike a man, dubious at first. What it may be, she views it, nearer now. The billows drive it, and though distant still. Plain to the eye a body was discreet. Whose body, witless, still a shipwrecked wretch. With boding omen moved her, and in tears. She wailed him as a stranger in these plaints. Unhappy wretch. Whoever thou art, and she. Thy wife, if wife thou hadest, but now the surge. More near the body bore. The more she views. Nearer the core, the more her senses fly. And now close driven to shore it floats, and now. Well she discerned it was, it was her spouse. Tis he, she loudly shrieked, and tore her face. Her hair, her garments. Then her trembling arms. 
to seek stretching, dearest husband, cried. Art thou restored thus to my wretched breast? High raised by art, adjoining to the beach. A mole was formed, which broke the primal strength. Of ocean's fury, and the fierce waves tired. Hither she sprung, and, wondrous that she could. She flew, the light air winnowing with her wings. New sprung, a mournful bird she skimmed along. The water's surface. As she flies, her beak. Slender and small, a creaking noise sends forth. Of mournful sound, and full of sad complaint. Soon as the silent bloodless course she reached. Around his dear loved limbs her wings she clasped. And gave cold kisses with her horny bill. If Seeks felt them, or his head was raised. To meet her by the waves, thy unlearned doubt. But sure he felt them. Both at length, the gods. Commiserating, changed to feathered birds. The same their love remains, and subject still. To the same fates, and in the plumaged pair. The nuptial bond is sacred, joined in one. Parents they soon become, and Halcyon sits. Seven peaceful days, midwinter's keenest rule. Upon her floating nest. Safe then the main. For airless with watchful care the winds. Guards, and prevents their egress, and the seas. Smooths for the offspring, with a grandsire's care. These, as they skimmed the surface of the main. An ancient sire beheld, and praised their love. Constant in death, his neighbor or himself. Also repeats, the bird which there you see. Brushing the ocean with his slender legs. And shows a cormorant with his spacious maw. A monarch's offspring was, would you descend. Through the long series, till to him you reach. Ilus, Asaracus, and Ganymede. Born up to heaven by Jove, supplied the stock. From whence he sprung, Laomedon the old. And Priam doomed to end his days with Troy. Hector his brother, but in spring of youth. He felt this strange adventure, he perchance. As Hector's might have left a towering name. Though from old Dimer's daughter Hector sprung. Fair Elixiro, so fame reports. Daughter of two horned Granicus, brought forth. By stealth, Aesicus, neath thick Ida's shade. Walled cities he detested, and remote. From glittering palaces, secluded hills. Inhabited, and unambitious plains. And scarce at Troy's assemblies ever was seen. Yet had he not a clownish heart, nor breast. To love impregnable. By chance he saw. Sabrina's daughter, fair Hesperi oft. By him through every shady wood pursued. As on her father's banks her tresses, spread. Adown her back, in Phoebus rays she dried. The nymph, discovered, fled. So rapid flies. Thy affrighted stag to, scape the tawny wolf. Or duck, stream-loving, from the hawk, when caught. Far from her wonted lakes. The Trojan youth. Quick follows, swift through hope, she swift through fear. Lo! In the herbage hid, her flying foot. With crooked fang a serpent bit, and poured. Over all her limbs the poison, with her flight. Her life was stopped. Frantic, he clasps her form. Now lifeless, and exclaims, How grieve I now! That ever I thee pursued, not this I feared. How mean my conquest, bought at such a price! Both, hapless nymph! In thy destruction joined. I gave the cause, the serpent but the wound. I guiltier far than he, unless my death. Shall thine avenge. He said, and in the main. From an high rock, by hoarsely roaring waves. Deep worn beneath, prepared to plunge. Received. By pitying Tessis softly in his fall. She clothes him, as he swims the main, with wings. And death, so much desired, denies him still. The lover, furious at thy unwelcome gift. Of life upon him forced, and his pent soul. Bent on escaping from its hated seat. Confined, soon as the new shot plumes he felt. Spring from his shoulders, up he flew, and plunged. Again his body in the depths below. His feathers broke his fall. Aesicus raved. And deeply dived, with headlong fury still. An endless perseverance death he sought. Love keeps him meager still, from joint to joint. 
his legs still longer grow, his outstretched neck is long, and distant far his head is placed. He loves the ocean, and the name he bears. From constant diving, seems correctly given. Book 12. Priam the sire, much mourned, to him unknown. That still his son, on pinions born, survived. While Hector and his brethren round the tomb. A name alone possessing, empty rites. Performed. Save Paris, from the solemn scene. None absent were, he with the ravished wife. Brought to his shores a long protracted war. Quick was he followed by confederate ships. Ten hundred, and the whole Pelasgian race. Nor had their vengeance borne so long delay. But adverse raging tempests made the main. Impassable, and on Boeotia's shores. In all this port thy impatient vessels bound. Here, while the Greeks the rites of Jove prepare. Their country's custom, as the altar blazed. They saw an azure serpent writhe around. A plain, which near the altar reared its boughs. Its lofty summit held a nest, within. Eight callow birds were lodged, on these he seized. And seized the mother, who, with trembling wings. Hovered around her loss, all burying deep. Within his greedy maw. All stare with dread. But the store's son, prophetic truths who still. Beheld, exclaimed, rejoice. O Greeks, rejoice. Conquest is ours, and lofty Troy must fall. But great our toil, and tedious our delay. Then showed the birds a nine years' war foretold. The snake, entwining, mid the virid boughs. Hard stone becomes, but keeps his serpent's form. But still thy Aeonian waves in violent swell. Were lashed by Neptune, nor their vessels bore. And many deemed that Troy he wished to spare. Whose walls his labor raised. Not so the son. Of the rest thought, neither he knew hot so. Nor what he knew concealed, a victim dire. The virgin goddess claimed, a virgin's blood. When over affection public will prevailed. The king overcame the father, and before. The altar Iphigenia stood, prepared. Her spotless blood to shed, as tears gushed forth. Even from the sacrificial tendance. Then. Was Jien moved, and threw before their sight. A cloud opaque, and, so tradition tells. The maid Thysenian to an hind was changed. Amid the priests, the pious crowd and all. Who deprecating heard her doom. This done. Jien by such a sacrifice appeased. As Jien best became, and soothed her ire. The angry aspect of the seas was smoothed. And all the thousand vessels felt the breeze. Abaft, and bore the long impatient crowd. To Phrygia's shores. A spot there lies, whose seat. Midst of created space, twixt earth, and sea. And heavenly regions, on the confines rests. Of the three severed world, whence are beheld. All objects and all actions though remote. And every sound by tending ears is heard. Here fame resides, and in the loftiest towers. Her dwelling chooses, and some thousand ways. And thousand portals to the dwelling makes. No portal closed with gates. By day, by night. Open they stand, of sounding brass all formed. All echoing sound, all back the voice rebound. And all reiterate every word they hear. No rest within, no silence there is found. Yet clamor is not, but a murmur low. Such as the billows won't to make when heard. From far, or such as distant thunder sends. When Jove the dark clouds rends and drives aloof. Crowds fill the halls, the trifling vulgar come. An issue forth. Ten thousand rumors vague. With truth commingled to and fro are heard. Words in confusion fly. Amid the throng. These preach their words to vacant air, and those. To others tales narrate, the measure still. Of every fiction in narration grows. And every author adds to what he hears. Here lives credulity, and here abides. Rash error, transports vain, astonied fear. Sedition sudden, and, uncertain whence. Dark whisperings. Fame herself sits high aloft. And views what deeds in heaven, and earth, and sea. Are done, and searches all creation round. 
the news she spreads, that now the Grecian barks. Approach with valiant force, nor did the foe. Unlooked for threat the realm. All Troy impedes. Their landing, and the shore's defence. Thou first. Protesilaus. By great Hector's spear. Unluckily wast slain. The war begun. Their valiant souls, ere yet they Hector knew. Dear cost the Greeks. Nor small the blood which flowed. From Phrygia's sons, by Grecia's valour spilled. Now blushed Sigeum's shores with spouting blood. Where Cygnus, Neptune's offspring, gave to death. Whole crowds. Achilles in his chariot stood. And with his forceful Pelian spear overthrew. Thick ranks of Trojans, and as through the fights. Cygnus or Hector to engage he sought. Cygnus he met, delayed was Hector's fate. To the tenth year. Then to his white-necked steeds. Pressed by the yoke, with cheering shouts he spoke. And full against the foe his chariot drove. His quivering lance well poised he shook, and called. Whoever thou art, O youth. This comfort learn. In death, that by Achilles' arm thou diest. Thus far Pelides, and his massive spear. Close followed on his words. With truth it fled. Yet did the steely point, unerring hurled. Fall harmless, with a deadened point his breast. Was struck. Then he, O goddess born. For fame. Thy race to me has long before made known. Why wonderest thou that I unwounded stand? For wondering stood Polides. Not this helm. Which thou beholdest, gay with the courser's manner. Nor the curved buckler by my arm sustained. For aid are worn. For comely grace alone. They deck me. Thus is Mars himself adorned. Thrown every guard far from my limbs, my limbs. Unwound it would remain. Sure I may boast. Sprung not from Nereus' daughter, but from him. Who rules over Nereus, over his daughter rules. And all thy extent of ocean. Cygnus spoke. And at Polides launched his spear to pierce. His orbed shield, its brazen front it pierced. And nine bull hides beneath, stayed at the tenth. The warrior shook it forth, with strenuous arm. The quivering weapon hostile back returned. Cygnus again unwounded felt the blow. Nor felt his naked bosom, to the force. Of the third weapon vauntingly exposed. Aught harmed. Less fiercely in the circus wide. Rages the bull not, when the scarlet vests. To urge his fury fixed, with furious horn. To gore attempting, finds illusion still. The unhurt limbs invading. Seeks he now. If fallen the metal from his weapon's point. Fast to the wood the metal still appears. And cries he, weak is then my hand? And spent. On one, is all the strength I once could boast. For surely strength that arm could boast, which erst. Lernessus wall overthrew, and when with gore. It tenedos, and Thebes made stream, or when. Cacus purple flowed, stained with their blood. Who on its banks had dwelt, and when twice proved. By Telephus, the virtue of my spear. This nervous arm has here too shown its force. In hills of slain by me upheaped, these shores. Attest it. Speaking so, his spear he sent. Against Menoetes, mid the Lycian crowd. As doubting faintly deeds performed before. And pierced at once his corslet and his breast. From the hot smoking wound as forth he drew. The dart, as with his dying head was struck. The solid ground, he spoke, this is the hand. And this the spear which conquest knew before. This will I against him use. May it, when sent. The same success attend. Ere ceased his words. Cygnus again with aim he sought, nor swerved. His ashen weapon whence he aimed, but rung. Unshrunk from, on the shoulder, thence repelled. As from a wall or rugged rock it fell. Yet where the blow was felt, did Cygnus seem. With blood disdained. Achilles' joy was vain. For wound was not. Menoetes' blood was there. Then furious from his lofty car he sprung. And close at hand his braving foe assailed. With glittering falchion, by the falchion broke. 
the helm and shield he saw, but the keen edge. His stubborn body blunted. More the son. Of Peleus bore not, but the warrior's face. With furious buffet from his shield, unclasped. First from his arm, he smote, and with his hilt. Heavy his temples, and with headstrong rage. Bore on him, nor to his astounded soul. Respite aloud. Dread through his bosom spread. Before his eyes swam darkness, when amidst. The plain, a stone his retrogressive feet. Opposed. Polides, with his mightiest strength. Struck Cygnus against it, and to earth. Hard forced him, thrown supine. Pent with his shield. And nervous knees upon his bosom pressed. Tight, he the lacing of the helmet drew. Which, neath his chin was tied, close pressed his throat. His breathing passage and his life at once. Destroyed he. When his conquered foe to spoil. Of all his arms he went, the arms he found. Vacant. The ocean god had to a bird. Of snowy plumage changed his offspring's form. A bird which still the name of Cygnus bears. Here stayed the toil, here did the battle gain. Of numerous days a respite, either power. Resting on arms unhostile. Then, while guards. Watchful, the Trojan walls protective kept. And sentries equal wakeful over the trench. Formed by the Argives watched, a feast was held. Where Cygnus victor, stout Achilles, gave. An heifer ribbon bound to Athens made. The severed flesh was on the altar placed. Whose smoking fragrance, grateful to the gods. High to thy ethereal regions mounted. Part. Their due, thy official sacrifices took. To swell the feast the rest was given. Outstretched. On couches, laid the noble guests, and filled. With the dressed meat their hunger, and with wine. At once their thirst and all their cares assuaged. No lyre them soothed, no sound of vocal song. Nor long extended box and pipe with holes. Multiferous pierced, but all night long, discourse. Protracted, valiant deeds alone the theme. Alike the valiant acts their foes performed. And those their own they speak. Much they enjoy. To tell by turns what hazards they overcame. And what they oft successless trite. What else? Could ever Achilles' speech employ? What else? By great Achilles could with joy be heard? Chief in the converse, was the conquest late. Over Cygnus gained, the topic. Strange to all. Seemed it, the youth, from every weapon safe. By wound unconquerable, and with skin. Blunting the keenest steel. Wonder the Greeks. And wonders even Polides, when in words. Like these, old Nestor hailed them. Cygnus, proof. Gainst steel, unpierceable by furious blows. Your age alone has known. These eyes have seen. Bohebian seniors bear ten thousand strokes. Unhurt. He, famed for warlike actions, dwelt. On Arthrys, and more strange those warlike deeds. Since female was he born. The wandering crowd. Moved with the novel prodigy, beseech. Their spokesman was Achilles, that the tale. Nestor would give them. Eloquent old man. Of all our age most prudent, tell, for all. The same desire prevails over, who was he? This Seniors? Why was changed his sex? What wars? A fierce encounter made him known to thee? And if by any conquered, tell the name. Then thus the senior, though decrepit age. Weighs heavy on me, and the deeds beheld. In prime of youth, in numbers, scape my mind. Yet than those facts, mid all of peace and war. Nought on my bosom made a deeper print. Yet may extended age of all beheld. Part of the numerous acts and objects seen. Relate, I twice one hundred years have passed. Now in the third I breathe. Kenis, a nymph. Sprung from Elatius, famed was all around. For brightest beauty, fairest of the maids. Who Thessaly adorn, theme of vain hopes. To crowds of wars through the neighboring towns. And even through thine, Achilles, for the land. Thou claimest produced her. Nay, her nuptial couch. 
Pelias perchance had sought, save that the rites already with thy mother were complete. All were in promise ready. Nuptial couch. She never pressed, for on the lonely shore. Strolling, so fain declares, the vigorous clasp. Of ocean's god she felt. The charms possiest. Of his new object, Neptune said whatever. Thou wishest, choose, secure of no repulse. This too does fain report, that keenest crite. Wrong such as mine no trivial gift deserve. That never such shame again I suffer, grant. I woman be no longer, that will all. Favors comprise. Her closing words betrayed. A graver sound, manly appeared her voice. And masculine it was. Deep ocean's god. Acceded to her wish, and granted, more. That wounds should never harm her, nor by steel. Should she ever fall. Joyed at the gift, the god. Atracia's hero leaves employs his age. In studies warlike, and among the fields. Where fertilizing Peneus wanders, roams. Now Boldiction's son had gained the hand. Of Hippodamia, and the fierce-souled crowd. Cloudborn, had bidden to attend the boards. In order ranged within a cavern's mouth. By trees thick shaded. All the princes round. Of Thessaly attended, I, myself. Amongst them went. Loud rung the regal feast. With a mixed concourse, almost joyful sung. O oh, high men! I, O oh, high men! And each hall. Blazed bright with fires. The virgin then approached. Pre excellent in fairness, with a band. Of matrons and unwed nymphs begirt. Most blessed, we all exclaimed, in such a spouse. Must be Pirithus, but such boding hopes. Well nigh deceived us. For when drunken lust. Over thee, Eurytus. Governed, of the blood. Of savage centaurs, far most savage, fired. Whether by wine, or by the virgin's charms. Thou sawest, thy breast. Instant, the board overturned. Routed the guests convivial, and the bride. Caught by her locks, was forceful dragged away. Eurytus Hippodamia seized, the rest. Grasped such as pleased them, or whoever they met. It showed the image of a captured town. With female shrieks the place resounded, swift. We start, and Theseus foremost thus exclaims. What frenzy, O Eurytus! The impels. Pirithus thus to wrong me still in life. IGN rant that too thou woundest in one? Nor vain. The chief magnanimous his threatening spoke. Thy aggressors back repelled, and, while they raged. The ravished bride recovered. Nought he said. Nor could such acts defence by words allow. But with rude inconsiderate hands he pressed. Full on her champion's face, his valiant breast. Assaulting. Near by chance a cup there stood. Of mould antique, and rough with rising forms. Mighty it was, but Theseus, mightier still. Seized it, and full against his hostile face. It dashed, he vomits forth, with clots of gore. His brains, and wine, these issuing from the wound. That from his mouth, and on the soaking sand. Supine he sprawls. With rage the two formed race. Burn for their brother's slaughter, all with voice. United, eager call to arms. To arms. Wine gave them courage, and the primal fight. Was goblets, fragile casks, and hollow jars. Dashed on, once instruments to feasts alone. Pertaining, now for slaughter used and blood. First Amicus, of Ophian's son, not feared. To rob the sacred chambers of their spoils. And from its cord suspensive, tore away. As from the roof it hung, a glittering lamp. And hurled it, lofty poised, full in the front. Of Lapithian Celadon. So falls. On the white neck the victim bull presents. The sacrificial axe, and all his bones. Were shattered left, one all confounded wound. His eyes sprang forth, his palate bones displaced. His nose driven back within his palate falls. Him belates Pelian with a foot. Torn from a maple table, on the ground. Stretched prone, his chin forced downward on his breast and sputtering teeth, with blackest gore commixed. 
sent by a second blow to Stygia's shades. As next he stood, and with tremendous brow. The flaming altar viewed, Grinius exclaimed. Why use we this not? And the ponderous load. With all its fires he seized, and mid the crowd. Of Lapithians flung, too low it pressed. Brotes and bold Orion. From her sphere. Orion's mother Michael, by charms. The moon to drag to earth has oft been known. Loud cried Exodius, were but weapons found. That death impunity would boast not. Horns. An ancient stag once brandished, on a pine. Hung lofty, served for arms, the forky branch. Hurled in his face deep dug out either eye. Part of the horns adhere, part flowing down. His beard, thence hang in ropes of clotted gore. Lo! Rita snatches from the altar's height. A burning torch of size immense, and through. Sharaxus dexter temple, with bright hair. Shaded, he drives it. Like the arid corn. Caught by the rapid flame, the tresses burn. And the scorched blood the wound sent forth, a sound. Of horrid crackling gave. Oft whizzes steel. So, drawn forth glowing from the fire, with tongs. Bent, and in cooling waters frequent plunged. And crackling sounds, immersed in tepid waves. The wounded hero from his tresses shook. The greedy flames, and in his arms upheaved. Tom from the earth, a mighty threshold stone. A wagon's burthen, but the ponderous load. Forbade his strength to hurl it on the foe. And on comets, who beside him stood. Dropped the huge bulk. Nor Rita's then his joy. Disguised, exclaiming, such may be the aid. That all your friends receive. Then with his brand. Half burnt, his blows redoubling, burst the skull. With the strong force, and on the pulpy brain. By frequent strokes the bones beat down. From thence. Victor, Evagris, Corythus, he met. And Dryas. Corythus overthrown, whose cheeks. The first down shaded, loud Evagris cried. What glory thine, thus a weak boy to slay? No more to utter Rita's gave, but fierce. Plunged the red flaming weapon in his mouth. Thus speaking, and deep forced it down his throat. The also, furious Dryas. With the brand. Whirled round and round his head, he next assails. But thee the same sad fortune not befell. Him, proud triumphing from increased success. In blood, thou piercest with an hardened stake. Where the neck meets the shoulder. Rita's groaned. And from the hard bone scarce the wood could draw. As drenched in blood his own, by flight he scaped. With him fled Lycabas, and Orneus fled. Thormas, Pisanor, Medan, who was struck. Neath the right shoulder, Murmuros, who late. In rapid race all else surpassed, but now. Moved halting with his wound, a bars, of boars. The spoiler, Pholus, and Melanius too. With Astolos the seer, who from the war. Dissuaded, but in vain, his brethren crowd. Nay more, to Nessus, fearing wounds, he cried. Fly not. Thou lt for Alcides bow be saved. Euronymus, nor Lycidas, their fate. Arios, nor Imbrios fled, whom face to face. Confronting, Dryas' hand smote down. Thou too. Craneus. Felt thy death in front, though turned. For flight thy feet, for looking back thou courtest. Betwixt thine eyes the massy steel, where joins. The nose's basement to the forehead bones. With endless draughts of stupefactive wine. Aphidas lay, mid all the raging noise. Unroused, and grasping in his languid hand. A red mingled bowl, stretched was he seen. On a rough bearskin, brought from Ossa's hill. Him from afar, as Forber saw, no arms. Dreading, he fixed his fingers in the thongs. And said with Stygian waters mixed, thy wine. Now drink, an instant round his javelin twined. The youth, for as supinely steached he lay. The ash-formed javelin through his throat was driven. No sense of death he felt, his dark brown gore. Flowed in full stream upon the couch, and flowed. In his grasp goblet. I, Patria saw. An acorn-loaded oak from earth to rend. 
endeavoring, which while compassed with both arms. He strains, now this way, now the other, shook. Appeared the tottering tree. Pirithus dart. Driven through the ribs, Patria straining breast. Nailed to the rigid wood. Pirithus arm. Lycus overthrew, and neath Pirithus force. Fell Chromis, so they tell. But less of fame. The conqueror gained from these, than from the death. Of Helops, and of Dictis. Helops felt. The dart through both his temples, swift it whizzed. His right ear entered, showing at his left. But Dictis, from a dangerous mountain's brow. As flying, trembling from Ixion's sun. Close following, he descended, headlong down. He tumbled, with his ponderous fall he broke. A mighty ash, within his riven side. The stumps his bowels tore. Aphareus fierce. Came on for vengeance, and a massive rock. Torn from the hill, upheaved to throw to throw. Attempted. Theseus with an oaken club. Prevented, and his mighty elbow broke. Nor now his leisure suits, nor cares he now. A foe disabled to dispatch to hell. But on Biomore's lofty back he springs. Unwont to bear, except himself, before. Pressed with his knees his ribs, and grasping firm. With his left hand his locks, he bruised his face. His frowning forehead, and his hardened skull. With the rough club. With the same club he lays. Nedimnus prostrate, and Lycotas, skilled. To fling the javelin, Hippasus, whose beard. Immense, his breast overshaded, Riphius sprung. From lofty woods, and Terius wont to drag. Home furious bears still living, on the hills. Thessalian, caught. No longer in the fight. Raging with such success, Demoleon bore. Theseus to see, but from a crowded wood. With giant effort strove a pine to rend. Of ancient growth, up by the roots, but foiled. He flung the broken fragment, mid the foe. Worn by Minerva, from the flying wood. Theseus withdrew, so would he we believe. Yet harmless fell the tree not, from the breast. And shoulder of great Cranter, was the neck. Severed. The faithful follower of thy sire. Was he, Achilles. Him, Aminta, king. Of all Dolopia, in the warlike strife. Overcome, as pledge of peace and faithful words. Gave to Eosides. Him mangled so. With cruel wound, Peleus far distant saw. And thus exclaimed, O, Cranter! Dearest youth! Thy funeral obsequies behold! He said. And hurled his ashen spear with vigorous arm. And with a spirit not less vigorous, forth. Full on Demoleon, tearing through the fence. Of his strong chest, it quivered in the bones. The pointless wood his hand dragged out, the wood. With difficulty dragged he, in his lungs. Deep was the steel retained. To his fierce soul. Fresh vigor gave the smart. Hurt as he was. He reared against the foe, and with his hoofs. Trampled thy sire. He, with his helm and shield. Wards off the sounding blows, his shoulders guards. Holds his protended steel, and his foe's chest. Full, twixt the shoulders, one strong blow transpierced. Yet had he slain by distant darts before. Both Hylus and Phlegrius, and in fight. More close, had Clanis and Hippanus fallen. To these must Dorilas be added, he. A wolf skin round his forehead wore, and, bent. A double wound presenting, over his brows. He bore the weapons of a savage bull. With streaming gore deep blushing. Loud I cried. While courage gave me strength see how my steel. Thy horn surpasses and my dart I flung. My dart to escape unable, over his brow. Toward the blow, his hand he held, his hand. Was to his forehead nailed. Loud shouts were heard. And Peleus at him, wounded thus, rushed on. He nearer stood, and with a furious blow. Mid belly placed, dispatched him. High he sprung. On earth his entrails dragging, as they dragged. Madly he trampled, what he trampled tore. These round his legs entwining, down he falls. And with an emptied body sinks to death. 
nor could thy beauty, Solaris, avail. Aught in the contest. If to forms like thine. Beauty we grant. His beard to sprout began. His beard of golden hue, golden the locks. That down his neck, and over his shoulders flowed. Cheerful his face, his shoulders, neck, and arms. Approached the models which the artists praise. Thus all that man resembled. Nor fell short. The horse's portion, beauteous for a beast. A neck and head supplied, a steed were formed. Of castor worthy, so was for the seat. Fitted his back, so full outstood his chest. His coat all blacker than the darkest pitch. Save his white legs, an ample flowing tail. Crowds of his race him loved, but one alone. Hylanome, could charm him, fairest nymph. Of all the two formed race that roamed the groves. She sole enraptured Solaris, with words. Of blandishment, beloved, and her love. For him confessing. Grace in all her limbs. And dress, for him was studded, smooth her hair. For him was combed, with rosemary now bound. Now with the violet, with fresh roses now. And off the snow-white lily wore she, twice. Daily she bathed her features in the stream. That from Pegasus' woody summit falls. Twice daily in the current laved her limbs. Nor clothed she ever her shoulders, or her side. Save with the chosen spoils of beasts which best. Her form became. Most equal was their love. As one they over the mountain strayed, as one. The caves they sought, and both together then. The Lapithian roof had entered, both. Now waged the furious war. By whom unknown. From the left side a javelin came, and pierced. Thee deep, O Solaris. Neath where thy chest. Joins to thy neck. Drawn from the small formed wound. The weapon, with the mangled heart, the limbs. Grew rigid all. Hylanome supports. His dying body, and her aiding hand. Presses against the wound, leans face to face. And tries his fleeting life a while to stay. When fled she saw it, with laments which noise. Drowned ere my ears they reached, full on the dart. Which through him stuck she fell, and clasped in death. Her dear loved husband's form. Before my eyes. Still stands Fiacombs, whom, closely joined. Six lions' hides protected, man and horse. Equal the covering shared. Fenolia's son. Fierce on the skull he smote, with stump immense. Huge as four oxen might with labor move. Crushed was the rounding broadness of the head. And the soft brain gushed forth at both his ears. His mouth, his hollow nostrils, and his eyes. So through the straining oaken twigs appears. Coagulated milk, so liquid flows. Through the fine sieve, by supercumbent weights. Pressed down, the thick curd at the small formed holes. Deep in his lowest flank the foe I pierced. As from our fallen friend the arms to strip. Prepared, he stooped. Thy father saw the deed. Thonius too fell beneath my sword, and fell. Teleboas. Thonius bore a forky bow. A javelin armed the other, with its steel. He pierced me. Lo! The mark the wound has left. Still the old scar appears. Then was the time. They should have sent me to the siege of Troy. Then had I power great Hector's arm to stay. To check, if not to conquer. Hector then. Was born not, or a boy. Now age me robs. Of all my force. Why should I say how fell? Two formed Pyretas, by the strength overthrown. Of Periphantes? Why of Amphix tell? Who in Eclus hostile front deep sunk? Eclus centaur born, a pointless spear? Macarius, Eric Dupus, near the hill. A Pelethronus born, against his chest. Full bearing, prostrate laid. Nor should I pass. How I the spear beheld, by Nessus' hands. Launched forth, and bear it in similis groin. Nor think you Mopsus, Amphix, son, excelled. Alone to teach the future. By the dart. Of Mopsus, fell Odites double formed. To speak in vain he strove, four tongue to chin. 
and chin to throat were by the javelin nailed. Senius ere this had five to death dispatched. Bromius, Antimachus with hatchet armed. Pyracman, Stiphilus, and Helimus. What wounds them slew I know not, well their names. And numbers I remember. Latrius big. In body and in limbs, sprung forth adorned. In the gay arms Hailsus once had owned. Hailsus of Thessalia by him slain. Twixt strong virility and ate his years. Still strong virility his arm could boast. Grey hairs his temple sprinkled. Lofty seen. In helm and shield, and Macedonian spear. Proudly between the adverse ranks he rode. And clashed his arms, and circling scoured along. These boasting words to the resounding air. Brave issuing keenness, shall I bear thee so? Still will I think thee keenness, female still. By me thou lt be considered. Bates it naught. Thy valour, when thy origin thy soul. Reflects on? When thy mind allows to own. What deed the grant obtained? What price was paid? To gain the false resemblance of a man? What thou was born, remember, mark as well. Who has embraced thee? Go, the distaff take. And carding basket. With thy fingers twirl. The flax, and martial contests leave to men. The spear which Senius hurled, deep in his side. Bare as he coursed, exposed the blow to meet. Pierced him when boasting thus, just where the man. Joined the four-footed form. With smart he raged. And to the Philian warrior's face his spear. Presented. Back the spear rebounded, so. Bound the hard hailstones from the roof, so leap. The paltry pebbles on the hollow drum. Now hand to hand he rushes to engage. And in his hardened sides attempts to plunge. His weapon deep. Pervious his weapon finds. No spot. Then cried he, still thou shalt not escape. Though blunted is my point my edge shall slay. And aimed a blow oblique, to ope his side. While round his flank was grasped his forceful arm. Sounded the stroke as marble struck would sound. The shivered steel rebounding from his neck. His limbs unwounded, to the wandering foe. Thus long exposed, loud Senius called, now try. Our arms thy limbs to pierce. Up to the hilt. His deadly weapon twixt his shoulders plunged. Then thrust and dug with blows unseeing mid. His entrails deep, thus forming wounds on wounds. Now all the furious crowd of double forms. Rush raging round him, all their weapons hurl. And all assail with blows this single foe. Blunted their weapons fall, and senior stands. Unpierced, unbleeding, from ten thousand strokes. Astonished at the miracle they gaze. But Monicus exclaims, what blasting shame. A race overthrown by one, that won a man. But dubious. Grant him man, our coward deeds. Prove us but what he has been. What avail? Our giant limbs? What boots our double strength? Strength of created forms the mightiest too. In us conjoined? A goddess mother we. Assuredly should not boast, nor boast for sire. Iction, whose great daring soul him moved. To clasp the lofty Juno in his arms. Now vanquished by a foe half male. Him whelm. With trees, with rocks, whole mountains heaped on high. Whole falling forests, let that stubborn soul. Crush out. The woods upon his throat shall press. And wait for wounds shall serve. The centaur spoke. Seizing a tree which lay by chance uptorn. By raging Auster, on his valiant foe. The bulk he hurled. All in like efforts joined. And quickly Arthrees of his woods was stripped. Nor Pelian shade retained. Senior suppressed. Beneath the pile immense the woody load. Hot pants, and with his forceful shoulders bears. To heave thy unwieldy weight, but soon the heap. Reaches his face, and then overtops his head. Nor breath is left his spirit can inhale. Now faint he sinks, and struggles now in vain. To lift his head to air, and from him heave. The heaped up forests, then the pile but shakes. As shakes the lofty eye do you behold. 
when by an earthquake stirred. Doubtful his end. His body, by the sylvan load down pressed. Some thought that shadowy Tartarus received. But Mopsus this denied, who spite a bird. From mid the pile ascend, and mount the skies. On yellow pinions. I the bird beheld. Then first, then last. As wide on buoyant wing. Our force surveying, Mopsu saw him fly. And rustling round with mighty noise, his eyes. And soul close marked him, and he loud exclaimed. Hail, Seniors. Of the Lapithian race. The glory. Once of men the first, and now. Bird of thy kind unique. The seer's belief. Made credible the fact. Grief spurred our rage. Nor bore we calmly that a single youth. By hosts of foes should fall. Nor ceased our swords. In gore to rage till most to death were given. The rest by favoring darkness sate in flight. While thus the pillion sage, the wars narrates. Waged by the Lapithian race, and foe. Centaurs half-human, his splenetic ire. Clepolemus could hide not, when he found. Alcide's deeds passed over, but angry spoke. Old sire, astonished, I perceive the praise. The deeds of Hercules demand, has escaped. Your mind. My father has been wont to tell. Whom, he of cloud-begotten race overthrew. Oft have I heard him. Nestor sad replied. Why force me thus my miseries to recall? To recollection, freshening up the woes. Long years have blunted, and confess the hate. I bear thy sire for injuries received. He, O, oh, ye gods, has deeds achieved which far. All faith surpass, and has the wide world filled. With his high fame. Would I could this deny. For praise we ever Daphobus? Or praise. Give we Polydamas, or Hector's self. Who can a foe applaud? This sire of thine. Messenia's walls laid prostrate, and destroyed. Ellis and Pylos, unoffending towns. Rushing with fire and sword in our abode. To pass the rest who, neath his fury fell. Twice six of Nelia's sons were we beheld. Twice six saved me beneath Alcide's arm. There died. With ease were conquered all but one. Strange was of Periclimenos the death. Whom Neptune, founder of our line, had given. What form he willed to take, that form thrown off. His own again resume. When vainly changed. To multifarious shapes, he to the bird. Most dear to heaven's high sovereign, whose curved claws. The thunders bear, himself transformed, the strength. That bird possesses, using, with bowed wings. His crooked beak and talons pounced his face. Gainst him Tyrinthius his unerring bow. Bent, and as high amid the clouds he towered. And poising hung, pierced where his side and wing. Just met, nor deep the hurt, the sinew torn. Still him disabled, and denied the power. To move his wing, or strength to urge his flight. To earth he fell, his pinions unendowed. With power to gather air, and the light dart. Fixed superficial in the wing, his fall. Deep in his body pierced, out his left side. Close by his throat the pointed mischief stood. Now, valiant leader of the Rhodian fleet. Judge what from me the great Alcide's deeds. A blazonry can claim? Yet the revenge. I give my brethren, is on his brave acts. Silent to rest, to thee still firm alight. In friendship. Thus his eloquent discourse. The son of Nellius ended, and the gift. Of Bacchus, oft repeated, circled round. To the old senior's words, then from the board. They rose, and night's remainder gave to sleep. But now the deity, whose trident rules. The ocean waters, with a father's grief. Mourns for his offspring to a bird transformed. Savage against fierce Achilles, he pursues. His well-remembered ire with hostile rage. And now the war near twice ten years had seen. When long-haired Phoebus, thus the god addressed. O power! To me most dear, of all the sons. My brother boasts. Whose hands with mine are prid. In vain the walls of Troy. Grievest thou not now. Those towers beholding as they ruined fall? 
grievest thou not now such thousands to behold? Slain, those high towers attempting to defend. Grievest thou not, more I need not speak, to think. Of Hector's body round his own Troy dragged. When still the fierce Achilles, even than war. More ruthless, of our works destroyer, lives? Would it to me were given my trident's power? Well know I, he should prove, but since denied. To rush, and hand to hand this foe engage. Slay him with unsuspected secret dart. The Delian god consented, and at once. His uncle's vengeance and his own indulged. Veiled in a cloud amid the Ilian host. He darts, and mid a slaughtered crowd beholds. Where Paris, on plebeian foes his shafts. Unerring hurls, to him confessed, the god. Exclaims, why wastest thou in ignoble blood? Thy weapons? If thy friends employ thy care. Turn on Pelides every dart, revenge. Thy murdered brothers. Phoebus spoke, and showed. Where with his steel Achilles ranks on ranks. Of Troy overthrew. On him the bow he turns. To him he guides the shore, the deadly dart. Now may old Priam joy for Hector slain. For thou, Achilles, victor over such hosts. Phalaest by the coward's hand, who stole from Greece. The ravished wife. Oh! If foredoomed thy lot. By woman warrior to be slain, to fall. By Amazonian weapon hadest thou chosen. Now burns Eosides, the Phrygians dread. The pride, the guardian of the Grecian name. The chief in war unconquered, and the god. Who armed him once, consumes him. Ashes now. Nought of the great Polides can be found. Save what with ease a little urn contains. But still his glory lives, and fills all earth. Such bounds alone the hero suit, his fame. Equals himself, nor sinks he to the shades. His shield itself, as conscious who's the shield. Fermented wars, and quarrels for his arms. Arose. Tidides feared to urge his claim. Arjax, Oilia's son, atrides each. Him youngest, and the monarch who surpassed. In age and warlike skill, and all the crowd. Laird's son, and Telemans alone. Tried the bold glorious contest. From himself. All blame invidious Agamemnon moved. The Grecian chiefs amid the camp he placed. And bade the host around the cause decide. Book 13. The princes sate, the common troops in crowds. Circled them round, when Arjax in the midst. Lord of the sevenfold shield, arose, with rage. Uncurbed. Sigeum's shores he fiercely viewed. And ship-clad beach, while with extended arms. O, oh, Jupiter, he cried, before this fleet. Must then our cause be trite? With me contends. Ulysses? He who yielded all a prey. To Hector's fires, whom I alone repelled. Fires which I from that fleet drove far. More safe. Tis sure with artful language to contend. Than battle hand to hand. Hard tis for me. To speak, for him tis no less hard to fight. And much as I in keen urged blows excel. An arduous contest, such in words is he. My deeds, O Grecians. To rehearse what need? Have you not seen them? Let Ulysses tell. His actions, feats without a witness done. Knight only privy. Mighty is the prize. I own, but Arjax, glory suffers much. Striving with such a rival. Granted, great. Its value, where the boaster have obtained. What this Ulysses hoped for. He even now. Enjoys thy advantage of the contest. Foiled. His pride will be to boast with me he strove. But I, if doubtful is my valour deemed. Have claims most potent in my noble race. Sprung from great Telemann, who Troy's proud town. Neath brave Alcides captured, and explored. The shores of Colchis in thy Hemonian bark. His sire was Ecus, who equal law. Dispenses, mid the silent shades, where toils. Aeolian Sisyphus beneath his stone. Well mighty Jove knows Ecus, and owns. Him son. Thus Arjax ranks but third from Jove. Nor yet, O, oh, Greeks. 
Should this dissent my cause? Assist, save that Achilles claimed the same. A brother's born, a kinsman's right I ask. Why should one sprung of Sisyphean blood? Like his progenitor in theft and fraud. Engraft an alien name upon the stock. Of Ecus? Am I the arms refused? That first I joined the warriors? Joined your host? Betrayed not by informers? Worthier he? That last his arms he took? With madness feigned. Shunning the warfare, till more crafty came. Nor Pleiades, though luckless for himself. Who showed his coward soul's devices plain? And hither dragged him to the hated wars? Now let him arms most glorious take, who arms? To where refused? Let me unhonored go. Robbed of my kindred right, who first arrived? To face the perils? Would, ye gods? That true. Or thought so, his insanity had been. Then, counsellor of cruel deeds, he never. Had joined our camp before the Phrygian walls. Then thou, O P and son. Had Lemnos never. Known to our shame abandoned on the shore. Thou now, so fame reports, in woody caves. Sheltered, even rocks movest with thy rending groans. Prayest that let son his justice meads. May gain. Ye gods. Ye gods. Grant ye his prayers. A favoring ear. Now he, by oath combined. With us in war, O, oh, heavens. A leader too. Ere to employ Alcides' faithful darts. Sinks both by famine and disease oppressed. By birds sustained, and clothed by birds, he spends. Upon his feathered prey, the darts designed. To end the fate of Troy. Yet still he lives. For here he never with Ulysses came. Content had hapless Palamedes been. Deserted so. Life might he have enjoyed. Perchance, and blameless sure to death had sunk. He whom this wretch, too mindful of the time. His counterfeited madness was exposed. Feigned had betrayed the Greeks, and proved the crime. By forged assistance, showing forth the gold. First bear it by himself. Thus he destroys. The strength of Greece, by exile or by death. Thus fights Ulysses, thus must he be feared. Who, though old faithful Nestor he surpassed. In eloquence, not all would ever avail. To prove deserting Nestor was no shame. Who pressed with age, and with a wounded horse. Delayed, Ulysses' aid besought, behind. His coward comrade left him. Well, this deed. Tideides can declare, by me not feigned. Who oft him reprimanded by his name. And cursed the flying of his trembling friend. Gods with just eyes all mortal actions view. Lo! He who aid would give not, aid requires. Who Nestor left, deserted was himself. Himself prescribed the treatment which he found. Loud called he to his friends. I come, I see. Pale trembling, where he lies, with dread to view. Impending death. My mighty shield I fling. Beneath it shade him, and his coward breast. My smallest claim to glory, I protect. If still persisting, thou the strife wilt urge. Thither again return. Recall the foe. Thy wound, thy wonted terror, and lie hid. Beneath my shield. Neath that with me contend. Lo! Him I snatched from death, whose wounds refused. Even power to stand, retarded not by wounds. In agile flight sped on. Now Hector comes. Whom in the fight the deities attend. Wherever he swept, not thou Ulysses' soul. Was struck with dread, the bravest of our host. Shrunk, such the terror which then filled the field. When hand to hand engaged, him prone I laid. Proud of his slaughter, on thy ensanguine plain. With a huge stone. I singly him opposed. All single challenged, all the Greeks to me. Prayed for the lot, nor vain your prayers were found. Inquire ye, what the fortune of the fight? I stood, by him unconquered, when all Troy. Rushed on the fleet of Greece, with fire, with sword. And aiding Jove, where was Ulysses then? The eloquent Ulysses? I alone. 
a thousand ships, the hopes of your return. Defended with my breast, this crowd of ships deserves those arms. Nay, if with truth to speak, you grant those arms more glory gain from me than I from them our honor is conjoined. Arjax the arms demand, not Arjax arms. Let Ithacus compare his Rhesus slain and slain unwarlike Dolan and Trapand. Helenus, Priam's son and Pallas form. In open day naught done, and naught performed. Save Diamed assisted. Grant for once. Such paltry service could the armor claim. Divide the prize, and lo. The largest share. Tidides must demand. But why this prize? Seeks Ithacus? Who all his deeds performs? In private traversing unarmed the foe while unsuspecting, conquering by deceit. This helmet's radiant from the glittering gold. Darting, would show his plots, an open lay. The latent spy. But his Julikian head. Cased in Achilles' cask, the weight would, whelm. And for his languid arms, the Pelian spear. Too weighty would be found. That shield engraved. With all earth's various scenes, but ill would grace. His arm, for stealthy deeds alone designed. Presumptuous fool. To seek a prize, which gained. Would only mar thy power. By erring votes. Of Grecians given to thee, cause would it be. The foe would strip thee not thy prowess fear. And flight, in which, O trembler. Erst alone. Thou all surpassed, slow wouldest thou then pursue. Such ponderous armor dragging. Those, thy shield which bears so rare the brunt of battle, shines. Yet whole, a new successor mine demands. Which gashed by weapons, shows a thousand rents. To end, what need of words? Let actions show. Each one's deserts. Amid the foe be thrown. The valiant warrior's arms. Thence bid us bring. The prize who brings it, let him wear the spoil. So spake the Telamonian warrior round. A murmur followed from the circling crowd. Till up the chief of Ithaca arose. His eyes, a while cast down, raised from the earth. The chiefs with anxious looked-for sounds addressed. Nor grace was wanting to persuasive words. O Grecians! Had your prayers and mine been heard? Owner of what such cause of strife affords? Were now not dubious, thou, Pelides, still. These arms possessing, we possessing thee. But since unpitying fate, to you, to me, denies him, here as weeping, over his eyes. His hand he draws, who with so just a right. Can great Achilles now succeed, as he? Who great Achilles brought the Greeks to join? Let it not aid his cause, that fool he seems. Or stupid is indeed nor aught let harm. The ingenuity I claim, to mine. Which, O, oh, ye Argives still has aided you. Let not my eloquence, if such I boast, and words, whose advantage often you have proved, now for their author, move invidious thoughts, nor what each claims his proper gift, refuse. Scarce can we call our ancestry, our race, or deeds by them performed, merits our own. Yet since of grandsire Jove this Arjax boasts, I too, can boast him author of my line nor more degrees removed. My sire was named. Let's his Arcesius and from Jove. Arcesius came direct, nor in this line. Ever any exiled or condemned appeared. Selenius too, his noble lineage adds. Through my maternal stock. Each parent boasts. A god-descended race. Yet claim I not. The arms contested, merely that I spring. Maternally more noble nor them claim. That from a brother's blood my sire is free. By merit solely you the cause are judge. These only none to Arjux, that his sire. And Peleus' brethren were, ever grant. The prize. Desert, and not propinquity of blood. Should gain. If kindred, then the hero's heir. Demands it, Peleus still survives, his sire. And Pyrrhus is his son. Where are Jux right? To Thyre, or to Cyros be it born. Nor less is Teusa cousin than himself. 
Yet does he ask, or does he hope the arms? But since the obvious contest is by deeds. Performed, though mine outnumber far what words. Can easy compass yet will I relate. In order some. The Nereid mother knew. His future fate her offspring's dress disguised. And all, even Arjux, the fallacious robes. Deceived. With female wears I mingled arms. Which stir the martial soul. Nor had the youth. Disrobed him of his virgin dress, when grasped. As in his hand the shield and lance he held. I cried, O, oh, goddess born. Reserved for thee. Is Ilium's fate. The mighty Trojan walls. Why to overthrow demurest thou? Him I seized. Sent the brave youth, brave actions to Achiv. And all his actions as my own I claim. My spear then conquered Telephus in fight. And after healed the suppliant vanquished foe. Thebes low by me was laid. I, you must own. Lesbos, and Tenedos, and Cyros took. Chrysa, and Scylla, bright Apollo's towns. My arm Lernessus walls shook, and laid low. But other deeds I well may pass, since I. Gave to the host what dreadful Hector slew. By me renowned Hector fell. Those arms. I claim, who gave those arms, which to the Greeks. Achilles found. Living, those arms I gave. Him dead, those arms I gave, again demand. The wrongs of one through every Grecian breast. Spread wide a thousand ships thy UB and port. Of all is filled. The long expected gales. Or came not, or blew adverse to the fleet. The rigid oracle atrides bad. His guiltless daughter sacrificed to calm. Ruthless Diana. Stern the sire denied. And raged against the gods, the sovereign all. Lost in the father. I with soothing words. The parent's bosom mollified, and turned. To thoughts of public good. Still, I confess. And such confession will the king excuse. An arduous cause I pleaded, where my judge. Was by affection warped. The people's wheel. His brother, and the lofty rank he held. Moved him at length and glory with his blood. He bought. Then to the mother was I sent. Where reasoning had no force, but subtle craft. There had you sent the son of Telamon. Still had jaw sails the needful breezes lacked. Sent was I also to the Ilian towers. A daring envoy. Troy's famed court I saw. Troy's court I entered, then with heroes filled. There undismayed, I pleaded all that Greece. Bad for their common cause Paris accused. Helen demanded, and the stolen spoil. And Priam and Antinor both convinced. But Paris, Paris brethren, and the crowd. Who aided in the rape, their impious hands. Could scarce withhold. Thou, Menelaus, knowest. Who then with me the dawning of the war. Didst prove in danger. Long the tale, to speak. Of all my deeds have done, the public cause. To aid since first the lengthened war began. By counsel or by valour. Waged the first. Rough skirmish, long our foes within their walls. Protected lay, no scope for open war. But in the tenth year now we fight again. In all that period wottest thou, who knowest. But fighting, done? Where was thy service then? I, if my deeds thou seekest, the foe betrayed. By subtlety, girt us with trenches round. Inspirited our soldiers, made them bare. With mind unmurmuring, all the tedious war. Taught where to find the means to gain supplies. Of food and arms, wherever need me called. There always was I sent. Lo! When the king. From Jove's deceptive dream, gave word to quit. Thy unfinished war, he might the deed defend. Through him who bad. But Arjux disapproves. The flight, insists Troy shall in ruins lie. Asserts our power may do it. No. Our troops. Embarking, he not stayed. Why seized he not? His arms? Why somewhat to the wavering crowd? Said not, to fix? No weighty task to him. Who never harangues, except on mighty themes. Why? 
but that Arjux fled himself. I saw. But blush to see thee, when thy back thou turnest. Hasteen, thy coward sails to hoist, I spoke. Instant, O fellow soldiers. Whither now? What voice insane now urges you to leave? Already captured Troy? What will you bear? Homeward, a lengthened ten years' shame besides. With words like these back from the flying fleet. I brought them, eloquence had sorrow's aid. A tried called the council, all with dread. Trembling were dumb, nor there dared Arjux gape. But there the recites durst with galling words. The king provoke, vengeance he met from me. I rose, our panic-stricken friends, once more. Roused against the foe, I, by my words recalled. Departed Vela. Hence, whoever boasts. Since then of valiant deeds, those deeds are mine. Who back recalled him, as he turned for flight? Last, tell me which of all the Greeks applauds. Or as a comrade seeks thee. All his acts. With me tide-eyed shares, allows me praise. Ulysses still his confidential friend. Sure from such thousands of the Argive ranks. By diamond selected, I may boast. Nor lot me bad to go, when void of fear. Through double danger of the foe and night. I went, and Phrygian Dolan slew, who dared. On our adventure come, but slew him not. Till made to utter all, the whiles betray. Perfidious Troy intended. All I learnt. Nor aught for further search remained. Now I. The camp with fame sufficient might have gained. But not content, for Rhesus' tents I push. Him, and his guards surrounding, in his camp. I slay. Victorious so, possessed of all. My hopes designed, the car I mount, and proud. A glad triumph ride. Now me deny. The arms of him, whose steeds the spy had hoped. Meed of his bold excursion. Arjuk say. More worthy. Why Sarpedon's Lycian troop? Vanquished, should I with boastful tongue relate. I vanquished Serrano's, Iphita's son. Alaster, Chromius, and Alcander stout. Halius, Noman, Pritanus, with crowds. Slaughtered beside. Thune to hell I sent. Chersidamas, and Charops, and to fates. Unpitying, Enomus dispatched, with these. Beneath yon walls whole heaps of meaner rank. This hand has slain. And, fellow soldiers, lo! My wounds are honourable all in place. Believe not empty words, yourselves behold. Then stripped his robe, exclaiming, Hear the breast. Still for your good employed. No drop of blood. Has Arjux shed since first our host he joined. In all these years, his body still remains. Unwounded. Yet on this why should I dwell? If he must boast, that for the Argive fleet. He fought alone against Jupiter and Troy? He fought, I grant it, no malignant spite. Shall move detraction from his valiant deeds. But let him not the common rights of more. Monopolize, let him to each allow. The honor which they claim. Patroclus, feared. In great polite semblance, backward drove. All Troy and Troy's protector from the ships. Then burning. Next his vanity would boast. He only in the field of Mars durst strive. With Hector, of the king, the chiefs, and me. Forgetful, in the list the ninth alone. Solely by lot preferred. Yet, warrior brave. What was the issue of this daring fight? Hector unwounded left you. Mournful theme. With what deep sorrow I the time recall. When, bulwark of the Greeks, Achilles fell. Nor tears, vain lamentations, nor pale fear. Me checked, the prostrate body from the ground. I raised. Upon those shoulders yes, I swear. These very shoulders, I polides bore. With all his arms. The arms I now require. Strength I must have to bear with such a load. As sure your votes will meet a grateful mind. Was it because the bright celestial gift. Might clothe the limbs of one without a soul. Stupidly dull, that all her anxious care. The green-haired mother on her son employed. Arms wrought with art so great. Knows he the least. 
the shield's engravings, ocean, or the land, the lofty sky, the planets, pleiades bright, hyads, the bear, never plunged beneath the main, Orion's glittering sword, or various towns, arms he demands he cannot understand, but how asserts he either toils of war, evaded, joining late the fighting host, nor sees he scandalizes to the fame, of great polites, if indeed a crime, dissembling must be called, dissemble both, if faulty all delay, the first I came, a tender wife me kept, a tender tie, a mother, kept Achilles, our life's spring, to them was given, the rest reserved for you, nor should I fear, even were this crime, I share, with such a man, of all defence denied. Yet his disguise Ulysses cunning found. Arjux never found Ulysses. Need surprise. To hear thy abusing of his booby tongue. When with like guilt he stigmatizes you. Shames most that I this Palamedes brought. Falsely accused your sentence to receive. Or that you doomed him so accused to die. But Norplia's son not even defence could urge. So plain his crime appeared, nor did you trust. The accusation heard, obvious you saw. The bribe for which you doomed him. Nor of blame. Deserve I aught, that for Loctete stays. In Vulcan's Lemnos. You the deed excuse. All to the deed assented. Yet my voice. Persuasive, will I not deny, I used. That's bared from travel, and from wares fatigue. In rest he might his cruel pain to swage. He liked my words, and lives. My counsel here. Not merely faithful, though our faith the whole. Our promise can ensure, but happy proved. His presence since the seer's prophetic ask. T. Achieve the fall of Troy, dispatch not me. Arjax will better go, will better soothe. With eloquence of tongue, a man who burns. With raging choler, and with smarting pains. Or with some stratagem him then to lure. But Simwa's stream shall soon a backward flow. Ida unwooded stand, Achaia aid. The Trojan power, than Arjax's stupid soul. Shall help the Greeks, when first my anxious mind. Striving to aid you, has been found to fail. Oh, stubborn Philoctetes. Though enraged. Against thy comrades, gainst the king, and me. Though thou mayest curse me, and my head devote. Through endless days, though in thy grief thou askest. To meet me, and to glut thee with my blood. Still will I try thee, and if fortune smiles. So will I gain thy arrows, as I gained. The Trojan prophet, whom I captive made. As I the oracles of heaven laid ope. And all the fate of Troy, as from its room. Close hidden, I the form of Pallas brought. The charm of Troy, through ranks of hostile foes. Mates Arjax here with me? Fate had denied. Of Troy the capture till that prize obtained. Where then the mighty Arjax? Where the boasts? Of this brave hero? Why this risk evade? Why dared Ulysses through the watchful guards? Steal amid the darkling night? And find his way? Not merely past the Trojan walls, but high. Through raging swords their loftiest turret scale. Bear off the goddess from her sacred fane. And with the prize again repass the foe? This deed not done, Arjax had bore in vain. On his huge arm the sevenfold oxen hide. From that night's deeds I Ilium's conquest share. Then Troy I conquered, when the fact was done. Which made Troy vincible. Cease thou to mark. With looks and mutterings diamed, my friend. His share in all was glorious. Nor wast thou. Single, when with thy buckler thou didst guard. The general fleet, crowds aided, I was one. He, but he knows too well that less esteem. Valor demands than wisdom, that the prize. A mere unconquered arm not justly claims. Had also sought, thy milder namesake too. Or fierce Eurypolis, or Thoas, son. Of bold Andreman. Equal right to hope. Idomeneus, Mary owns, might boast. Each Cretan born, and who the sovereign king. His brother claims, but all their valorous breasts. Nor does their martial prowess stoop to thine. 
yield to my wisdom. In the fight thy arm is mighty, prudent boast I, which that arm directs. To thee a force immense is given. Without a brain, foresight is given to me. Well, thou canst wage the war, the time that war to wage, a trides oft with me resolves. Thou aidest with thy body, I with mind. And as the guider of the ship transcends him who but plies the oar, as soars above. The soldier, he who leads him, so must I. Thee far surpass, for far the mental powers. In me surpass the merits of my arm. In mind my vigour lies. Ye nobles, speak. Give to your watchful guardian this reward. For the long annual care with anxious mind. He gave you. This reward at length bestow. To his deserts but due, his labour done. Thy obstructing destinies by me removed. High Troy by me is captured, since by me. The means High Troy to overthrow are given. Now beg I by our hopes conjoined, the walls. Of Troy already tottering, by the gods. Gained from the foe so lately, by what more? Through wisdom may be done, if aught remains. Or aught of boldness, which through peril sought. Wanting, you still may deem to fill Troy's fate. If mindful of my merits you would rest. The arms award to this, if not to me. And pointed to Minerva's fateful form. Moved with a band of nobles. Plainly shown. What eloquence could do, persuasion gained. The valiant warrior's arms. Then he who stood. Gainst steel, and fire, and the whole force of Jove. So oft, his own vexation now overcame. Grief conquered his unconquerable soul. He seized his sword, and surely this, he cried. Still is my own. Or claims Ulysses this. Against myself this steel must now be used. This stained so oft with Phrygian blood, be stained. With his who owns it, lest another hand. Than Arjax own should Arjax overcome. No more, but where his breast unguarded lay. Pervious at length to wounds, his deadly blade. He plunged, nor could his hand the blade withdraw. The gushing blood expelled it. Straight there sprung. Through the green turf, formed by the blood-soaked earth. A purple flower, like that which sprung before. From Hyacinthus wound. Amid the leaves. Of each the self-same letters are inscribed. The boy's complainings, and the hero's name. Victorious Ithacus his sails unfurls. To seek the land Hypsipyle once ruled. And Thoas famed. An isle of old disgraced. By slaughter of its males, to bring the darts. The weapons of Tyrinthius. These obtained. To Greece, and with their own abroad, at length. The furious war was finished. Priam falls. With Troy, and Priam's more unhappy spouse. To crown her losses, loses human shape. With new herd barking shaking foreign climes. Where the long Hellespont's contracted bounds. Are seen, Troy blazed, nor yet the fires were quenched. The scanty drops of blood Jove's altar soaked. Which flowed from aged Priam. By her locks. Dragged on, Apollo's priestess vainly stretched. To lofty heaven her arms. The victor Greeks. Tear off the Trojan mothers as they clasp. Their country's imaged gods, and as they cling. To flaming temples an invidious prey. Astyanax is from those turrets flung. Whence erst he won't to view his sire, whose arm. Him guarding, and his ancestorial realm. In fight, his mother showed. And Boreas now. Departure urged. Swollen by a favoring breeze. The rattling canvas warned the sailor crew. Oh, Troy. Farewell. The Trojan matrons cry. Hence are we born. They kiss their natal soil. And leave the smoking ruins of their domes. Last mournful object. Hecuba, discreet. Amid her children's graves, the bark ascends. Ulysses' hand her dragged, as close she grasped. Their tombs, and kissed their bones which still remained. Yet snatched she hastily, and bore away. Of Hector's ashes some, and in her breast. Hugged them, and on the top of Hector's tomb. Left her grey hairs, her hairs, and flowing tears. 
oblation fruitless to his last remains. Opposed to Phrygia, where Troy once was seen. A country stands, where live Bistonia's race. Where Polymnester, wealthy monarch, ruled. To whom, O, oh, Polydor? Thy cautious sire. Be sent, from Ilium's battles far removed. For safe protection. Wisdom swayed the king. Save that he sent him store of treasure too. Reward of wickedness, and tempting much. His greedy soul. Soon as Troy's fortune sank. Impious the Thracian monarch plunged his sword. In his young charge's throat, as if his crime. And body from his sight at once twere given. To move, he flung him in the dashing main. Now on the Thracian coast, a tride's moored. His fleet, till placid were the waves again. And favoring more, the winds. Achilles here. Out from the earth, by sudden rupture rent. Appeared in semblance of his living form. Threatening his brow appeared, as when so fierce. He agamemnon with rebellious sword. Sought to assail. Depart ye then, O Greeks. He cried of me unmindful. Is the fame. Of all my yaliant acts with me interred. Treat me not thus. That honours due my tomb. May want not, let Polyxena be given. In sacrifice to soothe Achilles' ghost. He said, his fellows with the ruthless shade. Complying, from the mother's bosom tore. Her whom she soul had left to cherish. Brave. Than female more, the hapless maid was led. To the dire tomb in sacrificial pomp. She, of her state still mindful, when before. The cruel altar brought, when all prepared. The savage urged oblation of herself. She saw, and Neoptolemus beheld. There stand, the steel there grasping, on his face. Her eyes firm fixing, spoke. My noble blood. This instant spill. Delay not plunge thy blade. Or in my throat, or bosom, and her throat. And bosom, as she spoke she bared, for never. Polyxena, a slavish life had borne. Yet grateful is this victim to know God. My only wish, that from my mother dear. Maybe my death concealed, my mother clogs. My final passage, damps the joys of death. Yet should she wail my death not, but my life. But distant stand ye all, that to the shades. In violet I sink, if what I ask. Be just, let every hand of man avoid. A virgin's touch. Whoever your steel prepares. To move propitiatory with my blood. A victim quite untainted best must please. And should the final accents that I speak. King Priam's daughter, not a captive sues. My course unransomed to my mother give. Let her not buy the sad sepulchral rites. With gold, but tears. Yet time has been, with gold. I might have been redeemed. The princess ceased. And save her own no cheek unwet was seen. And even the priest reluctant, and in tears. Opt by a sudden plunge the offered breast. She, to earth sinking, neath her tottering limbs. Water the last of face unmoved, even then. Her final care was in her fall to veil. Limbs that a veil demanded, as she sank. And decent pride of modesty preserve. The Trojan dames receive her, and recount. The woes of Priam's house, the streams of blood. That single stock has spent. Thee too, O oh, maid. They weep, and thee, a royal spouse so late. And royal parent styled, pride of the realm. Of glorious Asia, now a mournful lot. Amid the spoil, whom Ithacus would scorn. To own, great Hector hadst thou not brought forth. The name of Hector scarce a master finds. To claim his mother. She, the lifeless trunk. Embracing, which had held a soul so brave. Tears poured, tears often had she poured before. For country, husband, children now for her. Those tears gushed in the wound, lips pressed to lips. And beat that breast which oft with grievous blows. Was punished. Sweeping, mid the clotted blood. Her silvered tresses, all these plaints, and more. She uttered, as she still her bosom rent. My child, thy mother's last afflicting grief. For who is spared me, lo, my child, thou liest. 
and in thy wound, I all my wounds behold. Yes, lest a single remnant of my race unslaughtered should expire, thou too must bleed. A female, thee, safe from the sword I thought. A female, thee the sword has stretched in death. The same Achilles, ruiner of Troy. Bereaver of my offspring, all destroyed. Yes, all thy brethren, he, now murders thee. Yet when by Paris and Apollo's darts. He fell, now, surely, said I, now no more. Polides need be dreaded. Yet even now. Dreadful to me he proves. Inerned, rage. His ashes against our hapless race, we feel. Even in his grave the anger of this foe. I fruitful only for Polides proved. Low lies proud Ilium, and the public woe. The heavy ruin ends, if ended yet. For Troy to me still stands, my sufferings still. Roll endless on. I, late in power so high. Great in my children, in my husband great. Am now dragged forth in poverty, exiled. From all my children's tombs, a gift to please. Penelope, who, while my daily task. She gives to Ithaca's proud dames, will taunt. And cry, of Hector, the famed mother see. Lo! Priam's spouse. And thou whose soul wast spared. To soothe maternal pangs, so many lost. Now bleedest, atonement to an hostile shade. And funeral victims has my womb produced. T appease a foe. Why holds this stubborn heart? Why still delay I? What to me avails? This loathed, this long protracted life? Why spin? O oh, cruel deities! The lengthened thread of an old wretch, save that she yet may see. More deaths? Whoever could Priam happy deem? Ilium overthrown? Yet happy was his death. Thy sacrifice, my daughter. Not to see. At once of life and realm bereft. Yet sure. O oh, royal maid. Funereal rites await. Thy last remains, thy course will be inhumed. In ancestorial sepulchres. Ah, no. Such fortune smiles not on our house, the tears. A mother can bestow, are all thy gifts. Sprinkled with foreign dust. All have I lost. Of the whole stock I could as parent boast. To tempt me now still longer to sustain. This life, my Polydor alone is left. Once least of all my manly sons, erst given. To Thracia's monarch's care, upon these shores. But why delay to cleanse that ghastly wound? With water, and that face, with spouting blood. Besmeared. She ceased, and bent her tottering steps. With torn and scattered locks down to the shore. And as the hapless wretch, O, oh, Trojans, crite. An urn supply to draw the liquid waves. The course of Polydor, flung on the beach. She saw, pierced deep with wounds of Thracian steel. Loud shrieked the Trojan matrons, she by grief. Dumb-stricken stood. Affliction keen suppressed. Her rising moans, and red springing tears. Stupid, and like a rigid stone she stood. Now on the earth her eyes are fixed, and now. To heaven her furious countenance she lifts. Now dwells she on his face, now on the wounds. Her son received, and on the wounds the most. And now her bosom with collected rage. Furiously burning, all on vengeance fierce. Her soul is bent, as still in power a queen. As storms a lioness robbed of her cub. The track pursuing of her flying foe. Whom yet she sees not, rage and grief were mixed. Just so in Hecuba, of her old years. Regardless, mindful of her ire alone. She Polymnesta seeks, of the dire deed. The perpetrator, and his ear demands. That more of gold, intended for her boy. Her wish was to disclose. The Thracian king. Heard credulous, lured by his wonted love. Of gain, with her withdrew, and wily thus. With coaxing words, quick, Hecuba, exclaimed. Give for thy son the treasure. By the gods. I swear, all shall be his, what more thou givest. And what thou gavest before. Him, speaking so. And falsely swearing, savagely she viewed. And her fierce bosom swelled with double rage. 
then instant on him, by the captive dames. Fast held, she flies, in his perfidious face. Digs deep, her fingers, rage all strengths applied. Tear from their orbs his eyes, bear it her hands. Streaming with blood, where once the eyes had been. Widening the wounds, four eyes no more remained. Fired at their monarch's fate the Thracian crowd. With stones and darts tea attack the queen began. The queen with harsher voice, as they pursue. Bites at thy assailing stones, and, trying words. Barkings her jaws produce. The place remains. Named from the change. She, of her ancient woes. Long mindful, grieving still, Sithonia's fields. With howlings filled. Her fate with pity moved. Her fellow Trojans, and the hostile Greeks. Nay, all the gods above, and all deny. Even she, the sister wife of mighty Jove. That Hecuba so harsh a lot deserved. Nor leisure now Aurora had to mourn. Though strong their cause she favoured, the sad fall. And mournful fate of Hecuba, and Troy. A nearer case, a more domestic woe. The loss of Memnon, wrung the goddess breast. Whom on the Phrygian plains the mother saw. Beneath the weapon of Achilles sink. She saw that colour which the blushing morn. Displays, grew pale, and heaven with clouds was hid. Still could the parent not support the sight. Placed on the funeral pyre his limbs, but straight. With locks dishevelled, not disdained to sue. Prostrate before the knees of mighty Jove. These words her tears assisting. Meanest I. Of those the golden heaven supports, to me. The fewest temples through earth's space are raised. Yet still a goddess sues. Not to demand. Temples, nor festal days, nor altars warmed. With blazing fires, yet if you but behold. What I, a female, for you all achieve. Bounding nights confined with new springing light. Such boons you might consider but my due. But these are not my care. Aurora's mind. Not now even honours merited demands. I come, my Memnon lost, who bravely fought. But vainly, in his uncle Priam's cause. And in his prime of youth, so willed your fates. Fell by the stout Achilles. Lord Supreme. Of all the deities, grant, I beseech. To him some honour, solace of his death. Allay the smarting of a mother's wounds. Jove nodded, round the lofty funeral pile. Of Memnon, rose thy aspiring flames, black clouds. Of smoke the day obscured. So streams exhale. The rising mists which Phoebus rays conceal. Mount the black ashes, and can globed in one. They thicken in a body, and a shape. That body takes, and heat and light receives. From the bright flames. Its lightness gave it wings. Much like a bird at first, and soon indeed. A bird, its pinion sounded. And a crowd. Of sister birds, their pinion sounded too. Their origin the same. Thrice they surround. The pile, and thrice with noisy clang the air. Resounds, the fourth time all the troop divide. Then two and two, they furious wage the war. On either side, fierce with their crooked claws. And beaks, they pounce their adversary's breast. And tire his wings. Each kindred body falls. An offering to the ashes of the dead. And prove their offspring from a valiant man. These birds of sudden origin receive. Their name, Memnonides, from him whose limbs. Produced them. Oft as soul through all his signs. Has run, the battle they renew again. To perish at their parent warrior's tomb. Thus, while all others Dima's daughter weep. In howling shape, Aurora still on griefs. Her own sad brooding, her maternal tears. Sprinkles in dew over all thy extent of earth. Yet fate doomed not with Ilium's towers the fall. Of Ilium's hopes. The Scytherian prince. Bore off his gods, and on his shoulders bore. A no less sacred, venerable load. His sire. Of all his riches these preferred. The pious hero, with his youthful son. Ascanius, from Antandros, over the main. Born in the flying fleet, leaves farther shore. Of savage Thrace, still moistened with the blood. 
Apollodor, and enters Phoebus' port. Aided by currents, and by gentle gales. With all his social crew. Aeneas receives. The exile, in his temple, in his dome. Where over the land he monarch ruled, and where. As Phoebus' priest, he tended due his rites. The city, and the votive temples showed. And showed two trees, once by Latona grasped. In bearing throes. The incense in the flames. Distributed, wine over the incense thrown. The entrails of the offered bulls consumed. As wont, the regal roof approached they all. And high on tapestry reclined, partake. Of Ceres' gift, and Bacchus' flowing boon. Then good anchises, thus, O chosen priest. Of Phoebus. Was I then deceived? Methought. As far as memory aids me to recall. When first mine eyes these lofty walls beheld. That twice two daughters, and a son were thine. Old Aeneas shook his head, begirt around. With snowy fillets, as in grief, he said. No, mighty hero. Not deceived art thou. Meest thou seen of five the parent, now. Thou well nigh childless seest me, such to man. The varying change of sublunary things. For, ah. What can an absent son bestow? To aid me, who, in Andros Isle now dwells. Where for his sire the realm and state he holds. Delius on him prophetic art bestowed. And Bacchus, to my female offspring, gave. A boon beyond all credit, and their hopes. For all whatever, which felt my daughter's touch. To corn, and wine, and olives, was transformed. A mighty treasure in themselves they held. But Agamemnon, Troy's destroyer learned. This gift, think not but that your overthrow. In some respect we shared, by ruthless force. Tore them unwilling from their parents' arms. And stern commanded that the heavenly gift. Should feed the Grecian fleet. Each as she can. Escapes. You be a two attain, and two. Fraternal Andro seek. The troops pursue. And threaten warfare, if withheld the maids. Fraternal love was vanquished in his breast. By fear, that thou this terror mayst excuse. Reflect, Aeneas was not there, nor there. Was Hector, Andros to defend, whose arms. To the tenth year made Ilium stand. And now. Chains were prepared their captive arms to bind. While yet unchained, those arms to heaven they raised. O Father Bacchus. Crying grant thy aid. And aid the author of the gift bestowed. If them to lose by an unheard of mode. Be aid bestowing. Then could I not know. Nor now relate the order of the change. Which lost their shapes, the summit of my grief. I know, with plumage were they clothed, transformed. To snowy doves, thy spouse's favoured bird. With these, and tales like these, the feast was closed. The board removed, all sought repose. With day. Arising, all Apollo's shrine attend. Who bids that they their ancient mother seek? And kindred shores. The king attends them, gives. His presence as they go. Anchises holds. A scepter, while a quiver and a robe. Ascanius boasts, Aeneas holds a cup. Erst from Boeotia's shores to Aeneas sent. By the band the Rases. The Rases sent the gift. Sicilian Alcan formed it, and engraved. A copious tale around. A town was there. And seven wide gates appeared, four name were these. What town it was displaying. All without. Its walls were funeral trains, and tombs beheld. And fires, and piles, and matrons, whose bare breasts. And locks dishevelled, showed their mournful woe. Weeping the nymphs appeared, and seemed to wail. Their arid streams, the leafless trees were hard. The goats were browsing on the naked rocks. And, lo! Amid the the band town was seen. Orion's daughters, this her naked throat. Offering, with more than female courage, that. On the sharp weapon's point forth leaning, died. To save the people, round the town are born. Their pompous funerals, they in splendor burn. Then, lest the race should perish, spring two youths. From out their virgin ashes, which by fame. 
are called coroni, and the pomp attend, when their maternal ashes are interred. Thus far the images on ancient brass were graven, the bordering summit of the cup. In gold Acanthus rough appeared, nor gave the Trojans gifts less worthy than they took. To hold his incense, they are vase present. The royal priest, a goblet, and a crown, shining with gold, and bright with sparkling gems. Thence, mindful that the Trojan race first sprung, from Tusseri's blood, towered Crete their course they bend. But long Jove's native climb they could not bear. The hundred sitted isle now left behind. Orsonia's port they hoped to gain. Rough swell. The wintry storms, and toss them on the main. And in the port of faithless strophades. Received, the winged Arello scares them far. Now had they sailed beyond Dulichium's bay. Samos, and Ithaca, Neritus soil. The realms Ulysses, so perfidious, swayed. And saw Ambracia, for the strife of gods. Renowned, and stone to which the judge was changed. Now as Apollo's action far more famed. And saw Dodona's land with vocal groves. And deep Caonia's bay, where vain urged flames. Molossa's sons, on new sprung pinions escaped. Phaeacia's neighboring country, planted thick. With grateful apples, now they reach, from thence. Epirus and Buthrotus, by the seer. Of Ilium governed, image true of Troy. Thence of the future certain, full of faith. In all that Hellenus of fate them told. Cecilia's isle they enter, which extends. Midst of the waves its promontories three. Pachymos, towered the showery south is placed. And Zephyr soft on Lilibium blows. But against the arctic bear that shuns the sea. And Boreas rugged storms, Polaris looks. By this the Trojan steer, urged by their oars. And favoring tide, by night on Zankales beach. The fleet is moored. Here Scylla on the right. Charybdis, restless, on the left alarms. This sucks the destined ships beneath the waves. And whirls them up again, fierce dogs surround. The other sable belly, while she bears. A virgin's face, and, if what poets tell. Be feigned not all, she had a virgin been. Her many wars sought, these all repulsed. She joined the ocean nymphs, by ocean's nymphs. Much favoured was the maid, and told the loves. Of all the baffled youths. Her, while she gave. Her locks to comb, thus Galatea fair. Bespoke, but first suppressed a rising sigh. Tis true, O oh maid. A gentle race thee seeks. Whom safely, as thou dost, thou mayest deny. But I, whose sire is Nereus, who was born. Of blue-haired Doris, who am potent too. In crowds of sisters, refuge only found. From the fierce Cyclops' love, in my own waves. Tears choked her utterance here, which when the maid. Had wiped with marble fingers, and had soothed. The goddess. Dearest Galatea. Speak. Nor from thy friend this cause of grief conceal. Faithful am I to thee. The goddess yields. And to Critias' daughter, thus replies. From Faunus and the nymph Simethis sprung. Assis, his sire's delight, his mother's pride. But far to me more dear. For me the youth. And me alone, loved warmly, twice eight years. Had over him passed, when on his tender cheek. A doubtful down appeared. Him I desired. As ceaseless as the Cyclops sought for me. Nor should you ask, if in my bosom dwelt. For him most hate, or most for Asis love. Could I inform you, equal both in force. O, oh, gentle Venus. With what mighty power. Thou swayest, lo. He, the merciless, the dread. Of his own woods, whom hapless guest never saw. With safety, spurner of the power of Jove. And all the host of heaven, what love is, feels. Seized with desire of me he flames, forgets. His flocks, and caverns. All thy anxious care. Thy beauty, Polyphemus. To improve. And all thy anxious care is now to please. And now with rakes thou combest thy rugged hair. Now with a scythe thou mowest thy bushy beard. Thy features to behold in the clear brook. And calm their fire employs thee. 
all his love. Of slaughter, all his fierceness, all his thirst. Cruel of blood, him leaves, and on the coast. Ships safely more, and safe again depart. Meantime at Etna Telemus arrived. Of Eurymus the son, whom never bird. Deceived, he to dread Polyphemus came. And spoke, thee, of the single light thou bearest. Mid front, Ulysses will deprive. Loud laughed. The monster, saying, stupidest of seers. How much thou errest. Already is it gone. So spurns the truth the prophet told in vain. Then moving on along the shore, he sinks. The sand with heavy steps, or tired returns. To his dark caves. Far stretching in the main. A wedge-like promontory rears its ridge. Aloft, on either side the surging waves. Foam on it. To its loftiest height ascends. The cyclops fierce, his station in the midst. Assumes, his woolly flocks his steps pursue. Unshepherded. He when the pine immense. Which served him for a staff, though fit to serve. For sail yard, low beneath his feet had thrown. And grasped the pipe, an hundred packed reeds. Composed, the pastoral whistling all around. The hills confessed, and all the waters nigh. I, hid beneath a rock, my head reclined. On my dear ass's bosom, heard these words. And still the words are noted in my breast. O, oh, Galatea! Brighter than the leaves. Of snow white lilies, fresher than the meads. More lofty far than towering alder trees. Than crystal clearer, than the wanton kid. More gay, than shells, by ocean's constant waves. Smooth polished, smoother, dearer than the shade. In summer's heat, than winter's sun more dear. More than the apple bright, and fairer far. Than lofty plane trees, clearer than the frost. More beauteous than the ripened grape, more soft. Than the swan's plumage, or the new-pressed milk. And, but thou fliest, more than the garden fine. With watered streamlets. Yet the same art thou. Wild Galatea, than the untamed steer. More fierce, more stubborn than the ancient oak. Than water more deceitful, slippery more. Than bending willows, or the greenest vines. More stubborn than these rocks, than seas more rough. Than the praised peacock prouder, sharper far. Than fire, and piercing more than thistles keen. More savage than a nursing bear, more deaf. Than raging billows, than the trodden snake. More pitiless, and, what I more than all. Would wish thou wast not, fleeter than the deer. Chased by shrill hunters, fleeter than winged air. Or winds. If well thou knewest me, much thou'dst grieve. That ever thou fleddest, thou'dst blame thy dull delay. And sue and labour to retain my love. Caverns I have, scooped in the living rock. Beneath the mountain side, where never sun. In midday heat, nor winter's cold can come. My apples bend the branches, grapes are mine. On the long vine trees clustering, some like gold. Some of a purple tint, and these and those. Will I preserve for thee. Thy own fair hands. Shall gather strawberries soft, beneath the shade. Autumnal cornels, and the purple plum. Dark with its juice, and that still nobler kind. Like new-made wax in hue. Nor shalt thou lack. The chestnut, nor the red arbutus fruit. Be but my spouse. All trees shall thee supply. Mine are these flocks, and thousands more besides. Which roam the valleys, thousands like the woods. And thousands shelter in the shady caves. Nor could I, shouldest thou ask, their numbers tell. Poor he who counts his store. Believe not me. When these I praise, before thine eyes behold. How scarce their legs the swelling udder bear. Mine are the tender lambs, in the warm fold. Secure, and mine are kids of equal age. In folds apart. The whitest milk have I. But still for drink shall serve, and thickened, part. Shall harden into cheese. Nor wilt thou find. But cheap delights, and common vulgar gifts. For deer, and hares, and goats, thou shalt possess. Pigeons in pairs, and nests from mountains gained. Upon the hills, a shaggy bear's twin cubs. I found, so like, no difference could be seen. 
with thee to play I found them, these, I said. These will I force my mistress to obey. O Galatea! Raise thy lovely head. Above the azure deep, come. Only come. Nor scorn my gifts. Right well myself I know. I viewed me lately in the liquid stream. And much my image satisfied my view. Behold, how vast my bulk! Jove, in his heaven! For of some Jove ye oft are wont to tell. Who rules there, towers not in a mightier size. Thick bushy locks over my stern forehead hang. And like a forest down my shoulders spread. Nor deem my body, with hard bristles rough. Unseemly, most unsightly is the tree. Without a leaf, unsightly is the steed. Save on his neck the flowing manair is spread. Plumes clothe the feathered race, and their own wool. Becomes the sheep, so beards become mankind. And bushy bristles, over their limbs bespread. True in my forehead, but one light is placed. But huge that light, and like a mighty shield. In size. Yet does not soul from heaven's high round. All view? And soul possesses lights no more. Remember too, my father over your realm. Rule sovereign, I in him a sire-in-law. Would give thee. Only pity me, I pray. And hear my suppliant vows. To thee alone. I bend, and while I scorn your mighty Jove. His heaven, and piercing thunder, thee, O nymph. I fear, than fiercest lightnings dreading more. Thy anger. Far more patient should I rest. With this contempt, all didst thou thus contemn. But how, the cyclops first repulsed, darest thou? This asses love? This asses dare prefer? To my embraces? Yet may he himself. Delight, nay let him Galatea please. If so it must be, though what most I'd spurn. Let but the scope be given, soon should he prove. My strength is equal to my mighty bulk. Living his entrails would I tear, and spread. His mangled members over the fields, and over. Thy waters, let him mingle with thee so. For oh! I burn, more fierce my injured love. Now rages, in ray breast I seem to bear. All Etna and its fires. But all my pains. Can naught, O oh Galatea. The effect. Thus with vain plainings, for the whole I saw. He rises, raging like a furious bull. Robbed of his heifer, paces restless round. And bounds along the forests and the coasts. When me an asses, heedless of such fate. And unsuspecting, he beheld, and roared. I see ye. But the period of your love. Will I accomplish. Loud his threats were heard. As all the cyclops' power of voice could raise. All Etna trembled at the sound. In fright. I plunged for safety in the neighboring waves. While fair Simothis son for flight prepared. And help me, Galatea. He exclaimed. Help me, O oh help. And ye, my parents, aid. And, perishing, receive me in your realm. Close at his heels the cyclops comes, and hurls. A mighty fragment from a mountain rent. A corner only of the mighty rock. Him reached, that corner asses all overwhelmed. But I, what fate alone would grant, performed. That asses still his ancestorial race. Should join, his purple gore flowed from the rock. And soon the redness paled, it seemed a stream. Disturbed by drenching showers, and soon this stream. Was cleared to limpid purity. The rock. Gaped wide, and living reeds sprung up erect. On either brink. Loud roars the pressing flood. In the rock's hollow womb, and, wondrous sight. A youth, his new-formed horns with reeds begirt. Sudden appeared, mid-waist above the waves. Who but in stature larger, and his skin. Of azure tint, might asses well be deemed. Asses indeed it was, asses transformed. To a clear stream which still his name retains. Here Galatea ceased, the listening choir. Dividing, all depart. The Nereid train. Swim over the placid waves. Scylla returns. Fearful to venture, mid the boundless main. And vestless roams along the soaking sand. Or weary it, finding some sequestered pool. 
cools in the sheltered waters her fair limbs. Lo! Glaucus, lately of the mighty deep. An habitant received, his shape transformed. Upon Boeotia's shores, cleaves through the waves. And feels desire as he the nymph beholds. All he can urge to stay her flight he tries. Yet still she flies him, swifter from her fear. She gains a mountain summit, which the shore. Overhung. High to the main the lofty ridge. An undivided sprubless top presents. Down shelving to the sea. In safety here. She stood, and, dubious monster he, or god. Admired his colour, and the locks which spread. Adown his shoulders, and his back below. And that a wreathing fish's form should end. His figure from his groin. He saw her gaze. And on a neighbouring rock his elbow leaned. As thus he spoke. No monstrous thing am I. Fair virgin. Nor a savage of the sea. A watery god I am, nor on the main. Has Proteus, Triton, or Polemon, son. Of Athamas, more power. Yet time has been. When I was mortal, yet even then attached. To the deep water, on the ocean I. Still joyed to labour. Now the following shoal. Of fishes in my net I dragged, and now. Placed on a rock, I with my flexile rod. Guided the line. Bordering a verdant mead. A bank there lies, the waves its circuit bound. In part, in part the virid grass surrounds. A mead which never the horned herd had cropped. Where never the placid flock, nor hairy goats. Had browsed, nor bees industrious culled the flowers. For sweets, no genial chaplets there were plucked. To grace the head, nor had the mower's arm. Ever spoiled the crop. The first of mortals, I. On the turf rested. As my nets I dried. And as my captured scaly prey to count. Upon the grass I spread, whatever the net. Escape prevented, and the hook had snared. Through their own folly. Like a fiction sounds. The fact, but what avails to me to feign? Soon as the grass they touch, my captive prey. Begin to move, and on their sides to turn. And ply their fins on earth as in the main. Then, while with wonder struck I pause, all fly. The shore in heaps, and their new master quit. Their native waves regaining. I, surprised. Long doubtful stand to guess the wondrous cause. Whether some god, or but the grass's juice. Accomplished this. What herb at last, I said. Can power like this possess? And with my hand. Plucked up, and with my teeth the herbage chewed. Scarce had my throat thy untasted juice first trite. When all my entrails sudden trembling shook. And with a love of something yet unknown. My breast was moved, nor could I longer keep. My place. O earth, where I shall never return. Farewell. I cried, and plunged below the waves. Worthy the ocean deities me deemed. To join their social troop, an anxious prayed. To Tessis, an old ocean, Tessis' spouse. To purge whatever of mortal I retained. By them lustrated, and the potent song. Nine times repeated, earthly taints to cleanse. They bade me neath an hundred gushing streams. To place my bosom. No delay I seek. The floods from numerous fountains poured, the main. Overwhelmed my head. Thus far what deeds were done. My memory helps me to relate, thus far. Alone can I remember, all the rest. Dark to my memory seems. My sense restored. I found my body changed in every part. Nor was my mind the same. Then first I saw. This beard of dingy green, and these long locks. Which through the seas I sweep, these shoulders huge. Those azure arms and thighs in fish-like form. Furnished with fins. But what avails this shape? What that by all the deities marine? I dear am held? A deity myself? If all these honours cannot touch thy breast. These words he spoke, and more to speak prepared. When Scylla left the god. Repulsed, he grieved. And sought Titanian Circe's monstrous court. Book 14. 
now had you be in Glaucus, who could cleave. The surging sea, left Etna, over the breasts of giants thrown, and left the cyclops' fields, unconscious of the plows or harrows' use, and unindebted to the oxen yoked. Zankel he left, and its opposing shore, where regions turrets tower, and the straight sea, for shipwreck famed, which by encroaching shores, pressed narrow, forms the separating bound, betwixt Orsonia's and Sicilia's land. Thence glides he swift along the Tyrrhene coast, by powerful arms impelled, and gains the dome. And herbaged hills of Circe Phoebus sprung. The dome with forms of wildest beasts full crammed. Whom, soon as greeting salutations passed, he thus addressed, O powerful goddess, grant thy pity to a god, and thou alone, if worth that aid thou deemest me, canst afford aid to my love. For, O Titanian maid, to none the power of plants is better known than me, who by the power of plants was changed. But lest the object of my law, to thee, unknown, be hid, I Scylla late beheld. Upon thy Italian shore, Messenia's walls. Opposing. Shame me hinders to relate. What promises, what prayers, what coaxing words. I used, my words all heard with proud contempt. Do thou with magic lips thy charms repeat. If power in charms abides, or if in herbs. More force is found, then use the well-trite strength. Of herbs of power. I wish thee not to soothe. My heart, I wish thee not these wounds to cure. Still may they last, let her such flames but feel. Then Circe spoke, and she a mind possessed. Most apt to flame with love, or in her frame. The stimulus was placed, or Venus, irked. At what her sire discovered, caused the heat. Oh, better far the willing nymph pursue. Who would in wishes meet thee, WHO is seized. With equal love, well worthy of the maid. Thou wast, nay shouldst have been the first besought. And if but hope thou wilt afford, believe. My words, thou shalt spontaneously be loved. Fear not, but on thy beauteous form depend. Lo! I, a goddess. Of the splendid sun. A daughter, who with powerful spells so much. And herbs can do, to be thy consort too. Spurn her who spurns thee, her who thee desires. Desiring meat, and both at once avenge. But to her tempting speeches Glaucus thus. Replied, the trees shall sooner in the waves. Spring up, and seaweed on the mountain's top. Than I, while Scylla lives, my love transfer. The goddess swollen with anger, since his form. To harm, t'was given her not, and love denied. Turned on her happy arrival all her rage. Irked at her slighted passion, straight she grinds. Herbs infamous, to gain their horrid juice. And mixes all with Hecate and spells. Then clothes her in a sable robe, and forth. Through crowds of fawning savage beasts she goes. From her gay palace. Regium's coast she seeks. Overlooking Zankales rocks, and on the waves. With fury boiling, steps, over them she walks. As on a solid shore, and skims along. The ridgy billows with unwetted feet. A little pool, bent in a gentle curve. With peaceful surface oft did Sill attempt. And often thither she herself betook. To escape from oceans, and from Phoebus' heat. When high in noontide fierceness short the shade. Was from the head described. Before she came. The goddess poisoned all the pool, she poured. Her potent juice, of monster breeding power. Pressed from pernicious roots, within the waves. And muttered thrice nine times with magic lips. In sound scarce audible, her well-known spells. Here Scylla came, and waded to the waist. And straight, with barking monsters she espies. Her womb deformed, at first, of her own limbs. Not dreaming they are part, she from them flies. And chides them thence, and fears their savage mouths. But what she flies she with her drags, she looks. To find her thighs, and find her legs, and feet. But for those limbs Siberian jaws are found. Furious the dogs still howl, on their fierce backs. Her shortened groin, and swelling belly rest. The amorous Glaucus grieved, and spurned the love. 
of Circe, who so rancorously had used the power of plants. Her station Scylla kept, and soon a scope for vengeance she perceived. In hate to Circe, of his comrade crew, deprived Ulysses. Next the Trojan fleet. Had she overwhelmed, but ere they passed, transformed. To stone, she towered aloft a flinty rock. And still do mariners that rock avoid. The Phrygian ships that danger escaped, and escaped. Charybdis fell, by oars propelled, but now. Orsonia's shore well nigh attained, were driven. By adverse tempests to the Libyan coast. Aeneas then the queen Sidonian took. Most welcome to her bosom, and her dome. Nor bore her Phrygian spouse's sudden flight. With calm indifference, on a lofty pile. Reared for pretended sacred rites, she stood. And on the sword's point fell, herself deceived. She all around outwitted. Flying far. The new raised city of the sandy plains. To Eric's country was he born, where lived. Assessed's faithful, here he sacrificed. And gave due honours to his father's tomb. Then loosed his ships for sea, well nigh in flames. By Juno's iris, all thy Aeolian realm. The islands blazing with sulfuric fire. And rocks of Achilla siren nymphs. He left. The vessel now, of him who ruled. The helm, bereft, along Enaria's shore. And Procatus, and Pithecusa, placed. Upon a sterile hill, its name derived. From those who dwelt there, coasted. Erst the sire. Of gods, detesting perjuries and fraud. Which that deceitful race so much employed. Changed to an animal deformed their shapes. Where still a likeness and unlikeness seems. To man. Their every limb contracted small. Their turned up noses flattened from the brow. And ancient furrows ploughed adown their cheeks. Then sent them, all their bodies covered over. With yellow hairs, this district to possess. Yet sent them not till of the power of speech. Deprived, and tongue for direst fossils used. But left their chattering jaws the power to plain. These passed, and left Parthenope's high towers. To right, and musical Messina's tomb. And Cuma's shores to left, spots covered thick. With marshy reeds, he enters in the cave. Where dwelt the ancient Sibyl, and entreats. That through Avernus darkness he may pass. His father's shade to seek. Then she, her eyes. Long firmly fixed on earth, are praised, and next. Filled with the god, in furious raving spoke. Much dost thou ask, O man of mighty deeds. Whose valour by the sword is amply proved. And piety through flames. Yet, Trojan chief. Fear not, thou shalt what thou desirest attain. By me conducted, thou thy Elysian field. The lowest portion of the triform realm. And thy beloved parents' shade shalt see. No path to genuine virtue ever is closed. She spoke, and pointed to thy Avernian grove. Sacred to Proserpine, and showed a bough. With gold refulgent, this she bade him tear. From off its trunk. Aeneas her obeys. And sees the treasures of hell's awful king. His ancestors, and great Anchises' shades. Is taught the laws and customs of the dead. And what deep perils he in future wars. Must face. As then the backward path he trod. With weary step, the labour he beguiled. By grateful speech with his Cumean guide. And, while through darkling twilight he pursued. His fearful way, he thus, or, goddess, thou. Or of the gods high favoured, unto me. Still shalt thou as a deity appear. My life I own thy gift, who hast me given. To view the realms of death, who hast me brought. The realms of death beheld, to life again. For these high favours, when to air restored. Statues to the isle raise, and incense burn. Backward the prophetess, to him her eyes. Directs, and heaves a sigh, as thus she speaks. No goddess I, deem not my mortal frame. The sacred incense honours can deserve. And not through ignorance. Eternal youth. Had I possessed, if on Apollo's love. My virgin purity had been bestowed. This while he hoped, and while he strove to tempt. 
With gifts, oh, choose he said, cue me and maid. Whatever thou wouldest whatever thou wouldest is thine. I, pointing to an heap of gathered dust. With thoughtless mind, besought so many years. I might exist, as grains of sand were there. Mindless to ask for years of constant youth. The years he granted, and had granted too. Eternal youth, had I his passion quenched. A virgin I remain, Apollo's gift. Despised, but now the age of joy is fled. Decrepitude with trembling steps has come. Which long I must endure. Seven ages now. I have existed, ere the numbered grains. Are equaled, thrice an hundred harvests I. And thrice an hundred vintages must see. The time will come, my body, shrunk with age. And withered limbs, shall to small substance waste. Nor shall it seem that ever an amorous god. With me was smitten. Phoebus then himself. Or me will know not, or deny that ever. He sought my love. Till quite complete my change. To all invisible, by words alone. I shall be known. Fate still my voice will leave. On the steep journey thus the Sibyl spoke. And from the Stygian shades Aeneas rose. Acuma's town, there sacrificed as wont. And to the shores proceeded, which as yet. His nurse's name not bore. Here rested too. After long toil, Macarius, the constant friend. Of wise Ulysses, Achaemenids. Erst left amid Aetnean rocks, he knows. Astonished there, his former friend to find. In life unhoped, he cried, what chance? What God? O Achaemenids! Has thee preserved? How does a Greek a foreign vessel bear? And to what shores is now this vessel bound? Then Achaemenids, not ragged now. In robes with thorns united, but all free. Thus answered his inquiries. May I view. Once more that Polyphemus, and those jaws. With human gore overflowing, if I deem. This ship to me than Ithaca less dear. And less Aeneas than my sire esteem. For how too grateful can I be to him? Though all to him I give? Can I ever be? Unthankful or forgetful. That I speak. And breathe, and view the heavens and glorious sun. He gave, that in the Cyclops jaws my life. Was closed not, that when now the vital spark. Me quits, I may be properly entombed. Not in the monster's entrails. Heavens! What thoughts? Possessed my mind, unless by pallid dread. Of sense and thought bereft, when, left behind. I saw you push to see. Loud had I called. But feared my cries would guide to me the foe. Ulysses' clamour near your ship destroyed. I saw the monster, when a mighty rock. Torn from a mountain summit, in the waves. He flung, I saw him when with giant arm. Huge stones he hurled, with such impetuous force. As though an engine sent them. Feared I long. Lest all the stones or waves the bark would sink. Forgetful then that not on board was I. But when you escaped from cruel death, by flight. Then did he madly rave indeed, and roamed. All Etna over, and groped amid the woods. Deprived of sight he stumbles on the rocks. And stretching to the sea his horrid arms. Blackened with gore, he execrates the Greeks. And thus exclaims, oh. Would some lucky chance. Restore Ulysses to me, or restore. One of his comrades, who might glut my rage. Whose entrails I might gorge, whose living limbs. My hand might rend, whose blood might sluice my throat. And mangled members tremble in my teeth. Oh. Then how light, and next to none the curse. Of sight bereft. Raging, he this and more. Fierce uttered. I, with pallid dread overcome. Beheld his face still flowing down with blood. The orb of light deprived, his ruthless hands. His giant members, and his shaggy beard. Clotted with human gore. Death to my eyes. Was obvious, yet was death my smallest dread. Now seized I thought me, thought him now prepared. T enclosed my mangled bowels in his own. And to my mind recurred the time I saw. Two of my comrades' bodies furious dashed. Repeated on the earth, he, over them stretched. 
prone, like a shaggy lion, in his maw. Their flesh, their entrails, their yet quivering limbs. Their marrow, and crunched bones, greedy engulfed. Horror me seized. Bloodless and sad I stood. To see him champ, and from his mouth disgorge. The bloody banquet, morsels mixed with wine. Forth vomiting, and such a fate appeared. For wretched me prepared. Some tedious days. Skulked I, and shuddered at the smallest sound. Fearful of death, yet praying much to die. Repelling hunger by green herbs, and leaves. With acorns mixed, a solitary wretch. Poor, and to sufferings and to death decreed. Long was the time, ere I, not distant far. A ship beheld, I by my gestures showed. My wish for flight, and hastened to the shore. Their hearts were moved, and thus a Trojan bark. Received a Greek. And now, my friend most dear. Tell thy adventures, and the chiefs, and crews. Who with thee launched upon thy extended main? He tells how airless his kingdom holds. On the deep Tuscan main, who curbs the winds. In cavern prisons, which, a noble boon. Close pent within an ox's stubborn hide. Dulichium's chief, from airless received. How for nine days with prosperous breeze they sailed. And saw the long sought land. How on the tenth. Aurora rising bright, his comrades, urged. By envy, and by thirst of glittering spoil. Gold deeming there enclosed, the winds unloosed. How, driven by them, the ship was backward sped. Through the same wave she had so lately ploughed. And reached the port of Airless again. Thence, he continued, to the ancient town. Of Lestragonian Lamus we arrive. Where rules antifates, to him dispatched. I go, by two attended. I with one. Scarce find in flight our safety, with his gore. The hapless third, the Lestragonian's jaws. Besmears, our flying footsteps they pursue. While fierce antifate speeds on the crowd. Around they press, an unremitting hurl. Huge rocks, and trunks of trees, our men overwhelm. And sink our fleet, one ship alone escapes. Which great Ulysses and myself contains. Most of our band thus lost, and angry much. Lamenting more, we floated to these isles. Which hence, though distant far, you may descry. Those isles, by me too near beheld, do thou. At distance only view. O, oh, goddess born. Most righteous of all Troy, for now no more. Aeneas, must thou enemy be styled. To us, war ended, fly, I warn thee, fly. The shore of Circe. We, our vessel moored. Fast to that beach, not mindless of the deeds. Antifates performed, nor Cyclops, wretch. Inhuman, now to tempt this unknown land. Refuse. The choice by lot is fixed. The lot. Me sends, and with me sends polite's true. Eurylochus, and poor Elphenor, fond. Too much of wine, with twice nine comrades moat. To seek the dome Circean. Thither come. We at the entrance stand, a thousand wolves. And bears, and lionesses, with wolves mixed. Meet us, and terror in our bosom strike. But ground for terror none, of all the crew. None try our limbs to wound, but friendly wave. Their arching tails, and fawningly attend. Our steps, till by the menial train received. Through marbled halls to where their mistress sate. Our troop is led. She, in a bright recess. Upon a lofty throne of state, was placed. Clothed in a splendid robe, a golden veil. Around her head, and over her shoulders thrown. Nereids, and nymphs around, whose fingers quick. The wool never drew, nor formed the following thread. Were plants arranging, and selecting flowers. And various tainted herbs, confusedly mixed. In baskets. She completes the work they do. And well she knows the latent power each leaf. Possesses, well their force combined she knows. And all the nice weighed herbs inspects with care. When as she spite, and salutations passed. Mutual, her forehead brightened, and she gave. Our every wish. Nor waited more, but bad. The beverage of the roasted grain be mixed. 
and added honey, all the strength of wine, and curdy milk, and juices, which beneath such powerful sweetness undetected lay. The cup from her accursed hand, I take, and, soon as thirsty I, with parched mouth drink, and the dire goddess with her wand had stroked my head, I blush while I the rest relate. Roughened with bristles, I begin to grow. Nor now can speak, hoarse grunting comes for words. And all my face bends downwards to the ground. Callous I feel my mouth become, in form. A crooked snout, and feel my brawny neck. Swell over my chest, and what but now the cup. Had grasped, that part does marks of feet imprint. With all my fellows treated thus, so great. The medicine's potency, close was I shut. Within a sty, there I, Eurylochus. Alone unaltered to a hog, beheld. He only had the offered cup refused. Which had he not avoided, he as one. The bristly herd had joined, nor had our chief. The great Ulysses, by his tale informed. To Circe come, avenger of our woe. To him Selenius, messenger of peace. A milk-white flower presented, by the gods. Called Moli, from a sable root it springs. Safe in the gift, and in thy advice of heaven. He enters Circe's dome, and her repels. Coaxing to taste thy invidious cup, his head. To stroke attempting with her potent wand. And awes her trembling with his unsheathed steel. Then, faith exchanged, hands joined, he to her bed. Received, he makes the dowry of himself. That all his comrades' bodies be restored. Now are we sprinkled with innocuous juice. Of better herbs, with the inverted wand. Our heads are touched, the charms, already spoke. Strong charms of import opposite destroy. The more she sings her incantations, we. Rise more from earth erect, the bristles fall. And the wide fissure leaves our cloven feet. Our shoulders form again, and arms beneath. Are shaped. Him, weeping too, weeping we clasp. And round our leader's neck embracing hang. No words at first to utter have we power. But such as testify our grateful joy. A year's delay there kept us. There, mine eyes. In that long period much beheld, mine ears. Much heard. This with the rest, in private told. To me, by one of four most favoured nymphs. Who aided in her spells, while Circe toyed. In private with our leader, she me showed. A youthful statue carved in whitest stone. Bearing a feathered pecker upon his head. Placed in a sacred shrine, with numerous wreaths. Encircled. Unto my inquiring words. And wished to know who this could be, and why. There worshipped in the shrine, and why that bird. He bore, then, Macarius, she said receive. Thy wish, and also learn what mighty power. My mistress boasts, attentive hear my words. Saturnian Picus in Orsonia's climes. Was king, delighted still was he to train. Steeds for the fight. The beauty you behold. As man was his. So strong the semblance strikes. His real form in the feigned stone appears. His mind his beauty equaled. Nor as yet. The games quinquennial Grecian Ellis gives. Four times could he have seen. He, by his face. The dryad nymphs who on the Latian hills. Were born, attracted. Naiads, river nymphs. Him sought, whom Albula, and Anio bear. Almo's short course, the rapid stream of Nar. And Numicus, and Farfair's lovely shades. With all that Scythian Dien's woody realm. Traverse, and all who haunt the sedgy lakes. But he, all these despised, loved one fair nymph. Whom erst Vanilia, fame reports, brought forth. To Janus on Palatura's mount. When reached. The nuptial age, preferred before the rest. Laurentian Picus gained the lovely maid. Wondrous was she for beauty, wondrous more. Her art in song, and hence was Canaan's named. Won't was her voice forests and rocks to move. Soothe savage beasts, arrest the course of streams. And stay the flying birds. While warbling thus. With voice mature her song, Picus went forth. To pierce amid Laurentium's fields the boars. 
their native dwelling, on a fiery steed. He rode, two quivering spears his left hand bore. His purple vestment golden clasps confined. In the same woods Apollo's daughter came. And from the fertile hills as herbs she culled. She left the fields, from her Sakian named. When, veiled by twigs herself, the youth she saw. Amazed she stood. Down from her bosom dropped. The gathered plants, and quickly threw her frame. The fire was felt to shoot. Soon as her mind. Collected strength to curb the furious flame. She would have told him instant what she wished. But his impetuous steed, and circling crowd. Of followers, kept her far. Yet shalt thou not. If I but know my power, me fly, not should. The winds thee bear away, else is the force. Of plants all vanished, and my spells deceive. She said, and formed an incorporeal shape. Like to a boar, and bade it glance across. The monarch sight, and seem itself to hide. In the dense thicket, where the trees grew thick. A spot impervious to the courser's foot. Tis done, unwitting Picus eager seeks. His shadowy prey, leaps from his smoking steed. And, vain hoped spoil pursuing, wanders deep. In the thick woods. She baneful words repeats. And cursing charms collects. With new framed verse. Invokes strange deities, verse which erstwhile has dulled the splendid circle of the moon, and hid with rain-charged clouds her father's face. This verse repeated, instant heaven grew dark, and mists from earth arose, his comrades roam. Through the dark paths, the king without a guard is left. This spot, and time so suiting gained. Thus Circe cried, O fairest thou of forms, by those bright eyes which me enslaved, by all. Thy beauteous charms which make a goddess sue. Indulge my flame, accept thy all-seeing sun. My sire, for thine, nor, rigidly austere. Titany and Circe spurn. She ceased, he stern. Repulsed the goddess, and her praying suit. Exclaiming, be thou whom thou mayest, yet thine. I am not, captive me another holds. And fervently, I pray, to lengthened years. She still may hold me. Never will I wrong. The nuptial bond with strangers' lawless love. While Yana's daughter, my loved Canaan's lives. Soul's daughter then, reiterated prayers. In vain oft trite, exclaimed, nor shalt thou boast. Impunity, nor ever returning see. Thy Canaan's, but learn well what may be done. By slighted, loving woman, Circe loves. Is woman, and is slighted. To the west. She turned her twice, and turned her twice to east. Thrice with her wand she struck the youth, and thrice. Her charm fraught song repeated. Swift he fled. And wondering that more swift he ran than won't. Plumes on his limbs beheld. Constrained to add. A new formed habitant to Latium's groves. Angry he wounds the spreading boughs, and digs. The stubborn oak tree with his rigid beak. A purple tinge his feathers take, the hue. His garment showed, the gold, a buckle once. Which clasped his robe, to feathers too is changed. The shining gold circles his neck around. Nor aught remains of Picus save the name. Meantime his comrades vainly Picus call. Through all the groves, but Picus nowhere find. Circe they meet, for now the air was cleared. The clouds dispersed, or by the winds or sun. Charge her with crimes committed, and demand. Their king, force threaten, and prepare to lift. Their savage spears. The goddess sprinkles round. Her noxious poisons and envenomed juice. Invokes old night, and the nocturnal gods. Chaos, and Erebus, and Hecat's help. With magic howlings, praise. Woods, wondrous sight. Leap from their seats, earth groans, the neighboring trees. Grow pale, the grass with sprinkled blood is wet. Stones hoarsely seem to roar, and dogs to howl. Earth with black serpent swarms, unmattered forms. Of bodies long defunct, flit through the air. Tremble the crowd, struck with thy appalling scene. Appalled, and trembling, on their heads she strikes. Thy envenomed rod. From the road's potent touch. 
for men a various crowd of furious beasts. Appeared, his form no single youth retained. Descending Phoebus had Hesperia's shores. Now touched, and canant with her heart and looks. Sought for her spouse in vain, her servants all. And all the people roam through every wood. Bearing bright torches. Not content the nymph. To weep, to tear her tresses, and to beat. Her bosom, though not one of these was spared. She sallied forth herself, and frantic strayed. Through Latium's plains. Six times the night beheld. And six returning suns, her, wandering over. The mountain tops, or through the valleys deep. As chance directed, foodless, sleepless, still. Tiber at length beheld her, with her toil. And woe, worn out, upon his chilling banks. Her limbs extending. There her very griefs. Poured with her tears, still musically sound. Mourning, her words in a soft dying tone. Are heard, as when of old thy expiring swan. Sung his own elegy. Wasted at length. Her finest marrow, fast she pined away. And vanished quite to unsubstantial air. Yet still tradition marks the spot, the muse. Of ancient days, still Canaan's called the place. In honor of the nymph, and justly too. Many the tales like these I heard, and much. Like this I saw in that long tedious year. Sluggish and indolent for lack of toil. Thence are we bid to plough the deep again. Again to hoist the sail. But Circe told. So much of doubtful ways, of voyage vast. And all the perils of the raging deep. We must encounter, that my soul I own. Trembled. I gained this shore, and here remained. Here Macarius finished, to Aeneas' nurse. Inerned in marble, this short verse was given. Cajeta here, saved from the flames of Greece. Her foster son, for piety renowned. With fires more fitting burned. Loosed other ropes. That bound them to the grassy beach, and far. They leave the dwelling of the guileful power. And seek the groves, beneath whose cloudy shade. The yellow-sanded Tiber in the main. Fierce rushes. Here Aeneas gains the realm. And daughter of Latinus, Faunus' son. But not without a war. Battles ensue. With the fierce people. For his promised bride. Turnus loud rages. All the Tuscans join. With Latium, and with doubtful warfare long. Is sought the conquest. Either side augment. With foreign aid their strength. Rutilians crowds. Defend, and crowds the Trojan trenches guard. Not bootless, suppliant to Evander's roof. Aeneas went, though venulous in vain. To exile Diam's great town was sent. A mighty city Diam had reared. Beneath Apulian Dornus, and possessed. His lands by marriage dower. But when made known. By Venulus, the message Turner sent. Beseeching aid, thy Aetolian hero aid. Denied. For neither was his wish to send. His father's troops to fight, nor of his own. Had he, which might the strenuous warfare wage. Lest this but feigned you think, he said, though grief. The sad relation will once more renew. Yet will I now thy afflicting tale repeat. When lofty Ilium was consumed, the towers. Of Pergamus a prey to Grecian flames. The Locrian Arjux, for the ravished maid. Drew vengeance on us all, which he alone. Deserved from angry pallors. Scattered wide. And swept by tempests through the foaming deep. The Grecians, thunders, rains, and darkness bore. All heavens and oceans rage, and all to crown. On the Caffarian rocks the fleet was dashed. But not to tire you with each mournful scene. In order, Greece might then the tears have drawn. Even from old Priam. Yet Minerva's care. Snatch me in safety from the surge. Again. From Argos, my paternal land, I'm driven. Bright Venus bearing still in mind the wound. Of former days. Upon thy expanded deep. Such toils I bore excessive, on the land. So in stern combat strove, that oft though seemed. To me most blessed, who in the common wreck. Caphiria sunk beneath the boisterous waves. 
a fate I anxious wished I'd with them shared. Now all my comrades, of the toilsome main, and constant warfare weary, respite craved. From their long wanderings. Not was Agmund so. Fear still his bosom burned, and now he raged. From his misfortunes fiercer, as he cried. What, fellows? Can remain which now to bear? Your patience should refuse? What, though she would? Possesses Cytheria to inflict? When worse is to be dreaded, is the time. For prayers, but when our state the worst has seen. Fear should be spurned at, in our depth of woe. Secure. Let she herself hear all my words. And let her hate, as hate she does, each man. Who follows diamond? Yet will we all. Her hatred mock, and stand against her power. So mighty, with a no less mighty breast. With words like these Aetolian Agmon goads. Thy already raging goddess, and revives. Her ancient hate. Few with his boldness pleased. Far most my friends his daring speech condemn. Aiming at words respondent, straight his voice. And throat are narrowed, into plumes his hair. Is altered, plumes over his new neck are spread. And over his chest, and back, his arms receive. Long pinions, bending into light-formed wings. Most of his feet is cleft in claws, his mouth. Hardens to horn, and in a sharp beak ends. Lycus, retina, nictius, abars, stare. With wonder, and while wandering there they stand. The same appearance take, and far the most. Of all my troop on wings up fly, and round. The ship the air resounds with clapping wings. If what new shape those birds so sudden formed. Distinguished, you would know, swans not to be. Nor could the snowy swan resemble more. Sun now to dawn us, my diminished host. Scarce guards this kingdom, and those barren fields. Thus far diamonds, and venulous. Thy Apulian kingdom left, Calabria's gulf. Past, and Mesapia's plains, where he beheld. Caverns with woods deep shaded, with light rills. Cool watered, here the goatish pan now dwelt. Once tenanted by wood nymphs. From the spot. Them, Apulus, a shepherd drove to flight. Alarmed at first by sudden dread, but soon. Resumed their courage, his pursuit despised. They to the measured notes their agile feet. Moved in the dance. The clown insults them more. Mimics their motions in his boorish steps. To course abusing adding speech obscene. Nor ceased his tongue till buried in a tree. Well may his manner from the fruit be known. For the wild olive marks his tongue's reproach. In berries most austere, to them transferred. The rough ungrateful sharpness of his words. Returned the legates, and the message told. The Aetolians aid denied, without their help. Wage the Rutilians now the ready war. And streams of blood from either army flow. Lo! Turnus comes, and greedy torches brings. To fire the covered ships, the flames they fear. Whom tempests spared. And now the fire consumed. The pitch, the wax, with all that flame could feed. Then, mounting up the lofty mast, assailed. The canvas, and the rowers' benches smoked. This saw the sacred mother of the gods. And mindful that from Ida's lofty top. The pines were hewed, with clash of tinkling brass. And sounds of hollow box, filled all the air. Then borne through ether by her lions tamed. She said, those flames with sacrilegious hand. Thou hurlest in vain, I will them snatch away. Never will I calmly view the greedy fire. Aught of the forests, which are mine consume. Loud thunders rattled as the goddess spoke. And showery floods with hard rebounding hail. The thunder followed. In the troubled air. The blustering brethren raged, and swelled the main. The billows furious clashed. The mother used. One blast's exerted force, the cables burst. Which bound the Phrygian vessels to the shore. Them swiftly swept along, and in the deep. Low plunged them. Straight the rigid wood grows soft. The timber turns to flesh, the crooked prows. To heads are changed, the oars to floating legs. And toes, while what were ribs, as ribs remain. 
the keels, deep in the vessel sunk, become. The spinal bones, in soft long tresses flows. The cordage, into arms the sail yards change. The hue of all cerulean as before. And now the naiads of the ocean sport. With girlish play, amid those very waves. Erewhile so dreaded, sprung from rugged hills. They love the gentle main, nor aught their birth. Their bosoms irks. Yet mindful still what risks. Themselves encountered on the raging main. Oft with assisting hand the high toast bark. They aid, save Greeks the hapless bark contains. Mindful of Ilium's fall, they still detest. The Argives, and with joyful looks behold. The shattered fragments of Ulysses' ship. With joy behold the bark Alcinous gave. Hardened to rock, stone growing from the wood. Twas hoped, the fleet transformed to nymphs marine. The fierce Rutilians, struck with awe, might cease. The war, but stubborn either side persists. Each have their gods, and each have godlike souls. Nor seek they now, so much the kingdom dower. Latin a scepter, or Lavinia. The. As conquest, waging war through shame to cease. Venus at last beholds, brave Turner slain. Her son's victorious arms, and Ardea falls. A mighty town when Turnus yet was safe. It cruel flames destroyed, and every roof. The smoking embers hid, up from the heap. Of ruins, sprung a bird unknown before. And beat the ashes with its sounding wings. Its voice, its leanness, pallid hue, and all. Suit well a captured city, and the name. Retaining still, with beating wings it wails. Now had Aeneas virtues, all the gods. Even Juno, forced to cease their ancient hate. The young Eulus growing empire fixed. On firm foundations, ripe was then for heaven. The Scytherian prince. Venus besought. That favor of the gods, round her sire's neck. Her arms she clasped, oh, father, she exclaimed. Indulgent still, be more than ever kind. Grant that a deity, though ever so low. Aeneas may become. Who through my blood. Claims thee as grandsire, something let him gain. Let it suffice, that he has once beheld. The dreary realm, and once already passed. The Stygian stream. The deity's consent. Nor does the heavenly queen, her forehead stern. Retain, consenting with a cheerful mien. Then spoke the sire. Both, daughter, merit well. The boon celestial, what thou askest receive. Since thou desirest it, and since he deserves. He ceased. Overjoyed, she grateful thanks returns. And by yoke turtles born through yielding air. She seeks Laurentium's shore, where gently creep. Numitious waters, midst a reedy shade. Into the neighboring main. She bids him cleanse. All of Aeneas that to death was given. And bear him silent floating to the sea. The horned god, what Venus bad performed. All that Aeneas had of mortal mold. He purged away, and washed him with his waves. His better part remained. Odors divine. Over his lustrated limbs, the mother poured. And with ambrosia and sweet nectar touched. His lips, and perfect is the new made god. Whom indiges, the Roman people call. Worship with altars, and in temples place. Alba, and Latium then beneath the rule. Of young Eulus, called Ascanius, came. Him Silvius followed. Then Latinus held. The ancient scepter, with his grandsire's name. Alba to famed Latinus was the next. Then Epitus, Capitus, Capis reigned. Capis before Capitus. After these. The realm was swayed by Tiberinus, sunk. Beneath the billows of the Tuscan stream. The waters took his name. His sons were two. Fierce Remulus, and Acrota, the first. Preeminent in years, the thunder mocked. And by the thunder died. Of meeker mind. His brother, to brave Aventinus left. The throne, who buried neath the selfsame hill. Where once he reigned, gave to the hill a name. And Procas now the Latian people ruled. Beneath this monarch fair Pomona lived. Than whom amongst the Hamadryad train. None tended closer to her garden's care. 
none over the tree's young fruit more anxious watched. And thence her name. In rivers, she, and woods. Delighted not, four fields were all her joy. And branches bending with delicious loads. Nor grasps her hand a javelin, but a hook. With which she now luxurious bows restrains. And prunes the stragglers, when too wide they spread. Now she divides the rind, and in the cleft. Inserts a scion, and supporting juice. Affords thy adopted stranger. Never she bears. That drought they feel, but oft with flowing streams. Waters the crooked fibres of their roots. This all her love, this all her care, for man. She heeded not. Yet of the lawless force. Of rustics fearful, she her orchard round. Well fenced, and every part from access barred. And fled from all mankind. What was there left? Untried, by satyrs, by the wanton fawns. Or pine crowned pan, sylvanus, ever youth. Or him who sickle frights nocturnal thieves. To gain her? These vitumnus all excelled. In passion, but not happier he than they. How oft a basket of ripe grain he bore. Clad like a hardy reaper, and in form. A real reaper seemed. Oft with new hay. His temples bound, who turns the fresh cut grass. He might be thought. Oft in his horny hand. He bears a goad, then might you swear, that now. The weary oxen he had just unyoked. Armed with a pruning hook, he one appears. Who lops the vines? When he the ladder lifts. Apples about to pluck he seems. His sword. Shows him a soldier, and his trembling reed. An angler. Thus a thousand shapes he tries. T. Enjoy the pleasure of her beauteous sight. Now leaning on a staff, his temples clad. In painted bonnet, he an ancient dame. With silver locks thin scattered over her head. Would seem, and in the well-trimmed orchard walks. Admires the fruit, but, oh! How far beyond! Are these, he said, and kissed the lips he praised. No ancient dame such kisses ever bestowed. Then rested on the swelling turf, and viewed. The branches bending with thy autumnal load. An elm there stood right opposite, full spread. With swelling grapes, which, with its social vine. He praised, yet should that trunk there single stand. Said he, without its vine, naught but the leaves. Desirable would seem. As well the vine. Which rests now safe upon its wedded elm. If not so joined, were prostrate on the ground. Yet does the tree's example move not thee. Thou fliest from marriage, fliest from nuptial joys. Would they could charm thy soul. Not Helen ever. Such crowds of war sought, not her who moved. The Lapithian war, nor the bright queen. Of Ithacus, still against the coward brave. As would pursue thee. Now, though all thou fliest. Thy suitors scorning, thousands seek thy hand. Both demigods and gods, whoever dwell. Of deities on Alba's lofty hills. Yet wisely wouldest thou act, and happy wed. Attend my age counsel, thee I love. More than all these, and more than thouts believe. Reject such vulgar offers, and select. The tumnus for the consort of thy bed. And for his worth accept of me as pledge. For to himself not better is he known. Than me. No tront through the earth he roves. These spots he dwells in, and in these alone. Nor loves he, like thy war's greatest share. Instant whatever he sees. Thou his first flame. Shalt be, and be his last. He will devote. His every year to thee, and thee alone. Add to his youth, and nature's bounteous gifts. Which decorate him, and that change with ease. He every form can take, and those the best. That thou mayest like, for all thou mayest command. Are not your pleasures both the same? The fruits. Thou gatherest first, are they not given to him? Who takes thy offerings with a grateful hand. But now he seeks not fruits plucked from thy trees. Nor herbs thy garden feeds with mellow juice. Nor aught, save thee. Have pity on his flame. Think tease himself that sues, think that he prays. Through me. 
O oh, fear the vengeance of the gods. Affronted Venus unrelenting rage. And fear Ramnuja's still vindictive mind. That these you more may dread, I will relate. For H has much to me made known, a fact. Notorious through all Cyprus which may urge. Your soul more quickly to relent and love. Iphis of humble origin beheld. The noble Anaxarete the blood. Of ancient Teucer, he beheld, and felt. Love burned through all his frame, he struggled long. By reason to overcome the flame, in vain. He came a humble suppliant to her gate. To her old nurse, he now his hapless love. Confessed, and prayed her by her nursling's hopes. She would not be severe. Now he assails. All her attendants with his flattering speech. And anxious begs of each to intercede. Oft, graven on tablets, were his amorous words. Born to her. Oft against her door he hung. Garlands, wet dropping with the dew of tears. Placed on the threshold hard his tender side. Venting reproaches on the cruel bar. But she more deaf than surges which arise. With setting stars, and harder than the steel. New mission fires have tempered, or the rock. Still living in its bed, spurned him, and laughed. And cruel, added lofty words to deeds. Unmerciful, and robbed him even of hope. Impatient Iphis, now no longer bore. The pangs of endless grief, but at her gate. Thus uttered his last plaints thou hast overcome. O Anaxarete! For never more. Will I molest thy quiet. Now prepare. Glad triumphs, pee and call, and bind thy brows. With laurel bright, for thou victorious art. And joyfully I die. O heart of steel! Enjoy thy bliss. Now will I force thy praise. In something, somehow find a way to please. And thee constrain to grant I have desert. Yet still remember, that my love for thee. Leaves me not but with life. At once I lose. A double light. But fame shall not announce. To thee my death, for I myself will come. Lest thou shouldest doubt, thou shalt thyself behold. My death, and on my lifeless body glut. Thy cruel eyes. But, O ye gods above. If mortal deeds ye view, remember me. No more my tongue can dare to ask, than this. That distant ages may my fortune know. Grant fame to him, whom ye of life deprive. He spoke, and to the porch so oft adorned. With flowing chaplets, raised his humid eyes. And stretched his pallid arms, then to the post. The cord with noose well fitted, fastening, cried. Nymph, pitiless and cruel. Please the best. With garlands such as these. Then in the cord. His head inserted, towered the maid still turned. As, hapless load. With strangled throat he hung. Struck by his dangling feet, the portal seemed. A sound to give, which mighty seemed to mourn. An open throne, the horrid deed displayed. Loudly the servants shriek, and vainly bear. His breathless body to his mother's dome. Defunct his sire, she clasped him to her breast. Embraced his clay-cold limbs, and all she said. That wretched parent say, and all she did. That hapless mothers do, then through the town. The melancholy funeral pomp she led. The lurid members following, on a bier. For burning. In the road the dwelling stood. Through which the sad procession took its way. And sound of lamentation struck the ears. Of Anaxarete, whom now the power. Of vengeance followed. Moved, she now exclaimed. I will this melancholy prospect view. And to the open casement mounted high. Scarce had she Iphis on the bier beheld. When hardened grew her eyes, a pallid hue. Overspread her body as the warm blood fled. Her feet to move for flight she trite, her feet. Stuck fast, her face she tried to turn away. She could not turn it, and by small degrees. The stony hardness of her breast was spread. Over all her limbs. Believe not that I feign. For Salami's the figure of the nymph. Still keeps, and there a temple is high reared. Where Venus, the beholder, they adore. Mindful of this, O oh dearest nymph. Lay by. That cold disdain, and join thee to a spouse. 
so may no vernal frosts thy budding fruits destroy, nor sweeping storms despoil thy flowers. When this the god, to various shapes in vain, transformed, had uttered, he assumed again the youth, and flung the garb of age aside. And so appeared, as seems the radiant sun, freed from opposing clouds, and darting bright. His glory round. Force he prepared, but force. He needed not. The nymph his beauty moved. And straight her bosom felt a mutual flame. Thy Orsonian realm Amulius force unjust. Commanded next, an ancient Numitor. By his young grandsons the lost realm regained. The city's walls on pale's feast were laid. Now Tatius and the Sabine sires wage war. Against it, and the fortress gate unclosed. Tarpeia, well deserving of her fate, breathes out her soul beneath a pile of shields. Thence cure sons, each sound of voice repressed. Silent as wolves, steal on them drowned in sleep. And gain the gates, which Ilya's son had closed. With massive bars. But Juno won through ope. Nor creaked the portal on its turning hinge. Venus alone the fastening of the gate. Withdrawn, perceived, and had it closed again. Save that the acts a deity performs. No deity can ever undo. A spot. Near Yana's temple, cool with flowing streams. Orsonia's naiads owned, an aid from these. She sought. Nor could the nymphs deny a boon. So just, an instant all their rills and floods. Burst forth. But still to Yana's open gate. The way was passable, nor could the waves. Oppose their way. They to the fruitful springs. Apply blue sulphur, and the hollow caves. Fire with bitumen, to the lowest depth. They forceful penetrate, both this, and that. And streams that late might vie with alpine cold. To flames themselves, not now in heat would yield. The porches of the deity too faced. Smoked with the fiery sprinkling, and the gate. Op to the hardy Sabine troops in vain. Was by the new sprung fountain guarded, till. The sons of Mars had girt them in their arms. Soon Romulus attacked them, and Rome's soil was strewed with Sabine bodies and her own. And impious weapons mingled blood of sires. With blood of sons-in-law, yet so it pleased. War settled into peace, nor raged the steel. To ultimate destruction, in the realm. Tatius as equal sovereign was received. Tatius deceased, thou, Romulus, dispensed. To the joint nations, equitable laws. When Mars, his helmet thrown aside, the sire of gods and men, in words like these, addressed. O parent! Since the Roman realm has gained a strong and wide foundation, nor should look to one protector only, lo! The time to grant the favor, promised me so long to thy deserving grandson. Snatched from earth, let him in heaven he placed Time was, long since. In a full council of the gods thou saidest. Well I remember, well my mindful breast. The tender words remarked, a son of mine. By thee should in the azure sky be placed. Now be the fullness of thy words complete. Thy omnipotent consented, with black clouds. Darkened the air, and frightened all the town. With flaming thunders. When the martial god. Perceived this fiat of the promised change. Propped on his spear he fearless mounts the steeds. Pressed by the bloody yoke, loud sounds the lash. And prone the air he cleaves, lights on the top. Of shady Palatine. There Ilya's son. Delivering regal laws to Romans round. He saw, and swept him thence, his mortal limbs. Waste in the empty air, as balls of lead. Hurled from a sling, melt in the midmost sky. More fair his face appears, and worthy more. Of the high shrines, such now appears the form. Of great Quirinus, clad in purple robe. His spouse him wept as lost, when heaven's high queen. Bad Iris on her sweeping bow descend. And thus her orders to her cilia speak. O matron! Glory of the Latian land. Pride of the Sabine race, most worthy spouse. Of such an hero once, spouse worthy now. Of God Quirinus, cease thy tears, if wish. 
To see thy husband warms thee, led by me. To yonder grove upon Quirinus hill. Which flourishes, and overshades the fane. Of Rome's great monarch, haste. Iris obeys. Upon her painted bow to earth slides down. And hails her cilia in the bidden words. Her eyes scarce lifting, she with blushing face. Replies, O goddess. Whom thou art, to me. Unknown, that thou a goddess art is plain. Lead me, O lead. Show me my spouse's face. Which if fate grant I may once more behold. Heaven I'll allow I've seen. Nor waits she more. But with Thor mansion Iris, to the hill. Of Romulus proceeds. There, shot from heaven. A star-towered earth descended, from its rays. Bright flamed her cilia's hair, and with the star. Mounted aloft. Rome's founder's well-known arms. Receive her. Now her former name is changed. As changed her body, known as Aura, now. A goddess, with her great Quirinus joined. Book 15. Meantime they seek who may the mighty load. Sustain, who may succeed so great a king. Fame, harbinger of truth, the realm decreed. To noble Numa. Not content to know. The laws and customs of the Sabine race. His mind capacious grasped a larger field. He sought for nature's laws. Fired by this wish. His country left, he journeyed to the town. Of him, who erst was great Alcide's host. And as he sought to learn what founder first. These Grecian walls reared on Italia's shore. Thus an old habitant, well versed in tales. Of your, replied. Jove's son, rich in the herds. Iberia bred, his prosperous journey bent. By ocean unto fair Licinia's shores. Entered himself the hospitable roof. Of mighty Croto, while his cattle strayed. Amid the tender grass, and his long toil. Relieved by rest. Departing, thus he spoke. Here in thy grandson's age a town shall rise. And true the promised words, four missilos. Argive Ailman's son, dear to the gods. Beyond all mortals of that time, now lived. The club armed god, as pressed with heavy sleep. He lay, hung over him, and directed thus. Haste leave thy native land, where distant flows. The rocky stream of Aeseris, go seek. And threatened much if disobedient found. Then disappeared the god and sleep at once. Ailman's son arose, with silent care. Revolved the new seen vision in his soul. An undetermined wavered long his mind. The god commands, the laws forbid to go. Death is the punishment to him decreed. Who would his country quit? Now glorious soul. Had in the ocean hid his glittering face. And densest night showed her star-studded head. Again the god was seen to come, again. Admonish, and with threats more stern demand. Obedience. Terror struck he now prepared his property and household gods to move. To this new seat. Quick through the city flies. The rumor, as a slighter of the laws. Is he denounced? The trial ends at once. Thy acknowledged crime without a witness proved. The wretched culprit lifts his eyes and hands. To heaven, exclaiming, thou whose toils twice six. Have given thee claim to glory, lend thy aid. Thou art the cause that I offense have given. Sentence in old, by stones of white and black. Was shown, by these thy accused was cleared, by those. Condemned. Thus is the heavy doom now passed. And in the fatal urn each flings a stone. Of sable hue. Inverted then to count. The pebbles, lo. Their color all is changed. From black to white, and thus, the doom reversed. Ailman's son by Hercules is freed. Thanks to Alcmena's son, his kinsman, given. He over thy Ionian sea with favoring winds. Sailed, and Tarentum, Sparta's city, passed. And Sibiris, Nethus Salentine. The Gulf of Thurium, and Jupiter's fields. With Temeses, which shores at distance seen. By him, were scarcely passed, when he beheld. The mouth of Aeseris, the destined flood. And thence not far a lofty heap of earth. Where Croto's hallowed bones were safe inhumed. 
there he is bidden raise the walls, which took from the high sepulcher their lasting name. Plain then the city's origin appears. By fame, thus built upon Italia's shores. Here dwelt a sage whom Samos claimed by birth. But Samos and its masters he had fled. A willing exile from tyrannic rule. Though from celestial regions far removed. His mind to heaven could soar, with mental eyes. He things explored which to the human ken. Nature denied. When all with watchful care. Was learnt in secret, to the listening crowd. He public spoke. Told to their wondering ears. The primal origin of this great world. The cause of things, what nature is, what God. Whence snow, and whence tremendous thunder springs. From Jove, or from the rattling of rent clouds. What shakes earthy s pillars, by what law the stars. Wonder, and what besides lies hid from man. And first that animals should heap the board. For food, he strict for bad, and first in words. Thus eloquent, but unbelieved he spoke. Cease, mortals, cease your bodies to pollute. With food unhallowed, plentiful is grain. The apples bend the branches with their load. The vines bear swelling heaps of clustering grapes. Bland herbs you have, and such as heat require. To mollify for use. Nor do you lack. The milky fluid, or the honey sweet. Fragrant of time. The lavish earth supplies. Mild aliments, her riches and affords. Dainties, with naught of slaughter or of blood. Their hunger beasts alone with flesh allay. And beasts not all, the generous steed, the flock. The herd, on grass subsist. But lions grim. Armenian tigers, bears, and wolves, delight. In bloody feasts. How impious to behold. Bowels in bowels bear it. Greedy limbs. Fatten on limbs digested, and prolonged. One's animation by another's death. In vain the earth, benignant mother, gives. Her copious stores, if naught can thee delight. Save with a savage tooth this living food. To chew, and cyclopean feasts renew. Canest thou not cloy the appetite's keen rage? Depraved desire. Unless another die? That early age, to which we give the name. Of golden, happy was in mellow fruits. And plants, by earth produced, nor ever did gore. The mouth defile. In safety through the air. Fowls weighed their feathers, fearless through the fields. Wandered the hare, nor, on the barbed hook hung. By his credulity, was snared the fish. Fraud was not, none suspicious of deceit. And all was filled with harmony and peace. But soon some wretch, whatever wretch was he. Such food disliking, in his greedy maw. Bear it what animation once possessed. He led the way to wickedness. And first. The weapon smoked with blood of ravenous beasts. And there it should have stayed. Just is the plea. To take their lives that follow us for prey. But not devour them when destroyed. From thence. Widespread the horrid practice, and the sow. Doomed the first victim, is decreed to die. For digging up with crooked snout the seed and blasting all the prospect of the year. The goat had gnawed the vine, the culprit bled. On Bacchus' altars to appease his ire. These two their fate deserved. But how, O sheep? Ye harmless flocks, have ye this merited? Formed to receive protection from mankind? Who in your swelling dugs bland liquors bear? Who give your fleecy coverings, garments soft? For us to form, and more in life than death. Assist our wants. What has the ox deserved? A simple harmless beast, and born for toil. Of guile and fraud devoid. Forgetful man. And undeserving of the harvest's boon. Who could, the crooked joke just from his neck. Removed, his faithful tiller sacrifice. Smite with the axe that neck with labor worn. With which so oft he had the soil renewed. Which had so many crops on him bestowed. Nor is this all, the savage deed performed. They implicate the heavenly gods themselves. Pretend thy almighty deities delight. To see the slaughter of laborious steers. Spotless must be the victim, in his form. 
perfection, fatal thus too much to please. With gold and fillets gay, the beast is led. Before the altar, hears the unknown prayers. And sees the meal, the product of his toil. Betwixt his horns fall in his forehead flung. Then struck, he stains the weapon with his blood. The weapon in reflecting waves beneath. Haply beheld before. Next they inspect. His torn out living entrails, and from thence. Learn what the bosoms of the gods intend. Whence, man, such passion for forbidden food? How darest thou, mortal man, in flesh indulge? Oh! I conjure you, do it not, my words. Deep in your minds revolve, when to your mouth. The mangled members of the ox you raise. No, and reflect, your labor you devour. And now the God inspires my tongue, my tongue. Shall follow what thy inspiring God directs. My truths I will disclose, display all heaven. And oracles of mine divine reveal. I sing of mighty things, by none before. Investigated, what has long lain hid. It glads me through the lofty heavens to go. To sail amid the clouds, the sluggish earth. Left far below, and on the shoulders mount. Of mighty Atlas, thence from far look down. On wandering souls of reasoning aid deprived. Shivering and trembling at the thoughts of death. I thus exhort, and scenes of fate unfold. O race! Whom terror of cold death affrights? Why fear ye stakes? Why darkness? Why vain names? The dreams of poets? Why in fancied worlds? Severe atonements? Whether slow disease? Or on the pile the body flames consume? Think not that any suffering it can feel. The soul from death is free, and one seat left. Another habitation finds and lives. Well I remember I was Panthea's son. Euphorbus, in the fatal war of Troy. Whose breast the young Atride's massive spear. Transpierced in fight. I lately knew the shield. My left arm bore, in Juno's temple hung. In Abantian Argos. All is changed. But nothing dies. The spirit roams about. From that to this, from this to that again. And enters vacant bodies at its will. Now from a beast's to human frame it goes. Now from the man it passes to a beast. And never perishes. As yielding wax. Is with new figures printed, nor remains. Long in one form, nor holds its pristine shape. And yet is still the same, so do I teach. The soul the same, though varied are its seats. Hence, lest thy belly's keen desire overcome. All piety, and profit like I speak. Forbear by impious slaughter to disturb. The souls of kindred friends, and let not blood. With blood be fed. Now on the boundless sea. Since I am born, and to the breeze have loosed. My swelling sail, this more, naught that the world. Contains, is in appearance still the same. All moving altars, changeable is formed. Each image. And with constant motion flows. Even time itself, just like a passing stream. For nor the river, nor the flying hour. Can be detained. As wave by wave impelled. The foremost pressed by that behind, itself. Urging its predecessor, so time flies. And so is followed, ever seeming new. For what has been, is lost, what is, no more. Shall be, and every moment is renewed. You see the night emerge to glorious day. And the bright sun in shady darkness sink. Nor shows the sky one hue when nature all. Worn out, in midnight quiet rests, and when. Bright Lucifer dismounts his snowy steed. Varying again when fair Aurora comes. Of light forerunner, and the world, to soul. About to yield, dies deep. The orbed god. When from earthy s margin rising, in the morn. Blushing appears, and blushing seems at eve. Descending to the main, but at heaven's height. Shines in white splendor, there thy ethereal air. Is purest, earthy s contagion distant far. Nor can nocturnal Phoebe always show. Her form the same, nor equal, less today. If waxing, than tomorrow she'll appear. If waning, greater. Note you not the year. 
in four succeeding seasons passing on? A lively image of our mortal life. Tender and milky, like young infancy. Is the new spring, then gaily shine the plants. Tumid with juice, but helpless, and delight. With hope the planter, blooming all appears. And smiles in varied flowers the feeding earth. But delicate and powerless are the leaves. Robuster now the year, to spring succeeds. The summer, and a sturdy youth becomes. No age is stronger, none more fertile yields. It stores, and none with heat more fervid glows. Next autumn follows, all the fire of youth. Allayed, mature in mildness, just between. Old age and youth a medium temper holds. Some silvery tresses over his temples strewed. Then aged winter, frightful object. Comes. With tottering step, and bald appears his head. Or snowy white the few remaining hairs. Our bodies to themselves submit to change. Without remission. Nor what we have been. Nor what we are, tomorrow shall we be. The day has been when we were but a seed. And in his mother's womb the future man. Dwelt. Nature with her aiding power appeared. Bad that the embryo bear it deep within. The pregnant mother should not rack her more. And from its dwelling to the free drawn air. Produced it. To the day the infant brought. Lie sinewless, then quadruped he crawls. In beast like guise, then trembling, by degrees. He stands erect, but with a leg unfirm. His knees assisting with some strong support. Now is he strong and swift, an youthy s brisk stage. Quick passes, then, the flower of years overgone. He slides down gradual to descending age. This undermines, demolishes the strength. Of former years. An ancient Milo weeps. When he beholds those aged feeble arms. Hang dangling by his side, once like the limbs. Of Hercules, so muscular, so large. And Helen weeps when in her glass she views. Her aged wrinkles, wondering to herself. Why she was ravished twice. Consuming time. An envious age. All substance ye destroy. All things your teeth decay, and you consume. By gradual progress, but by certain death. These also, which the elements we call. Their varying changes know, lo. I explain. Their regular vicissitudes, attend. For elements thy eternal world contains. Two, earth and water, which their ponderous weight. Sinks low, and two, the air and purer fire. Void of dense gravity, soar up on high. Free, unconfined. Though distant far in space. Yet from these four are all things formed, and all. To them resolve again. The earth dissolved. Melts into liquid dew, more subtle grown. It passes to the breezes and the air. An air again, when in its thinest form. Deprive of weight, springs to the fires on high. Thence retrograde they come, inverting all. This order, fire is thickened to dense air. Air into water, water to hard earth. Nor aught retains its form. Nature, of things. Renewer, figures from old figures makes. Nought that the world contains, doubt not my truth. Ever perishes, but changes, and receives. An altered shape. What to be born we call. Is to begin in different guise to seem. Than what we were, and what we call to die. Is but to cease to wear our wonted form. Though haply some part hither may be moved. Some thither, still the aggregate's the same. Nor can I think that aught can long endure. Unaltered. Soon the primal ages came. From gold to iron. Quite transformed is oft. The state of places. I have seen what once. Was earth most solid, changed to fluid waves. Land have I seen from ocean formed, and shells. Marine, lie scattered distant from all shore. Old anchors bear it in the mountain tops. The rush of waters hollow valleys forms. Where once were plains, and level lie the hills. Beneath the deluge, dry the marshy ground. With barren sand becomes, and what was parched. Is soaked, a marshy fen. Here nature ops. New fountains, there she closes up the old. 
rivers have bursted forth when earthquakes shook. The globe, some choked have disappeared below. Thus like us, swallowed by the yawning earth. Bursts far from thence again, another stream. The mighty Erosinus, now absorbed. Now flows, to Argive fields again restored. And Missus, they relate, who both his stream. And banks disliking, as Caicus now. Twixt others flows. With Amenane who rolls. Over San Sicilian, flowing oft, and oft. With closed up fountains dry. And Egros, once. Sweet to the thirsty, now his waters pours. Untouched by lips, since, save we must deny. To poets' faith, the double bodied race. Their bath the wounds Alcides' arrows gave. And is not Hypanes, the flood that springs. From Scythia's hills, once sweet, with bitter salts. Now tainted? By the waves begirt were once. Antissa, Pharos, and Phoenician Tyre. And not a spot an island now remains. The ancient clowns, Lacadia to the land. Saw joined, now surges beat around its base. And Zankel, they relate, was once conjoined. To Italy, till ocean burst his bounds. And rent the land, and girt it with his waves. For Hellas or Boris should you seek. Achaean towns, overwhelmed beneath the waves. You'll find them, boatmen oft are wont to show. The tottering cities, and their walls immersed. Near Pythian Trozen is a lofty hill. By trees unshaded, now indeed an hill. But once a level plain. Wondrous to tell. The wind's resistless force, in caverns deep. Enclosed, for exit somewhere as it strained. And struggled long in vain, a free arrange. Of air to sweep, when all the prison round. Was found no fissure pervious to the blast. It swelled the high raised ground, just so the breath. Puffs out the bladder, or the horned goat skin. The tumor still remains, and now appears. Grown hard by lapse of time, a lofty hill. Though numbers to my mind occur, or seen. Or heard, but few beside I will relate. Do not streams too receive and lose new powers? Thy fountain, horned Ammon, at midday. Is icy cold, but hot at morn and eve. The waters of Athamanis, are said. Sprinkled on wood, when Luna's lessening orb. Shines in the heavens, to warm it into flame. A river have the Sicones, which turns. To marble what it touches, whoso drinks. Instant his inwards harden into stone. Cathys and Sibiris, which border near. Our pastures, make the hair resemble gold. More wondrous still, waters there are, with power. The mind to change as well as change the limbs. Who has not heard of Salmus's obscene? An Ethiopia's lake, which whoso drinks. Or furious raves, or sinks in sleep profound. Whoever his thirst at the Clitorian found. Quenches, he loads all wine, abstemious, joys. To drink pure water, where the power the waves. Possessed to thwart the heating vinous juice. Or, as the natives tell, with herbs and charms. When the mad pretides Melampus cured. He in the stream the mental medicine flung. And hate of wine the fountain still retains. Lincestius river flows with different power. Of this who swallows but the smallest draught. Staggers, as charged with plenteous cups of wine. A dangerous place Arcadia holds, of yore. Called Phenios, for its waters twofold force. Dreaded by night, for drank by night they harm. But guiltless of all mischief drank by day. Thus lakes and rivers now these powers possess. Now those. Time was ortiger on the waves. Floated, now firm she rests. Argo, first ship. Dreaded the isle Cyanian scattered round. And clashing oft amid the roaring waves. Which rest unmoved now, and the winds despise. Nor Etna whose sulfurous furnace flames. Will always burn, time was it burned not yet. For let earth be an animated mass. Which lives, and breathing holes in various parts. Exhaling flame, possesses, she may change. Each time she moves, those passages of air. These caverns close, and others open throw. Or weather wind, confined in those deep caves. Hurls rocks on rocks, and what the seeds of fire. 
contain, and flames from the concussion burst. The winds appeased, cold will the caves be left. Or if the flame be by bitumen caught. Or by pale sulphur, fiercely will it burn. To the last particle, but when the earth. Fuel and oily nutriment no more. The flame shall give, a tedious length of years. Its force exhausting, and its nutriment. By nature's tooth consumed, the famished flames. Will this desert, deserted by their food. Fame says, the men who in Paline live. A northern clime, when nine times in the lake. Tritanian plunged, in plumage light are clad. This scarce can I believe. They also tell. That Scythia's females, sprinkling on their limbs. Rank poisons, such like transformation gain. Yet when well-trite experience us instructs. Faith may be given. Do we not bodies see? Decaying slow with moisture and with heat. To animalcules changed. Nay, go, inter. A chosen slaughtered steer, well known the fact. And much in use, lo. From the putrid paunch. Swarms of the flower-collecting bee will rise. Which rove the meadows as their parent roved. And urge their toil and labor still in hope. The warlike courser, prostrate on the ground. Becomes the source whence angry hornets rise. Cut from the seashore crab his crooked claws. And place the rest in earth, a scorpion thence. Will come, and threaten with his hooked tail. The meadow worms too, which with silky threads. Well noted is the fact, are wont to weave. The foliage, change the figures which they wear. Like the gay butterfly of funeral fame. The life-producing seeds of grass-green frogs. Mud holds, and forms them first devoid of feet. Then gives them legs for swimming well contrived. And, apt that they for lengthened leaps may suit. Behind these far surpass the first in length. The cub the bear brings forth, at its first birth. Is but a lump of barely living flesh. Licking, the mother forms the limbs, and gives. As much of shape as she herself enjoys. See we the young knot of the honeyed bee. Closed in the wax hexagonally shaped. First formed a body limbless, gaining late. Their feet and wings? And who could ever suppose? Except the fact he knew, that Juno's bird. Which bears the starry tail, that Venus doves. The thunderbearer of almighty Jove. And all the race of birds, there being O. Oh, to a small egg still smaller central part. There are, who think the human marrow changed. A snake becomes, when putrid turns the spine. In a close sepulchre. These, each and all. Their origin from other things derive. One bird there is, which from herself alone. Springs, and regenerates without foreign aid. Assyrians call her phoenix. Not on grain. Nor herbs she lives, but on strong frankincense. And richer momum's juice, when she has passed. Five ages of her life, with her broad bill. And talons, she upon the ilex bows. Or on the summit of the trembling palm. A nest constructs, on this she cassia strews. Spikes of sweet-smelling nard, the dark brown myrrh. And cinnamon well bruised, then lays herself. Above, and on the odorous pile expires. Then, they report, an infant phoenix springs. From the parental course, to which is given. Five ages too, to live. When years afford. Due strength to lift, and bear the ponderous load. She lightens of the weighty nest the boughs. With pious duty her own cradle takes. And parent sepulchre, then, having gained. Hyperion city through the yielding air. Before the sacred portal lays it down. If of stupendous wonder aught ye find. In this, hyenas must your wonder move. Alternate changing, females now they bear. An annual altar unto males again. That reptile too, which feeds on wind and air. And what it touches, straight its hue assumes. India by cluster bearing Bacchus gained. Links is upon the conquering god bestowed. And, so they tell, whatever their bladders void. Concretes to gems, and hardens in the air. Thus too, the coral hardens to a stone. A plant so flexible beneath the waves. Day would desert us, Phoebus panting steeds. 
Would in the mighty deep be plunged, ere I could finish, should I every substance tell? Change to new form. This we perceive, that time. All turns. These nations' mighty strength attain. Those sink in power. Thus Troy in wealth and strength was mighty, and for ten long years could shed her blood in torrents. Lo she lies, and shows her ancient ruins, and her numerous tombs. For all her riches. Sparta once was great. And famed Mycenae once in power was strong. With Athens, and the town Amphion raised. Now a mean spot is Sparta, lo now lies. Lofty Mycenae, what of Thebes remains? The town of Oedipus, except his tale? What of Pandion's Athens, but the name? And now begins the fame of Dardan Rome. To rise, the waves of Tiber from the hills. Of Apennine descending, bathe her walls. Placed on a huge foundation shall she fix. Her empire's base. By increase shall she change. And shall hereafter of the mighty world. Be head. This prophets, they assert, have said. And fate predicting oracles. Myself. Remember Helenus, old Priam's son. Addressed Aeneas, when the Trojan towers. Were tottering, weeping, and a future fate. Doubtful, in words like these O goddess born. If the prognostics of my soul I read. Rightly, Troy never, while thou art safe, will fall. Flames and the sword shall ope to thee a path. Thou shalt depart, and with thyself convey. An Ilium, till a foreign land thou findest. A land more friendly both to thee and Troy. Now, to the Phrygians' offspring due, I see. A city raised, such former ages never. Beheld, such is not, such will never be. Thousands of worthies in a length of years. Its power shall spread, but lord of all the globe. Shall he, descended of Eulus, reign? Who, when by earth awhile enjoyed, shall gain? A seat celestial, and the heavens shall be. The bound of his career. Well does my mind. Retain, that Helenus in such like words. Addressed the chief who bore his country's gods. Joyed I behold my kindred walls increase. And Grecia's conquest happy prove for Troy. But lest too wide I wander, and my steeds. Forget the goal, no, heaven, and all beneath. Earth, and all earthy s contents their shapes must change. Let us then, members of the world, not formed. Of body only, but with winged souls. Which to the bodies of wild beasts may pass. Or dwell within the breasts of grazing herds. Permit those forms which may the souls contain. Of parents, brethren, or of those once joined. To us by other bonds, certain of men. To rest secure and safe from savage wounds. Nor load our bowels at Thyest's board. Soon, by ill custom warped, does he prepare. To bathe his impious hands in human gore. Who severs with his knife the lowing throat. Of the young calf, and turns a deafened ear. To all its cries, or who the kid can slay. Moaning in plaintive tone like children's cries. Or who the fowl he fed before, can eat. What more is wanting, that may now complete. The measure of iniquity? From thence. Where the next step? Then let thine oxen plough. And let their death be due alone to age. Let from dread Boreas piercing cold the sheep. Defend thee with her wool. Let the full goat. Present her udder to thy hand to press. Throw far thy nets, thy nooses, and thy snares. And all thy treacherous skill, nor with lime twig. Deceive the bird, nor with strong toils the deer. Nor hide the barbed hook with treacherous bait. If animals annoy ye, them destroy. But slay them only. From the taste of flesh. Free be your mouths, while food more fit ye eat. His breast with these, and such like doctrines filled. Numa, t said, back to his country came. And held, unsought for, the supreme command. Over Latium's realm. Blessed with the nymph his spouse. And by the muses guided, all the rites. Of sacrifice he taught, the people trained. Fond of fierce war, to arts of gentle peace. When late he finished reign at once, and life. 
the Latian females, nobles, commons, all. In streaming tears, bewailed their Numa dead. His consort Rome deserted, and lay hid. In the deep forests of Arisha's vale. And with her wailings and her mournful sighs. The rites impeded in Diana's fane. How oft the nymphs who dwelt in lakes and groves. Kind admonitions gave her not to mourn. And soothed her with consolatory words. How oft the son of Theseus weeping, said. Cease thus to grieve, nor think your fate alone. Is hard. Look round a while on others' woes. More mild your own you'll bear. Would that not mine? Were such as might assuage your woe, but mine. When heard, to calm your grief may something yield. Haply report has sounded in your ears. Of one Hippolytus the fate, destroyed. Through his most impious stepdame's treacherous fraud. And sire's credulity. With much surprise. You'll hear, nay scarcely will you trust my words. But he am I. Pasiphae's daughter me. Accused, that I with vain endeavour trite. To violate my parents' nuptial couch. Me feigning guilty of the crime she wished. On me thy offence retorting, or through fear. I might accuse, or rage at her repulse. My sire, me guiltless from the city drove. And cursed me going with most hostile prayers. To Pythian Trazen I my exiled flight. Directed, and now drove along the shore. Of core in thy S.C., when ocean sudden heaved. A mighty heap of waters bent appeared. Like an huge hill, an increase seemed to gain. Then roaring loud was at its summit cleft. Thence, from the bursting waves a horned bull. Rushed forth, breast high a prearing in the air. Spouting the waves through his capacious mouth. And nostrils. Terror seized my comrade's breasts. Filled with the thoughts of exile, mine alone. Unmoved remained. While my impatient steeds. Turned to the main their heads, with ears erect. Affrighted stood, then by the beast appalled. Rushed rapid with the car over lofty rocks. With a vain hand I strive to gird the curb. Besmeared with foaming whiteness, bending back. With all my might I pulled the pliant reins. Nor had my horse's furious madness mocked. My strength, save that the fast revolving wheel. A tree opposing struck, and shattered, wide. The fragments flew. I from the car was thrown. Entangled in the harness, plain to view. Were seen my living bowels dragged along. My sinews twisted round the stump, my limbs. Part swept away, and part entangled left. Loud crashed my fractured bones, my wearied soul. At length exhaled, my body naught retained. That could be known, one all continued wound. Can you, O oh nymph? Or dare you, now compare? Your woe with mine? Since then I have beheld. The realm of darkness, and my mangled limbs. Bathed in the waves of Phlegathan. Nor life. Had been restored, but through the forceful help. Of medicine that Apollo's offspring gave. From him Peonian aid when I had gained. By plants of power, though much in Pluto's spite. Cynthia me covered with her densest clouds. And lest my sight their hatred should increase. That safe I might remain, and without risk. Be seen, she gave to my appearance age. Nor left me features to be known again. And long deliberated, whether Crete. Or Delos, for my dwelling she would choose. But, Crete and Delos both abandoned, here. She placed me, and my name she bade renounce. Which still reminded me of my wild steeds. Saying O oh thou, Hippolytus who wast. Be verbious now. Thenceforth within these groves. I dwell, a minor deity, I tend. My heavenly mistress, and increase her train. But foreign griefs possess not power to chase. Egeria's woe, who at a mountain's foot. Thrown prostrate, melted in a flood of tears. Till Phoebus' sister by her sorrow moved. Transformed her body to a cooling fount. And her limbs melted to still during streams. The miracle the wandering nymphs beheld. Nor stood the son of Amazonia's queen. With less surprise than on the bosom seized. Of the Tyrrhenian plowman, when he viewed. The fate foretelling clod, amidst the fields. 
at first spontaneous and untouched it moved. Then took a human figure, shook off earth. And opt its new formed prophesying mouth. Tags the natives called him, who first taught. Thy Etruscan race the future to explain. Or Romulus, when he his spear beheld. Stuck on Palatium's hill, and sudden sprout. By a new root, not by its steely point. Fixed fast, no more a weapon, but a tree. With pliant branches, which afford a shade. And looked for to the wandering people round. Or Sippus, when he in the flowing stream. Beheld his new formed horns, for them he saw. But thought thy appearance false, and what he viewed. Oft raised his fingers to his head to touch. No more his eyes distrusting, than he stood. As victor from a conquered foe he came. And raising up to heaven his hands and eyes. Ye gods, he said, whatever this portends. If happy, to my country, to the state. Be it, if ominous of ill, to me. And then with odorous fires the gods adored. On grassy altars of the green sward formed. And from the goblets poured the wine, and searched. The panting entrails of the slaughtered sheep. For what was meant. Thy Etruscan seer beheld. That mighty revolutions they foretold. But yet obscurely, till his piercing eye. He from the entrails turned to Sippus horns. Then cried, Save thee, O king. For lo. The place. For thee, O Sippus. And thy horns, the towers. Of Latium will obey. Thou only haste. Delay not, but within the open gates. Enter, so fate commands. In them received. King wilt thou be, in safety wilt enjoy. An ever during kingdom. Back he drew. His feet, and from the city's walls he turned. Sternly his looks, exclaiming, Far, ye gods. Oh, far avert these omens. Better I. An exile roam for life, than monarch rule. The capital. Then he assembled straight. The reverend senate, and the people round. But first with peaceful laurel veiled his horns. Then on a mound, thereby the soldiers raised. He stood, and prayed in ancient mode to heaven. Lo! Here, he cried, is one, whom save ye drive. Far from your city, will your monarch be. By marks, but not by name I him describe. Two horns his forehead bears. He is the man. Once in the town received, the augur tells. With servile laws will rule ye. Nay, he might. Your open gates have entered, but myself. Opposed him, though more near to me is none. Expel him, Romans. From your city far. Or, if he merit them, with massive chains. Load him, or rid yourself at once of fear. By the proud tyrant's death. Such murmur sound. Mid lofty pines, when Eurus whistles fierce. Such is the roaring of the ocean waves. Rolling far distant, as the crowd sent forth. Till from amidst the all confounding noise. One spoke more loud, and which is he, exclaimed. Then all the brows they searched, the horns to find. Sippus again addressed them. What you seek? Behold, and from his head the garland tore. Spite of their efforts, and his forehead showed. With double horns distinguished. All their eyes. Depressed, and sighs from every bosom burst. Unwillingly, incredible, they view. That head so bright with merit. Then, no more. Bearing that honour's due he should not gain. They bind his temples with a festal crown. Thee, Sippus. Since within the walls forbid. To enter, now the senators present. A grateful gift, a tract of land so large. As with a plough, by two yoked oxen drawn. Thou canst from morn till close of day surround. The horns, the type of this stupendous fact. Long shall remain on brazen pillars graved. Ye muses, patrons of the poet's song. Explain, for all complete your knowledge, age. Most distant never deceives you, why the isle? In Tiber's bosom, by his billows washed. The rites of Aesculapius introduced. Into the town of Romulus. A plague. Of direst form infected Latium's air. And the pale bloodless bodies wasted thin. 
squalid in poison. When the numerous deaths proved every effort of mankind was vain, and vain the art of medicine, they beseech. Celestial aid, and unto Delphos go. Apollo's oracle, mid place of earth. Pray him to help their miserable state. With health affording words, and end at once. The dreadful pest which scourged their mighty town. The fane, the laurel, and the quiver, slung. Upon his shoulder, shook, and this reply. The tripod from its secret depth returned. Thrilling their fear struck bosoms, what you seek? O oh Romans! Here, you should have nearer sought. And nearer now even seek it. Phoebus aid. Your woe can lessen not, but Phoebus' son. Can help ye, therefore with good omens go. And call my offspring to afford relief. Soon as the prudent senators received. The goad's commands, with diligence they seek. What city's walls Apollo's son contain? Deputa band, whom favoring breezes waft. To Epidaurus' shores. Soon as their keels. Touched on the strand, they to thy assembled crowd. Of Grecian elders haste, and earnest beg. To grant their deity, to check the rage. Of death amongst the hapless Latian race. By his mere presence. So unerring fate. Had said. Divided is the council's voice. Some would the aid besought, be granted, some. And many, these oppose, refuse to send. To foreign lands their patron, and their god. While dubious they deliberated, Eve. Chased the remains of light, and the earthy s shade. Through darkness round, when, lo! The helping god. Appeared in sleep before the Romans' bed. To stand, in form like what his temple's grace. His left hand bore a rugged staff, his right. Stroked down the hairs of his expanded beard. As thus with words of import mild he spoke. Fear not, for I will come, my temple leave. View but this snake which with his circling folds. My staff entwines, remark him, that again. You well may know him, changed to such a form. Will I be, but more huge I will appear. Mighty in bulk as heavenly beings ought. The vision ceased, and vanished with the words. And with the god fled sleep, and cheerful light. Followed the flight of Somnus. Now the morn. Had chased the starry fires, the Grecian chiefs. Still dubious, in the splendid temple meet. Of the entreat deity, and pray. That some celestial sign he should display. To prove which country for his seat he chose. Scarce had they ended, when the shining god. Forerunning his is sent, and as a snake. With lofty crest appeared, at his approach. His statue, altars, portals, gilded roofs. And marble pavement shook. He reared his chest. Sublime amid the temple, and around. Darted his eyes, which shone with living fire. Trembled the fear-struck crowd. The sacred priest. His hair encircled with a snowy band. Straight knew him, and, the god. The god, exclaimed. All present, him with hearts and tongues adore. O glorious deity! May thou, thus seen. Propitious be, thy worshippers protect. Who keep thy rights? All present to the god. Adoring bend, and all his words repeat. And Rome's ambassadors with fervor join. In mind and voice. To these the god consents. And his crest moving, certain signs affords. Thrice hissing, thrice he shakes his forked tongue. Then down the shining steps he glides, his head. Retorted, as he thence departs he views. His ancient altars, and a last salute. His wonted seat, his long-owned temple, gives. Thence rolls he huge along the ground bestrewed. With scattered flowers, in curving folds entwined. And through the city's center takes his way. To where the bending mole the port defends. Here rested he, and to dismiss appeared. His followers, and the kind attending crowd. With gracious looks, then in thy Orsonian ship. He placed his length. A deity's huge weight. The ship confessed, the keel beneath the load. Bent. Glad Aenea's offspring felt, and loosed. A bull first sacrificed upon the shore. The cables which their crowded galley bound. 
Light airs impelled the vessel. High aloft. The god appeared, upon the curving poop. Rested his neck, and viewed the azure waves. By zephyrs wafted over the Ionian sea. They reached Italia when the sixth time rose. Aurora. Past Silasia, and the fane. Of Juno, on Licinia's noted shore. Jupiter left, and shunned Amphicia's rocks. With larboard oars, and, coasting on the right. Saronia, and Romicium passed, and passed. Nerisha and Colonia, they, the risks. Of sea, and of Pelorus narrow straits. Surmounted, past thy Aeolian monarch's isles. Metallic Themesis, Leucasia's land. And warm and rosy Pistas. Thence they coast. Along Capria, and Minerva's Cape. And past Sorrentum, rich in generous wine. The town of Hercules, Parthenope. Built for soft ease, with stabia, and from thence. Past the Cumean Sibyl's sacred dome. Hence by Linternum, with the mastic rich. And boiling fountains are they born, and past. Volturna sucking sand within the gulf. And Sinuessa, filled with milk white doves. Marshy Minterni, with Cajeta, raised. By him she nursed, Antifates abode. Trackers, by fens encompassed, Circe's land. And Antium's solid shore. Here when the crew. Had with tow flying vessel reached, for now. Rough was the main, the god his folds and twines. Glides on in frequent coils, and spires immense. Entering a temple of his sire that stood. Close by the yellow beach. The ocean calmed. The Epidorian god his father's fame. Now leaves, a deity to him close joined. Thus hospitable found, the sandy shore. Plows in a furrow with his rattling scales. Then, in the steersman confident, he rests. On the high poop his head, till they approach. Lavinium's city, and her sacred seat. And Tiber's mouth. The people rush in heaps. And crowds of matrons and of fathers rush. Confusedly hither, even the vestal maids. Who guard the sacred fire, and all salute. The god with joyful clamor. Then wherever. The rapid vessel cleaves thy opposing stream. The incense crackles on the banks, and raised. Are lines of altars, thick on either shore. The smoke perfumes the air, the victims bleed. In heaps, and warm the sacrificial knife. The Roman city now, the world's great head. They entered, up erect the serpent rose. From the mast's loftiest summit towered his neck. And round he looked to choose a fit abode. The waves circumfluent in two equal streams. Divide, the isle has thence its name, the arms. On either side are stretched, land in the midst. Hither the Esculapian snake himself. Betook, departing from the Latian ship. Resumed his form celestial, and their griefs. Dispersing, came health-bearer to the land. A foreign power he in our temple stands. But Caesar, in his native town a god. Is worshipped. In the forum, and the field. Famed equal, yet not his well-finished wars. His triumphs, nor the deeds in peace performed. So justly changed him to an heavenly shape. A blazing star, as did the sun he left. For no achievement Caesar ever performed. Can with the boast to be Augustus' sire. Compare. Far greater this than to subdue. The sea-girt Britons, his victorious fleets. To seven-mouthed Nile to lead, to bring the realms. Sinifian Juba ruled, neath Rome's control. Rebel Numidia, and, puffed high in pride. With Mithridate's glory, Pontus land. Rich triumphs to have gained, and triumphs more. To merit, as a man so great produce. To whose presiding care, O bounteous gods. Mankind ye gave, and them completely blessed. And lest he seem from mortal seed to spring. His sire must mount to heaven, in form a god. This the bright mother of Aeneas saw. And for the priest beheld a mournful fate. Prepared, and moving saw the arms conspired. She trembled, and to every god she met. Addressed her, lo! What deep and potent plots. Against me they prepare. See, with what art. His life is sought, whose soul to me is left. Of my Eulus. 
Why must I alone? Be harassed still with never ceasing cares? Whom now tidied Caledonian spear? Wounds, now the walls of ill protected Troy. Lie prostrate. Who my darling son behold? Driven to long wanderings, on the ocean tossed. Entering the silent mansions of the dead. Waging fierce war with Turnus, or, if truth. I speak, with Juno rather. Yet why now? Record I former sufferings in my sons? Terror prevents all memory of the past. See, where at me their impious swords they point. Oh, I conjure you. Stay them, and prevent. The horrid deed, lest, spilt the high priest's blood. The fires of Vesta be forever dark. With words like these did troubled Venus move. Each power of heaven, in vain, yet all were touched. And, though the stern decrees of rigid fate. To break unable, tokens plain they gave. That some immense calamity was nigh. They tell, that clashing arms mid the black clouds. And dreadful horns and trumpets in the heavens. Sounded, to warn us of the impious deed. Full of solicitude the earth beheld. The pale wan image of sad Phoebus' face. Torches were often seen, mid heaven to glare. And from the clouds oft gory drops were shed. Blue Lucifer a dusky hue overcast. And Luna's car was sprinkled over with blood. Thy infernal owl in numerous places shrieked. A direful omen. In a thousand fanes. The ivory statues wept, the sacred groves. Re-echoed all with songs and threatening sounds. No victim seemed appeasing, tumults vast. Approaching showed the entrails, and appeared. The liver always with a wounded head. Around the domes, and temples of the gods. Loud howled the midnight dogs, the silent shades. Flitted along, and trembling shook the town. Yet could not these forebodings of the heavens. Crush the conspiracy, or ward his fate. And in the temple were the weapons drawn. For, but the senate house, no spot could please. The vile assassins for the bloody deed. Then Cytheria smote her lovely breast. In anguish, and beneath an heavenly cloud. Sought to conceal him, such a cloud as once. From furious Menelaus Paris saved. And snatched Aeneas from Tydide sword. Then thus her sire, O daughter. Hast thou power. Thy immutable decrees of fate to change? To thee tis granted to inspect the dome. Of the three sisters, there thou wilt behold. Thy eternal tablets of events engraved. On steel and brass, a work of mighty toil. Safe, they nor fear the clashing of the sky. Nor rage of thunder, nor of ruin aught. There wilt thou written find thy offspring's fate. On ever during adamant. Myself. Have read it, and record it in my mind. And lest thou shouldest be to the future blind. I will relate it. He for whom thou twilest. O Cytheria. Has his time fulfilled. The sum of years which to the earth he owed. That he a deity in heaven may rise. And be in temples worshipped is thy care. And his successors, who his name will take. And on his shoulders bear the wide world's rule. On him imposed. He, of his murdered sire. Valiant avenger, shall in all his wars. Our favoring influence feel. Mutina's walls. By him besieged, in conquest shall confess. His power, and sue for peace. Pharsalia, him. Shall feel, and, drenched in Macedonian blood. Again, Philippi. On Sicilia's seas. His mighty name shall conquer. Egypt's queen. Falsely relying on the nuptial bond. With Rome's triumvir, falls, all vain her threats. That Tiber should subservient bend to Nile. Why should I speak to thee of barbarous hordes? Nations which dwell at either sea's extreme? Whatever habitable earth contains. Will to his empire bend. Ocean will own. His sway. Peace on thy extended earth bestowed. To civil studies will his breast be turned. And laws most equitable will he frame. By his example curb licentious souls. And, stretching forward to a future age. His anxious care, which their son's sons may feel. His offspring, nurtured in a pious womb. 
at once his name and station will assume. Nor shall he touch thy ethereal seats, nor join his kindred stars till fall like him in years. Meantime his soul, snatched from the mangled course, formed to a brilliant star, a god divine, that Julius from his lofty seat may still our forum and our capital behold. Scarcely the sire had ceased, when Venus, bright, but unperceived by all, stood in the midst of Rome's assembled senate, from the breast of her loved Caesar took the recent soul, nor let it waste in air. Up to the stars. She bore it. Rapid as she swept along. She saw it shine with light, she saw it burn. Then from her bosom spring above the moon. Lofty it flies, it shines a glittering star. Dragging a flaming tail stupendous length. Viewing the glorious actions of his son. Candid he grants them mightier than his own. And thus surpassed rejoices. Let him frown. If to his parents' deeds we his prefer. Yet fame quite free will such commands despise. Give him unwished for precedence, and here. And here alone he'll disobedience find. So Atreus yielded to the mighty fame. Of Agamemnon, Theseus so surpassed. Aegis, and Achilles Peleus so. Nay more, examples nearer to themselves. If I should use, Saturn submits to Jove. Jove rules thy ethereal sky, the triform world. And all the earth beneath Augustus lies. Each is the sire and ruler of his realm. Oh, I implore, ye gods. Who did attend? Aeneas, who made fire and sword retreat. Ye native deities of Latium soil. Quirinus, founder of the walls of Rome. Mars, of Quirinus never conquered, sire. Vesta, held sacred midst the Caesar's gods. Domestic Phoebus, with chaste Vesta placed. And Jove, who guards the high Tarpeian walls. With all whom pious poets may invoke. Slow may that day arrive, and older far. Than what our age may see, when to the clouds. His glorious head shall mount, quitting this globe. He rules so well, and our beseeching prayers. Bending with condescending ear to grant. Now is my work complete, which not Jove's ire, nor flame, nor steel, nor gnawing tooth of age, shall ever destroy. Come when it will, that day, which nothing, save my mortal frame, can touch, which ends the being of a dubious life. My better part unperishing shall mount, above the loftiest stars. Eternal still, shall be my name, wherever Rome's power extends. Over conquered earth, my verses shall be read. And, if the presages by poets given, be true, to endless years my fame shall live. Finus.